Hello, and welcome to this training on Adobe Premiere Pro. And congrats on making the decision to learn and master this incredible program. Premiere Pro gives you the distinct ability to harness your creative energies in the form of video editing like no other. And once you learn even the basics, you'll have a skill set that can be used in almost any industry and field. Now, what do we cover in this intro to Premiere Pro class? First, we go over the Premiere Pro interface and get a feel for navigating and personalizing the program. Then we quickly import some content and get it organized in folders or what Premiere Pro calls bins. Once our content is imported and organized, we then determine what footage should be used for importing into our timeline for editing. Once in our timeline, we learn a ton of cool stuff like cropping, trimming, slicing, rippling, rolling, slipping, sliding. Yes, these are real things. So again, congratulations on this decision. You are gonna have a blast. Now, just a quick note that this course is designed to be an interactive hands-on course. So occasionally, you'll hear me say things like, pause the video and practice on your own. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential, hands-on manner. I'm looking forward to teaching you all the cool things that Premiere Pro has to offer, so stay tuned and get ready to learn. Welcome, welcome, everybody. What we are looking at here is a blank new project. This project has no assets in it, has not been customized. This is essentially what you're gonna see once you've created a new project from scratch. We're gonna go over the process on how to create something from scratch from the beginning. But what we're gonna look at here is understanding the interface and the workspace of all of what we call our panels. So what are panels? You can see here, this is our source panel. This is our program panel. This is our timeline panel. This is our project panel. And you'll see there's some other kind of hidden ones here, like our media browser panel, etc. So you can see them all over the place. Now, each of these panels is customizable. We can move them around, you can close them, and you can even add on new ones that aren't available. Now let's see where we can go to add on new panels that are not available from what we see here on the front end. So if we click on the window menu up on top, you're going to see that there is a whole bunch of panels that are not showing or some in fact are showing. You can see by based on the check marks and some don't have check marks. So for example, if I wanted to add on, let's just see essential graphics, you'll see now that pops up over here. Okay, fantastic. Now if I don't want that anymore, I can very easily right click on that close panel and that goes away. Okay, pretty great. Now some of these, if you don't want them, you can always click on the little X right there, and that will make that disappear. I'm not going to do that right now because I want to kind of run through an exercise on some situations where you want to close something, and then when you want to bring it back, how we can come back to a saved layout per se. All right, so very good. So we can see number one, this is the panel that the series of panels that we're currently looking at. Now, how did this particular set of panels now even start to come up? Right? Why is it showing these panels and not other panels? That is the big existential question. I want you to notice up on top here, I have this little tab here in blue highlighted, right? The rest of these are not. This is basically the editing workspace that I have chosen to be in, okay? And that's typically gonna be your default workspace to be in. So let me show you what it's gonna look like when I'm not in the editing workspace. I can click on learning and notice how everything just shifts. I'm gonna click on assembly. You can see everything just shifts, right? So very different. Let's come back to editing. You can see exactly where I started. Now, for most of you, my guess is this is where you're gonna spend like 90% of your time, all right? But occasionally, once you start getting more advanced, like if you're working with some color correction, notice you go to colors and then see a bunch of options appear over here on the right-hand side, like for lumetri color, go over here to effects, and that's gonna change things as well, okay? You can see here's effects that'll pop up here. Go to audio. Okay, different things pop up. And now I'm gonna go ahead and return back to editing and you'll see, all right, very good. So you can always come back to this workspace layout anytime you want, all right? So now if I click on window, I want you to notice there's also workspaces. And then this way you can always go through any of these other mm -hmm. preset workspaces if you like, and also notice some of the keyboard shortcuts to be able to get to those as well. If you find that you're changing them out all the time. All right, now let's see what we can do in terms of moving these things around and editing them and then kind of making them our own. So you'll notice how my source panel is a certain size. So very easily, I can now move this 
to make it a little bit more narrow. You can see that. I can also make it so maybe it's not so tall. So you can see that I'm just moving my mouse right to where the blue line ends. I can come over to here. Even though I don't have a blue line, I can always make this also a little more narrow, a little taller, a little more squat, whatever you want to be. And then each of these is their own little area as well. See that? So if I wanted to have my project panel not take up so much room, maybe my tools over here, maybe not. Okay, great. So now my timeline is taking up a little more room, right? So I have more space to work with. All right, so you'll want to experiment with those, right? To essentially just understand how you can take ownership of all these different panels. Now, you'll also notice that a lot of these tabs have these three little dots, the three little lines there, right? The little hamburger. So when you click on that, you're going to get a lot of extra options here. If you right click, you get very similar options, okay? So just understand that. So the right click brings up extra options. The little hamburger also brings up pretty much the same options, but understand that they're going to be different depending on which panel you are currently working with, right? So if I click on this here, notice very different options. Then when I go over here to my project, see lots of different options there. So really what we're just trying to understand is sort of the culture of the program, right? So what's going to happen when I do X, Y, and Z? If I want to move things around, if I right click on things, what's going to show up? It's going to be a very different culture than say Photoshop or Illustrator. So we just kind of want to understand like what's what, what's going to happen when I do a variety of different things. All right. Now, what I think it's going to be even more impacting is if we look at a project that's more or less already begun. So this isn't really helping you too much except for on an abstract level. Let's now take a look at an actual project and looking at the workspace. So I have a already complete project here. So I'm going to go over here to file and go to open recent. And you're going to see here I have explore SF, which you should have access to. All right. And then now you will see something a little different, right? So some of these workspace panels have now been filled in with different assets and different content. All right. So now that we see this, we'll be able to see, oh, well, guess what? I want to move my project panel to be a little bit wider. So now I'll be able to see, ah, look at that. A lot more content is showing up here. Okay. What about this program? Let's just say, oh, great. Okay. What that's going to do. Okay. So what ex in fact this is doing is if I were to watch this, for example, I'll be able to actually watch it in action and I can see it on a bigger screen or maybe even bigger than that or smaller or wider or more narrow. Okay, so we're going to go into all the details in terms of what each of these does. But right now, we're just trying to understand where we can find things and how we can kind of customize the screens a little bit. Now, let's say you didn't quite like how these panels are set up and you wanted to kind of rearrange things a little bit. So you can very easily move them around. So if you just kind of click and drag here, you notice how this tab can go this way. You can move your media browser this way if you want to. You can move your source this way. Okay, so very easily you can customize these things. Okay, so really, really nice. Now you could also move them entirely out of each individual block if you want to. So for example, if I wanted to move, let's say my libraries up here, I can very easily just drag that whole thing. You'll notice how this little kind of pretty purple appears here, telling me exactly kind of where it's gonna go. So I wanna keep this up on top here. So I let go and now I have two tabs up on top here. Let me go ahead and move my metadata up on top here. You can see, oh, very nice. So I have total control over how that is going to be presented, okay? So totally up to me how I would like these presented, how I'd like them sized, and how you want them placed, okay? So again, very easily move these around however you like. Now, sometimes you might want them floating, okay? So earlier we talked about the little hamburger. So for example, if I were to click on that hamburger, you're gonna see you can possibly undock a panel. So if I click on that, notice how this is now floating around here. Okay, so if I just want it kind of floating that it's separate and independent from the rest of the panels, I can easily do that. If you ever want to move it back, just simply drag the name of the panel and then bring it back to where it started or wherever you like it to be. Okay, so pretty slick in terms of all of the different kind of customizations you have options for. Okay, so really, really neat. Okay, so let me go ahead and come back to editing. You can see there I am and it remembers where I was. Okay, now, if we now resize it and we get to a place that we really, really love, we can go back up to our window, go over here to workspaces, 
Okay, and I can say save as new workspace. So if I love this and I wanna always come back to that, just like I come back to here, I can absolutely do that. So if I say save as new workspace, okay, I'm just gonna say, okay, explore SF workspace, okay? Cause it's gonna be a little different than when I'm working on let's say a music video or something like that, okay? I click okay, I go back up to window, you're gonna see workspaces and then bam, there it is. Okay, so whenever I kind of mess around a little bit, let me just say, for example, I close this out, okay? I right click on it, I say close panel, oops, and it's gone, uh-oh, didn't want to do that. So if I go back to window, go back to workspaces, and I say reset to save layout, that's gonna come right back, okay? And notice how it came right back into the same space, it also came back in the same size and location. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice that, get used to the interface. If you can find something that's already existing, like something that we have inside of our class files or something you have on your own, that's gonna be the best way to get familiar with the workspace. And don't forget to save your workspace. You can always come back to it in case things get a little jumbled. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Now that we've talked about how we can customize our workspace and kind of make the look and feel our own, Let's talk about how we can even get some content into our project. So we're currently looking at the blank project project. And you're gonna notice here, I have this project panel right here, showed you that earlier. And with the Explore SF, there was already content in there. So how do we actually get some media in there to work with? We talk about media, we're talking about video files, it could be audio, it could be still shots. So we wanna actually bring this in so we can make some edits to it, so we can actually bring it into our time line. So there's a number of different ways we can do that. So you'll notice how this is just blank, ready for us to go. And all I can need to do, and all I need to do is just simply double click right here. And this will take me into my computer and I can go ahead and bring it in, whether you're on a Mac or a PC, that'll do that. Also note, if I right click on it, you're going to have an option to import right there. You'll also notice if I go to file, and then I say import, it'll do that, same thing. And also notice the great keyboard shortcut, which is gonna be control or command I for import. So I do that, it's gonna take me right to that same window. So you're gonna see here, I'm just gonna bring in all of these images here. I can just go ahead and marquee over that. And then I just say open and now wait for them. There they go. And they're all brought in, amazing. So this time, because I can't actually see everything here, it might be a good idea instead of me double clicking, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the control I to be able to bring it in. So if I just do control I while that's highlighted, I can now bring in other things here. So let's now bring in more exploratorium clips. Okay, very good. So I can go ahead and simply select that, click open, and now I'm gonna bring them in just like that. All right. Now, Earlier, we talked about the amazing keyboard shortcut of the tilde to be able to see the window bigger. So when I do that, you're gonna see I'm able to now navigate through this entire thing with a little bit more sort of scalability and a little more control and more importantly, a little more knowledge because this is going to give me the ability to see a lot more content in terms of all these columns and metadata and everything like that, whereas I wouldn't, wasn't able to see it here. Of course, you can also make this a little bit wider and be able to do it that way as well. So let's just take a look at this project panel now. Let's go make it a little bit bigger. And here we are. Now, some of these things you may not care about. So if you simply just right click on it, you're gonna see here's an option for metadata display dot, dot, dot. And this is gonna allow you to get into a little bit deeper of like what columns you want, which columns you don't. And they give you a whole bunch of things to bring in, right? So a lot of these things I don't really care about, right? There's no frame rate here, right? I don't care about the media start and end, right? So all these things here you may not care about, right? So this is gonna go on for a long time. A lot of things that you just don't need. Audio info, sure, I might want that tape name. Nope, don't really care, right? Just kind of just go scroll through all these. Some of these things you may be working with, some of you won't. And some of these things you'll notice are not checked, but you might want to bring them in. Okay, so totally up to you. I'm going to just uncheck this one, click OK, and now you'll notice a lot more manageable for me. Okay, you'll also notice I can reorder these as well. So notice my video info is there. Okay, great. Status online. Okay, great. So you know what? I'm good with this. So I get out of this and now I can see everything 
as I want it, okay, and presented in such a way. Now, you will notice also that I have different icons here for the different types of media. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to that other video file that I started so you can see a few other ones in action. So let's go back to that. So I'm gonna go here to File, Open Recent, and go over to here to Explore SF. And we'll see how we have a number of different types of media here. And in a little bit, we're gonna explore how we can go a little bit deeper into this panel. But let's just see again how I can bring in something else into this project panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click and I'll bring in some more content. Let's come over to here, let's go to the beach scene. And this time I'm gonna bring in two or three at a time. So I'm just gonna click on one, hold on the control or command key, and then notice how I'm selecting them and non-contiguously, right? They're not next to each other, but I can very easily select them separately. And I click open and then bam, there you are. Fantastic. And these are really easy to work with. Okay. So that's how you import. Okay. That's going to be the end of this lesson. We're going to talk about each of these panels and how we can work with the panels a little bit deeper. But for right now, it's important to understand how we can import content. Now that we have some content to work with by importing our different types of media, including our video, our still, and our audio, let's see how we can explore the project panel a little bit deeper for the purposes of organization. All right, now one thing I want you to notice that it's kind of a nice little benefit of working with Premiere is that I now have two project panels or tabs open right now simultaneously. One is my Explore SF and the other one is the blank project. So I can actually toggle back and forth between these two simultaneously, right? So it's really nice because it prevents me from having to go back and say file and then open recent and keep having to open it up again. You can see I can very easily go back and forth between these two. Okay, so that's really a nice benefit, nice bonus. All right, now let's see what we can do to now import a little bit more content into this Explore SF. So again, all I'm gonna do is just simply do Control I or Command I if you're on a Mac. And I'm just gonna bring in all of these image files here. Okay, so here I am inside of my stills folder. I click on open, okay, and then there they are. Now, the thing that's kind of bugging me about this is that like, do I know what types of media this is, right? Notice how there's like different kind of icons here. It's kind of trying to tell me a little bit, but I want something a little bit more definitive. So earlier on, I talked about how we can look at the different metadata display columns. So if you recall, I can very easily make this bigger by hitting the tilde. And then you'll notice on the top here, I have all of my different column headings. So if I wanna add on the column heading of media type, all I need to do is just simply right click, metadata display, and then come back over to here. And then guess what's sitting there waiting for me is media type. Now, keep in mind that this is independent from one project to the other. So if you disabled some of these in another project, they're not going to be disabled in any other ones. But if you wanted to actually save some settings and have this come back where it's going to be a preset, you can absolutely do that, saving you the trouble and the time of having to do that again and again. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and click OK for right now. And now notice here is media type. And it's telling me I've got movie, I've got audio, I've got C a sequence, which we're going to explore in a little bit, still images, etc. So that's great. So what I'm going to do now is let's get this off. And now I'm just going to go and hit the tilde key. And here I am. And I'm able to see, oh, okay, very good. This, in fact, is a still image. I don't need to focus on these icons. I can very easily see them for what they are right now. Okay, so excellent. Now, let's see a few other ways of viewing things inside of our project panel. So if you'll notice over here in the lower left, I have a few little icons here. So right now I'm in this list view. You see that? If you click on this one right here, this is going to be icon view. This gives us a nice little thumbnail preview of what each of these things are. Okay. And not only that is if I now move my mouse over this, I can now toggle right through here to be able to see oh and this is in fact a video okay you can see i can do this one too great lovely all right now this one not necessarily toggle but why because it's an audio okay let's come down to here this one is video okay but remember i just brought in a whole bunch of stills and i'll be able to okay great that's just a still and you can see 
it's going to show me this 429. That's basically going to mean like how many seconds and how many frames. We're going to talk about that in a little bit, but very good. Okay. But now let's say I want to see them a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger. Okay. So if I go ahead and click and drag this, notice how they're going to get bigger and then they're going to get smaller. See, just like that. So really nice. If you really want to kind of zoom in on something, you can very easily do that. Now my screen is not big enough for me, so I can go and hit the tilde key. All right, great. Oh, that's really nice. Okay. Then I'm able to then click and drag to be able to see this here. Another thing you'll notice is something called the hover scrub. Okay. So if I move my mouse over without actually clicking, notice I can actually just see it without having to do anything, but just moving my mouse over it. So let's take a look at this one. Come over to here, just hovering. See that? And it's just doing the work for me. How is that actually happening? And how am I telling Premiere that I want that? So earlier we talked about the interface of how we can work with these panels a little bit more advancedly. If you go over to here, this little hamburger, and you simply right click, you're going to see here's this option for hover scrub. So if yours is not doing that, just go ahead and activate it. All right, now you can also see here, there's a few other controls. Here's thumbnail controls for all pointing devices. Okay, so if you're working with like a Wacom tablet, if you're working on a um, mobile, right, you're gonna see it's gonna give you a few more sets of options to work with. And if you can see that very well, but you can see here are some options there and then some options here as well. If you wanted to control things in a little bit of a different way, you can very easily do that. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that off. And then let's go ahead and check out the hover scrub. And again, I'm gonna come over to here and wait for it. There we go. Depending on how cooperative your computer wants to be. There we go, there we go, fantastic, all right? And then later on, we're gonna talk about the utility around this. Like, why would we even wanna do this? Obviously, we were watching it, but we're gonna talk about in and out points in a little bit. Now, let me go ahead and get out of this for right now. I'm gonna hit the teal day, and then I'm gonna come back to here and then go to here. I'm gonna make my icons a little smaller. And this time I'm gonna use the minus key on my keyboard. Earlier, I showed you how you can do this to do that same thing to make the size, but notice I have plus and I have minus to essentially accomplish the same thing. It's not control or command, it's just the plus or minus. And you can see how this is gonna be beneficial for you when we get into the timeline as well. All right, so if I go back to this, I right click, notice here is hover scrub, and then I move my mouse over it, and notice I'm able to see this, this, just moving my mouse over it, I'm just hovering, I'm able to see that, okay? Great, so you can see how nice this is to be able to navigate through all of your content very quickly and easily, especially with video. All right, now let's see a few other things. I'm gonna come back to my list view, and I'm gonna jump over to this side, and let's just take a look at some of these little icons here. And you're gonna see a familiar icon, which is gonna be this little find. So let's just say I'm looking for Cheryl, right? And you know, I've got a lot of different files in there. I just wanna find the one that has Cheryl in there. She created my audio and there's a lot of stuff in here. It's just buried. So if I wanna find something very easily, I can very easily do that. Okay, so you can see I practiced that earlier. You can see there's Cheryl. And you can see, what am I looking for? I'm looking inside of the name column what is it? It contains Cheryl, or maybe you know the opposite starts with, ends with, whatever, I have that there. And then you'll notice here is match, any, all, or whatever. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say any, I say find, and then bam, there's Cheryl. So this is a really great way just to find something very quickly, and now it's highlighted. Cool. Now, let's talk about some kind of additional organizational tools that we can work with. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger because I wanna be able to kind of get things organized in such a way so I can be able to find them, group them, and collaborate even easier. So I wanna have all of my still images together. So if you look over here on the right-hand side, I'm gonna kind of zoom in a little bit, there's this option here for new bin. Okay, so in Premiere language, a bin is just a folder, all right, just a way for you to stay organized. You do not have to create bins, right? There's no obligation. Your projects will not work or not work if you don't have bins but it's a good idea again to stay organized. So what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna go ahead and just say new bin, and I'm just gonna say still images, and then bam, you can see there's a folder. I'm just gonna highlight everything. So click on the first one, hold down the shift key, and then just simply drag that in. And now 
nice and organized. Okay, very cool. Okay, now let's do that maybe a slightly different way with our movies. So this time I'm gonna kind of do the reverse. I'm going to select all of my MP4s. I do that. And this time I'm gonna right click on them. I'm gonna say new bin from selection. So instead of actually creating the bin first, I selected them and then I'm gonna say, I wanna make a folder or a bin out of this selection. I do that and I'm just gonna call this movies. Okay, great. And there they are. Okay, very cool. So now I'm starting to get things a little bit more organized. All right, love that. Now in the future, we're gonna talk about a few other kind of more advanced things you can say, I just don't want to ignore this new item and a lot of things pop up here. For most of you, you probably won't be getting into these to too much of a degree, okay? But by adjustment layers, you might get into a sequence we're gonna talk about very soon. But a lot of these are gonna be a little more advanced, but just know that that's there, all right? And now one other thing I wanna talk about, and this is relatively new, is something called the free form view. So I'm just gonna go back to, let's just say my still images, all right? And I'm gonna change my view from where I am now, which is my icon view, to the free form view. I click on that, okay? And this kind of changes kind of dramatically. You're like, uh-oh, where am I right now? I'm gonna open up back to still images. And then, all right, it looks kind of like the thumbnails, doesn't it? But with the free form view, it's gonna allow me to kind of just say, hey, listen, I just wanna find all of the things that I'm gonna potentially be using for this future. So let me just go ahead and drag this out. Oh. Look at that, and I can kind of stack these together. Oh, these are great, right? Let's move this over here, okay? And then you know what, this one's pretty good too. But just notice how it's in free form view. So if I kind of marquee over these, right, and I right click, then I'm gonna be able to do a lot of things with these if I want to, all right? So it's just a free form way of organizing all of your content, all right? So again, don't wanna ignore these, just kind of give you all the options that you might need, all right? Now, let's just do one last thing. I'm gonna come back over here to my list view. And I want you to see how I'm currently inside of my still images, right? You can see how Premiere kind of organizes your content, right? I'm kind of like under one layer, like kind of, so I wanna get out of this sort of layer kind of in the hierarchy. So I'm gonna choose this guy right here to say, hey, listen, get me out of this. And now I'm back to here. All right, let me come back. Okay, very good. Now I can see that there. So always take a look at how, in case you're kind of one layer below, you can always get out of it by clicking on that icon. All right, now let's go ahead and open up now to movies. And what I want you to see here is the option to then go to the preview area, right? Just again, by right clicking, saying preview area. And this is gonna give you a lot of really great information about the content that you've selected, okay? So not only giving you a preview to be able to see that, okay? But also telling me my screen resolution, right? How long it is, right? All kinds of information around it, the file name, all kinds of good stuff. Now let's see what this is gonna look like inside of our icon view. You can see, I click on that, all right, nice. And there that is. Let's open up two still images, click on that. And now I'm not able to see that in this view. So let's go ahead and go over to here to preview. Great. And there that is. And that's giving me some more information about that particular file. Okay. All right. So really, really important to be able to see information about your content as you're clicking on it, right? As you're going into it. And again, it might be your kind of default to make it so your preview is chosen there. Okay. And then notice how you can also change my preview from regular list to thumbnail, I can very easily do that. And then finally, the last thing you might wanna do is to change the view altogether from your uh, just regular kind of just basic sort of standard thumbnails without any image preview to thumbnails, just like that. And you can very easily do that. I'm gonna go to my plus sign. Okay, that's kind of nice. I'm getting a nice little preview at the same time. And let me come back out of this. Okay, go back to here. Great, and there's everybody. Lovely. Let's open that up one more time. Great, very cool. Just toggle back and forth between all of these, however you like to see it. Okay, so you can see we got lots of options. It goes across the board, whether it's a video 
or a still shot. All right, so getting to really master and understand how to work with the project file from making, excuse me, the project panel, uh, from making it bigger to be able to stay organized with your bins, to be able to see the different views as a list or as a series of thumbnails, making them larger, okay? Also customizing all of your columns here to so many different levels in terms of scrubbing through all of your content is so important. So before you even move forward with actually editing your videos, make sure you really get comfortable with the project panels, all right? So import some content, get yourself organized, get some content in there, and then make sure you understand how to navigate, how to work through the panel itself to be able to get your content quickly and easily and stay organized. All right, so practice that and we'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, and welcome back. This lesson, we are gonna get into the source panel. So the source panel you'll see over here, it's in the upper left as far as my editing workspace is concerned, but you will see that it says source, and then you're gonna see next to it is going to be the file name that in fact is the source. Now, how did this even show up here? It's all connected to what I have inside of my project panel. So if I double click down here, you're gonna see the source that I'm working with is what I've just double clicked on, and it's gonna show me the content of that. So if I go over to here to my audio, you can see now my source is this audio, the stepping out from Cheryl. Go to my still images, double click on that, and that's gonna be my source here. Now, what is the purpose of the source? The source is gonna allow us to view all of our content so we can decide different in and out points, so we can maybe do a little bit of minor editing, so then we can get it all ready and tweaked so we can bring it ultimately into our timeline here. Our timeline is ultimately going to be our editable project file that is going to be the final output. But all that stuff needs to get cooked up first, potentially inside of the source panel first. So let's take a look at what our options are here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just double click on this sushi stuff here. And we're gonna take a look at what options we have inside of this. All right, so number one, I could just simply start playing this, right? So notice here I have a nice little timeline here. I can play it this way. I can also play it using my little play button right there. And you'll see there it is. But also notice I can also hit the space bar. So if you move your mouse over, it'll tell you a little keyboard shortcut and I can play it and I can pause it, play it and I can pause it. All right, now you'll also see a few other things here, right, in terms of my timestamp. So if you move your mouse over it, you'll notice how you can go frame by frame very easily to go a little bit at a time. If you know you wanna go three seconds and how many frames is that? Okay, great. So this is about 30 frames per second. So you can see how it's gonna go from 28, 29 and then it goes right to zero. Okay, great. So, and I can also change it from here. If I want to, I can just say, listen, let's make that three and then it takes it right back to it. So when you want that kind of precision, you can go right to your timestamp playhead position right here, okay? And like I said, you can also scrub the playhead. Totally, totally up to you. Also notice that you can do it with your keyboard. This is gonna go frame by frame. And what am I doing with my keyboard right now? I'm just using the right arrow and the left arrow. Very, very simply to be able to get frame by frame precision if you are looking for a particular part right there. Okay, so bam, there I am. Okay, and if I wanna go back to the beginning, I can just hit the up arrow if you wanna go back to, if you have an in and out point, you can very easily go up and down to each of those individual parts. So the up arrow goes back to the beginning, down arrow is gonna take you to one part of your in and out point, and this goes to the end. Now, what is this in and out point? That is this section right here that we're gonna explore in just a little bit, okay? So this is our in and out point. Essentially, it's kind of a saved fragment of a particular part of a video that we may wanna use. What I'm gonna do for right now is just clear out this in and out point. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to that, and then that goes away. And we're gonna talk about what these in and out points are in just a little bit. But again, notice I can say up and down, takes me from the beginning, takes me to the end. All right, now let's just talk about some other elements that we see here. So you'll notice there's a drop down here. How do you want to fit to the zoom level? So I'm gonna go ahead and go to 100, and you can see, okay, that's really zoomed. I'm gonna go back to 25%. 
like that, but usually best fit is really a good place to view things. Recall also, if you want to, you can make that bigger and smaller. You can also undock it. And this is especially useful if you have two screens, you wanna undock and you wanna just bring this over to another screen and where you can see it over here, you can absolutely do that. Or you can just simply bring this right back and there you are, okay? So this is gonna be really helpful for how you're going to view your content. So let's now take a look at some of our other options here. So we're gonna jump over to this side next. So you'll notice how this just says half, right? What exactly is this referring to? If you move your mouse over it, it says, select the playback resolution. So if your computer is really being taxed in terms of the memory and processing, you might wanna bring this down to a quarter or if it lets you go down even lower than that. So therefore your computer doesn't have to process so much to see the actual resolution of what the original video is. So you'd wanna do that again, if it's taxing your memory, but just understand that when you do finally render it, you're not going to get this quarter or half. You are in fact going to get the full. Now, if you did wanna see what it's gonna look like to really get the true quality, then you could change this to full, but just do understand that it is gonna use up a lot more processing power on your computer. So Premiere does give you the option one way or another, if you want it to show it that way or not, okay? In terms of the resolution. All right, let's take a look at this little wrench icon here in terms of different settings. Many of these you will not be exploring at this stage of the game, but let's just take a look at some things you may wanna see. Like for example, you might wanna see the audio wave, right? As far as part of this, because maybe you're only concerned about the audio part of this video, and that's all you care about. If you're doing what we call B-roll, and that's really all you want, the, the, the video is terrible, you're gonna put some other audio on top of it, and that's really all you care about. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and come back to this. I'm gonna go back to my composite video and there we are. Okay, so it's just different ways of viewing things if you want to, all right? So, and just take a look, there might be some other options here. Again, here's your high quality playback, right? We're gonna talk about markers in a little bit, okay? So just understand what some of these things are gonna do just from additional settings. Okay, fantastic. Now let's just mouse over some of these icons to see more or less what they do. If you move your mouse over this, you're gonna see here it says drag video only. This is gonna say drag audio only. So if I were to drag this right now into my timeline, it's only gonna take the video. So then it leaves all that audio behind. This is gonna do the opposite. It's only gonna drag in the audio. Okay, so let me just show you. Okay, so if I just drag this into my timeline, you're gonna see this now has just video. And how do I know that here? Because you can see this says V right there and there's no A as part of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get rid of this. Simply select it, hit delete. And then if I choose this one here, I drag this in and now notice all those little waveforms there. That's only bringing in the audio, okay? So many times that is gonna be beneficial because again, sometimes you don't want the video because it didn't come out so good and you just want the audio and you're gonna overlay some other video on top of that, you have that option to do that. Now let's take a look at some of these options here, right? You have lots and lots of options for how and what we want to choose to bring content in ultimately into our timeline. So you'll see here, there's options for adding markers. We're gonna talk all about markers later on, okay? But markers essentially, if I'm here and I wanna mark this, for later on say, hey, listen, this is gonna be important, or hey, we need to get some better footage of this or something like that, I can very easily simply click. And then now I have a marker here. Let's come over to here and possibly do it a different way. Cause you'll notice when I move my mouse over it, it there's a little M in parentheses telling me that's gonna be the keyboard shortcut. And that's the one that I recommend. And you can see very easily, I can start adding markers on there. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of those, right click, I'm gonna say clear all markers, and then that's gone. Okay, now moving along here, you have these two little braces here. You can see here is the mark in, and then here is the mark out. Earlier, when I brought up my video, you saw I had this like kind of gray bar going across here. That was essentially saying, what's my in point? 
what's my out point, so I can very easily decide little bits and little pieces and little chunks of what I want to actually store. So let me just go ahead and watch this, and I say, okay, that's really great. Okay, right when they go over the line, I wanna say that's gonna be the beginning of what I want, so right there. So I would mark that right now with a little endpoint. So those of you probably notice already, so in parentheses, you have a little I to be able to mark your endpoint. So that's what I'm gonna do. I, there's my endpoint. So I'm gonna keep playing it, and I'm gonna hit the space bar as soon as it starts to go down. Maybe I'm gonna go back a little bit. See that? Just using my right and left arrows, I'm gonna hit the, guess what? The O key on my keyboard. And now I have an in and out point. Now, why is that important? I have now specified a very particular part of my video that I want to then go into the timeline. See that? Nothing else will actually go. Just that little space right there that I have set that I want to be part of my video, I can easily do that. Now, earlier I showed you, yes, I can just drag the video. Yes, I can just drag the audio. But if I want everything, just drag the video from up on top here, and that's gonna bring everything in. And you'll notice now this time, I have both video on top and I have audio on the bottom and these two different layers here. Now, sometimes you might wanna move these around, right? You can notice how this is one grouping here. Now, I want you to notice how this is one big group of going from in to out. If I move my mouse over this, and I decide, you know what, I'm gonna actually go maybe a couple of frames back from my in and out. I can easily do that. See that? I can move this around as a group. You'll also notice that these little bookends are also editable. So, oh, you know what, let's actually get a little bit more from here. You know what, I kind of want to have a little bit of a lead up. That's great. And that's showing me kind of how it's going to end. Okay, that's great. So I can come back to here, delete this, and then I can then drag this in back into the timeline here. But let's take, take a look at some other ways that we can bring it into the timeline if you're not comfortable with that, so we can look at some other different ways. You'll notice here's this insert option. And notice that's just a little comma. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that. And it pretty much does the same thing as I did before, just by dragging it. And now let's maybe get another video clip here. So I'm gonna double click on that. And let me clear out these in and out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and right click, clear that out. And let's just say I wanna insert another video clip from here. So let me just start from here. I'm just gonna say in, come over to here. I'll just say O for out. And then I'm gonna insert it and then notice what it's going to do. So I'm gonna go over to here, say insert, and it just comes right there, right where the playhead started. Let me do that one more time so you can see where that playhead is. That is where it's going to insert, right? You can see that, bam, there you have it. That's good, and then I just say insert. Okay, that's great. So let me undo that. Let's come to the beginning and let's see the difference here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say insert, and that pushes it over. Now, I'm showing you this because I wanna make the distinction between insert and overwrite, okay? So let me go ahead and undo. And this time, I'm going to click on overwrite, and you'll notice what it does. It overwrites everything, okay? Uh-oh, I don't want that. So let me show you maybe, maybe a slightly different, shorter version of this, right? So this is only gonna be about one second. And this time I'm gonna do overwrite, and then notice it overwrites only the first second of that footage. So maybe that's your goal, right? So let me come over to here and I'll do another maybe one second of this part here, okay? And then I'm just gonna do overwrite or just hit the period key and that overwrites here, okay? So if you take a look at this here, we actually have three different separate clips. And if we watch it here, I'm just gonna hit the space bar, one second, that comes up, another thing, okay, great. And then there was another one in there as well. I can go in and get rid of that. All right, so you can see how all of this can really come together from the source panel by picking and choosing which parts that you want to have using our in and out, and also deciding whether you're going to insert it or overwrite, and depending on where the playhead is, that's where it's going to land. Now I'm gonna come back to my Sushi Chef, and I'm gonna show you one other tool that we can use here in the source panel, which is the export frame option. 
So there might be a still frame on this that I'd like to get. So that's a great shot of our chef in action. And I want this as just a shot, right? Just one still image and I want that exported out. And that's where this option is gonna come in here. You can see here is this little camera icon. You move your mouse over, it's gonna say export frame or control or command shift E. Click on that. It's gonna say, okay, well, what do you wanna call this? All right, so I can spell Sushi Chef better than I can say it. So I'm gonna go ahead and just type that out. And it's gonna ask me, well, what file format do you want? I'll just make it a JPEG, that's great. Where do you wanna put it? I wanna put it in with my stills, that's great. Fantastic, do I wanna import this into the project? Maybe, maybe not, I'm not sure at this point, so I'm just gonna say okay. I click okay, and now I have that available. So let's go ahead and go into that folder, into my computer to be able to see it. So here I am inside of stills, and here is our Sushi Chef. Wonderful, great, does a really nice job. And now I have that and I can use that anytime I want, right? I can use that, bring it into my website, I can send it as a newsletter, I can do all kinds of different things to it, bring it into Photoshop and then master it however I'd like, all right? So the last thing we're gonna talk about here within our source panel is this little guy right here, this little plus sign. This is our button editor. Some of these buttons you may not want. There might be certain tools here that you do wanna to add to it, and that is gonna allow you to do it using the button editor. You'll notice that you'll see other button editors in other places on the screen as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, and you're gonna see all kinds of things are gonna pop up here. Some of these things are gonna look familiar, like you're in out, and some things might be a little bit new. If you're working with VR, if you wanna have some separators, you can very, very easily do that. And if you don't want certain things here, like say for example, like my step back, right? I use my keyboard shortcut for that, so I don't really need that, so I can get rid of that. Okay, let's go ahead and go to, that's just the space. I wanna bring the space back over to here, set on another space, maybe bring that over here, okay? So I can absolutely control how I have all my buttons laid out very easily, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and now I have a different button set. Of course, you can change the order, do whatever you like, all right? So again, hopefully you understand what the purpose of the source panel is, all right? It's gonna allow us to go from our project into our source and then pick and choose which parts of the video that we want to bring actually into our timeline. So think about that process. It starts from here, we're able to view it, we're able to choose in and out points, and then bring it into our timeline however we like. All right, in our next upcoming videos, we're gonna take a look a little bit deeper into the timeline itself and how that works with our program panel and how we can also make all kinds of more basic edits, but also some advanced edits as well. All right, so, Please practice this, start building your own projects, start picking and choosing different video components you wanna bring in there, maybe even do some exporting if you like, change the button order, change all kinds of different things in terms of you know the audio, the video, everything we've done, put this to use, and we'll see you in the next video. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how we can work with markers inside of our source panel. Earlier, I showed you how you can right click and you can very easily say, hey, let's add a marker into this. I also showed you how you can use the letter M to do markers. So we're gonna go a little bit deeper how we can actually add in markers and we're gonna see the value of working with markers and how we can also add on comments and text and also color code our markers. So everything that we're gonna learn here about markers is also gonna be able to be applied to other panels like our program panel as well, okay? So we may do a quick lesson on that, but just understand that pretty much the same process that we're gonna learn here for our source panel for markers is going to be able to be applied for our program panel as well. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit play on here, okay? And there we go. And I'm just gonna hit, as soon as I see something interesting, I'm gonna hit M. Okay, there's some people there. I want people out, good, I'm gonna mark that in there. Just wait, okay, I'm zooming in. All right, more things are happening. Okay, good, just hitting M again. Oh, I like that, someone's touching it. Cool, all right, nice.
Fantastic. So I got a lot of markers here. Why do I have the markers here? So I can very easily go right back to them. It helps me stay organized with my content. Very cool. But I also want to label these. Okay, so that's where we're going to actually take kind of next level here. So if I double click on this marker, I want you to notice what's going to pop up. I can now name this marker. I can just say, okay, so this is going to be opening, just call this a long shot. Okay, so this is going, I'll just say this will be intro to the science components. Okay, great. And then notice down below, I have the marker colors. Okay, so just for right now, I'm just gonna make that red and simply click okay. And now you'll notice that my marker has now changed color. I move my mouse over it and it tells me exactly what I just wrote down. Opening long shot, this will be the intro to the science component. Very good. Come back over to here, great. And then you know what? I don't really want this. I'm gonna right click on that. I'm just gonna say clear selected marker. And there you have it. Great. So let's come back over to here and then, all right, that's nice. And I don't really think that's very interesting either. So I right click on it, clear selected marker. Great. Now, some of these other ones, let's just go to this one here. I'm going to right click on this one and then notice got to be right on top of it, by the way. So if you right click on it, I'm going to say edit marker this time I do that. And that pretty much takes me to the same exact thing as I saw before when I double clicked on it. Okay, so I'm going to say touch the tube segments. That's great. And then I'll just make that purple. Click OK. And there you have it. Okay, so you can continue on and on and on from there. We can see the process is all about organization. Now, once you start having quite a few of these markers, you might want to be able to just go through them very quickly and easily. And then notice here, you can right click and you can see, go to next marker and see, so just goes right to the next marker, go to the next marker, just snaps right to those. Okay. So that's really nice to be able to do that. Now, if I don't want these anymore, again, just simply right click. And I'm going to say clear selected marker, right click, kind of get right on it. Okay. And that's where if you were to hit the tilde key, you might be able to get a little bigger of a version of this to be able to get rid of that. Okay, so come back to here, come back to there, or like I said, just right click on it and then just go to previous or to next and I'll have my tilde key and I'll come right back. Okay, now later on, we're gonna go into our program panel. We're gonna see also how we can work with our markers and we're also gonna do the same thing inside of our timeline. All right, so practice that up. Hopefully you see the utility in that and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last few lessons, we covered the source panel and we broke things down in terms of getting content from the source panel using in and outs and markers and bringing them into our timeline. So in this series of lessons, we're gonna go a little bit deeper into the timeline. So your timeline is going to exist right over here in the lower right for me. And you're gonna notice that I have a whole bunch of different layers over here and I have my audio and I have my video. And I also have a name right up here. This name right here, this is known as my sequence name. Okay, so when you hear sequence and you hear timeline, they're more or less synonymous. Okay, so I want you to notice also over here within my bin, that I have this little icon right over here and I've created another bin called sequences that I've organized them. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the difference between the icons that we see here for our videos versus our sequences. This is a sequence that's already been created and it was created essentially by default by Premiere when I brought something into a blank timeline. So let me go ahead and demonstrate a few ways to create sequences. So I'm going to close this out it's right in here. And right now I have nothing in my timeline and even notice it says no sequence, right? So sequence timeline, more or less synonymous. So I'm going to take my in and outs here. I'm just going to go ahead and just do in, right? And not even to do out. I'm just going to drag this inside here. And you'll notice now automatically it's created something for me. And it's named the sequence automatically based off of the name of the clip that it came from. Okay, so notice here is the source 2018, et cetera. Here it is 2018. Okay, so just understand how that works. 
Now I could be creating a sequence in another way just by taking my video from my bins on the left hand side over here and then just bringing them in and then creating a sequence that way. So let me just go ahead and close this out. And now let's just grab something from my videos folder. It's gonna go ahead and just collapse all this so we can see this here. And you can see I have all my information on this. And I'm just gonna drag this in. And you can see now I have all this content in here. You'll notice there's even markers in here that are pre-existing from when they were inside of the source panel. Pretty cool, I can see all that information there and that's really helpful. Now, if I wanted to now rename this and I wanted to get a little more organized with it, I would come back over to here. Now, something really important to notice is that as soon as I drag this from here into here, a new icon now appears. Okay, so I actually have a new sequence that I didn't have before that was magically just sort of birthed just by me clicking it over here. So not only in the timeline was that sequence created, but also I now have a new object inside of my bins. So I want to rename this, right? Let me just watch it. Okay, so I'm just gonna call this the, you know, Tesla coil or something like that, right? So I can see that's there. Okay, that's great. So I'm gonna rename that, okay? So just simply click on it and just say Tesla coil. I hit enter and now notice not only does it change here, but it also changes up here. And then what I'd like to do is move this to be organized into my sequences. And now there it is right there for me to use, okay? so. That's really the first thing to understand about sequences. Now, I'm gonna leave you with this one little bit before we start getting a little bit deeper into timelines, is that we might wanna know what our sequence settings are, okay? And that's gonna be important when you're working with you know, certain types of needs in terms of your frame rate and resolution and things like that. So if you go over to here to this sequence menu up on top, you click on that, you're gonna see here is your sequence settings. Click on that and you can see there's gonna be a lot of information about my sequences, right? So I could then change these if I wanted to, if I wanted to override it, you know, do all kinds of different things here in terms of my audio, my frame rate, my resolution, everything like that. You can then change these if you want to. And if things are not matching up because maybe you have, you know, two different types of videos coming in together as one, right? You might get an error message on that and you'll need to decide ultimately which settings to choose, okay? And you'll know when the time comes what the right setting is, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And if I wanted to add in something else from here, right, I'll just drag this in. See, I can then drag this in and now, that's now adding on to my sequence, all right? And then ultimately, I would then edit this and then export it out. And this is essentially my project, right? This is essentially what I'm gonna be working on Okay, that I've kind of cooked everything up potentially up in my source panel up here, and it ends up over here in my timeline. Now, eventually we're gonna start working with this program panel, so we'll be able to see how we can, you know, see what's down here, and then make any edits as necessary, and then it'll ultimately end up in our timeline, right? Or it's gonna be really doing what's in our timeline in real time. Now, the good news is a lot of the stuff that we learned about our source panel we can transfer that bit of knowledge over into our program panel. You're gonna see the icons look very similar, a little timeline looks the same, and we have a lot of these other things in terms of the playback resolution, right? The timestamp, right? The ability to actually add on some more buttons, you know, all this good stuff here. So everything that we just covered in those last few chapters, you're gonna see we can transfer this over into our program panel just as well. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video, practice creating your first sequence based off of some videos you have, maybe add some more in there, check out the sequence settings, just get comfortable with it. But we are gonna get a little bit deeper in terms of editing in just a little bit. Okay, see you in the next video. Okay, now that we have a good understanding about the timeline and sequences, let's start actually building something out in kind of a realistic way of how we might have things organized primarily and then how we'd bring it into the timeline and then do some editing. All right, so you'll notice over here in my little bin section over here, I again have my little project folder here. And then within I have all my individual bins and I've organized things pretty nicely here where I have all my videos here. 
And again, my still images, my sequences, all that good stuff here. And then within my video bin, I've created these separate sub bins. Okay, so if you can recall, you can make bins just by using this little icon right there. And it's gonna create a bin, you can rename it. And then you can even stack it within other bins like I have here, where I have kind of, you know, folders and subfolders essentially. All right, so I have this exploratorium restaurant scene and I also have another one called science. This all has to do with my exploratorium project. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just unfurl this a little bit so I can see I have everything nice and labeled. Okay, so if you wanna label any of these, you simply just click once and then you click again and you just start renaming it. Kind of like a slow motion click, right? Good time to kind of take a little deep breath. You just sort of click once, take a deep breath, and click again and just start typing, okay? Now, I'm gonna be able to see all the information about my videos and such right here. You can see, again, I can name it. You can see here's the video duration, here's my media type, here's my frame rate. And once again, if you don't see the information you want, you can right click, go over here to metadata display, and then you can unfurl this little guy over here, and then you can add whatever you want inside of here, right? You can see this, so just go ahead and check the boxes if you want to see certain elements on there if you like. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel out of that. Okay, and I'm going to do the tilde key to then make that nice and big so I can be able to see everything within here. Okay, so just a little review for you in case you forgot, but in case you wanted to see certain elements like the video info, right? It's way over here, right? You can see this is really important information, especially if my sequences are conflicting with each other. I might wanna have this way over here as like one of the first things that we see, right? Like, okay, that's actually really important. Okay, so I'm gonna hit the tilde key once again, come back here, and then I'll be able to see, good, there's my video info and I can see, good. They all match with each other. Just in case they don't, again, you check out your sequence settings to make all that happen. Okay, so now let's go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and expand this out a little bit. And I'm just gonna start kind of telling the story about you know my restaurant and everything, right? So I've labeled these accordingly, according to my kind of storyboard, but then again, that might change. So let's just see what we can do just to basically start a timeline sequence of what I might wanna have in here. All right, some of you, you may have already started inside of the source, but I wanna give you another set of options that you can also do it looking at the timeline. So what I'm gonna do now is just drag this into my timeline and then bam, that now gets created, okay? So I now have a sequence. And again, notice that I now have a new icon that's appeared and it's related to this sushi chef close up, okay? I'm gonna rename that and I'm gonna move this into my sequence folder, okay? So I'm just gonna call this Exploratorium Doc, okay? And now I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this. It's gonna go up into my sequences, okay? It doesn't really change anything in terms of what's gonna happen on this side except for the name, but now I'm good to go, all right? Now let's just go ahead and just watch it. I'm gonna hit the space bar be able to see it up on top. That's great. Awesome. Good. All right. Wonderful. Now, if I change my mind, I don't want that anymore. I can just simply go ahead and select it and then hit the delete key and it's gone, right? The delete key on my keyboard and it's gone. Okay. So as easy as that. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to bring in something else. So let's go ahead and bring in, let's say the restaurant sign entry. That's going to be maybe a, a good way to kind of tell my story. I'm going to bring this in. Okay. That's great. And then notice because the sequence has already started, I can actually just bring it in as it is currently existing, right? So I don't need to really necessarily worry about having to do a whole new thing all over again because it already exists as essentially a file if you think about it like that, okay? So I'm gonna come back to the beginning. I'm just gonna hit the up arrow and that takes me all the way back to the beginning. And I'm gonna hit the space bar. Great, that's a nice introduction to it. And then Maybe I'm gonna tell a little story about, okay, the restaurant long shot. So I'll go ahead and bring that in this way and notice how I can just kind of just let that snap right into place. Okay, and then let's just go ahead and back this up a little bit. Okay, good. So pretty simple, just bringing this stuff in in this very nice little kind of linear manner. All right, so let's just kind of build this off a little bit. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and just take my Sushi Chef at another angle, just bring that in. All right. 
Great. Good. And then we're going to see him again. I'm going to see him close up. And now we start to see as I do that, my timeline's getting a little bit crowded. Okay. I'm like, oh, wait, what's going on over there? Right. What's missing on the right hand side? So let's see how we can zoom in and zoom out of our timeline a little bit. So if I hit the minus sign, look at that. This is the minus sign on my keyboard, plus sign on my keyboard. Zoom in, zoom out. There's no control, there's no command, there's no shift. It's just simply minus and plus. And it's very valuable because your timeline is going to start getting pretty crowded pretty quickly. All right. So nice thing to know about there. Now, sometimes you also may want to be able to see some of the content in here. You might want these to be a little bit taller and shorter. Okay. Now, you can use your mouse to do some of these things. If you notice over here on the right hand side, right? If I drag down, notice that's going to make it a little bit taller. Okay. And then if I hit the plus sign, so I'm able to see kind of a little thumbnail version of that. Okay. So again, all I did was do this. Okay. Now, if I do control plus plus, see that? That allows it to grow taller, just the same thing as what I did the first time. If I do Alt plus plus, that makes the audio grow. Okay, so if I start to kind of really build this out more, I'm able to see, okay, good. There is a nice little kind of preview of things, but also kind of bigger targets for me to isolate as I start doing my edits. Okay, so it's something you're gonna to wanna to really practice, get some of that fluidity down. All right, now let's just review some of these shortcuts. Okay, so if I just hit the up and down arrow, that goes from going from the beginning of a clip to the end of a clip all the way to the end, just like that. See that? Really nice. Okay, if I just hit the minus key on my keyboard, that just zooms in and zooms out, right? Plus, zooms in, minus, zooms out, just like that. And if I do the control plus, that will now make the clips taller on the timeline for my video. And if I do alt plus minus, that will do just the audio. So this will be something you're going to want to just play around with. And again, if you prefer to use the mouse, you can go ahead and just do this way and you can see that does the same thing. Okay, now let's go ahead and explore some of the other elements that are on the timeline. Now you'll notice a few things that might be familiar to you, like a little eyeball here, right, to make this visible or invisible, right? So if you do that, then not only you're not going to see it here in the program, panel, but when you export it, you will actually not see it. So this is basically saying, hey, I might want to do, you know, one version without this video. Maybe you've got some B-roll on there, or maybe you're going to take away some audio. You just take that away. Okay. Notice down over here, you also have some familiar letters, I hope, right? Notice when you move your mouse over it, you have, you can mute this track, right? So therefore, when I play it, I won't be able to hear anything. Or you can say this is just going to only play this particular track. So this is going to be the solo track. Okay. So really nice. And only that's going to play. So in case you have some voiceover there over your music, you just want to hear how the music is going to be or just the voiceover. You're going to only want to hear the voiceover. And this implies you have other tracks, right? Because right now, notice that we only have one video track and we have one audio track. So if you have other ones, if I were to say, hey, only play this one, it's going to mute out the other audio tracks there, right? So just keeping that in mind. Okay, you'll also notice that I have this option to lock, right? So therefore, I can't mess with this. If I'm accidentally clicking on it, whatever it is, just getting in the way, right? I can just lock that, right? So therefore, notice I can't do anything with it as much as I try. I can go and unlock it and then bam, there that is. Now, we also have a few other things here, like our V1, V1, our A1, A1. We're going to talk about a little bit more about that in a little bit uh, with our track selectors. And what these two things do is the first one on the right hand side, it basically tells me which video track am I on, which is V1. And this is going to be audio one. Now, what these two are going to be talking about is where they are going to be locking and tracking from when we go to our source panel and then bring them in. So when we bring something in, we may not want it to automatically track 
to one of these audio tracks or this video track. We might want it to be to V2 so we can tell it to do that, right? We're not gonna do that right now, so just stay tuned for that video. Then you've got a few other options here that we're gonna explore in just an upcoming video in a little bit. So just kind of keep an eye for what we see up on top here. And we also have these toolbars here, which we're gonna explore all kinds of different things here. Okay, so in the meantime, go ahead and practice and get comfortable with all these different elements on the timeline for making yourself more fluid as far as zooming in, moving around, right? Making things bigger, smaller. Okay, and then also working with these elements as far as muting, locking, um, toggling your visibility, et cetera. Okay, so pause the video, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In the last lesson, I talked about our track selectors, right? Meaning that where do you want our source when we have our source video? What tracks do you want it to end up on inside of our timeline? So notice how we have V1 to V1, A1 to A1. That's pretty simple. But sometimes you want some of your video or your audio or whatever to go on a completely different track. So what's nice about working with digital video, as you know, is that you can layer your tracks on top of each other. So if I look at this, this video that I have in my timeline, I'm starting off here with my sea glass. But let's say I want to have a part of my sushi chef in action. Maybe I want to have him on top, right above, right where it comes into sea glass and then bam, it goes very quickly to the sushi chef and then it goes back to the sign and this and this and that. So I want it to be on another layer, okay? So I can easily move this up and down. I can go here to there, whatever, and I can notice I can do that. Okay, I can move this down here if I wanted to, right? That's pretty simple. I'm just gonna do Control Z or Command Z on the Mac if you wanna do that, but pretty straightforward. But now, what I wanna do is actually use these tools to be able to do this and do it pretty kind of fluidly. All right, so you'll notice here I have a nice little in out right here. So I can go ahead and just select this panel and I can watch it. Okay, let's come over to here. Okay, there he is. Okay, and then maybe not so long. So remember, I can just go ahead and bring this in. Okay, he's just going real fast. I love that. So let's just go ahead and grab this. Use wait for the hand there. Okay, and then I think maybe about second, two seconds will be good for that. Perfect, okay? And then I want this little bit to end up on the top layer here in V2 and also the audio down below here. Or maybe you don't want audio at all. It's totally up to you. Remember, you can also just say, hey, listen, only do the video, only do the audio. But let's see what we can do now to make the tracks go where we want them to go. So I'm just gonna very simply choose this right here, you can see, bam, and then I'm gonna come over to here. And now notice what I'm doing is I'm basically sort of like tracking them so they can kind of link to these, the ones that I now have selected. So this is coming from the source, but it's gonna end up over here, right, inside of this V2. So let's just take a look at this now. How is this gonna work? You'll notice here I have my insert and I have my overwrite. Let's see the difference between those two. I'm gonna simply click on that. And you can see, oh, what does that do? insert. Oh, okay. That that might work. Okay. Because it kind of splits things apart a little bit and it makes everything go over here. And that's not bad. Okay. All right. There he goes. And then we're back to this. Okay, cool. So we're just kind of setting up, you know, the kind of the, the layout for kind of this sort of, you know, speed and, and drama and everything. But let me go ahead and just undo all that. I don't necessarily want that necessarily. I'm going to explore some more. And this time I'm going to go to overwrite. So when I choose that, and again, notice going from V1, A1 right here to then go to these layers right there. I do that and then notice more or less the same thing is accomplished where they go to the corresponding respective layers to the right tracks, but it doesn't actually split anything apart, right? It doesn't kind of like divorce those, the kind of the integrity of how these video clips were to begin with. Okay, so it doesn't expand the time. It's another way to look at it. So let's take a look at it now. Great, and that was nice, fluid jump from one scene to the other, okay? So kind of an important thing. I could do that manually, certainly, right? I can kind of bring another one over here. Let's just go ahead and find my little hand. Let's just grab this, okay? And let's see what that looks like. Okay, great, and then maybe later on, you're trying to do a completely different one from here. Like, let's maybe just grab this. And then this time, 
I could just say, hey, listen, I'm only gonna drag the video and then I could just drag it right here if I wanted to just the same because this track now exists, it's active, it's live. And you can see I can go to here and there's gonna be another one right there. Okay, a little bit odd in this case, but just know how easy it is to be able to do that. Okay, so just a quick little lesson on our track selectors, see how that works. Cause you might see that, you might see these other layers and these other tracks, you can say, well, how does that work? And then why is one clickable versus the other? You're basically just saying, hey, track to this track. That's another way to look at it. Okay, so practice that and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now, one of the most important and most widely used tools you're gonna to see with the timeline is the razor tool. I just think about a razor tool like you'd see if you're gonna be doing some old fashioned editing, right? We're just kind of cutting things up, cutting up our film strip to make things piece together and remove things that we don't need. So we're gonna kind of jump around a little bit out of order on these guys here. You can see we have all of our tools here and there's one that looks like an old fashioned steel blade and that is gonna be your razor. So if you move your mouse over, it's gonna tell you in fact what it is, okay? And you can see, bam, that is the razor tool. You'll also notice that you can just hit the C key. Now. The other important one in this same little grouping here is this one right here, which is the selection tool. So I'm gonna hit the V key to go back to that, hit the C key to go back to that. So really important ones to know about. So think about C like cut and think about V like the shape of this icon. That's a good one to remember about. Okay, so now let's just see how this is going to work for us. I'm gonna zoom in just hitting the plus sign and I'm just gonna drag this over a little bit. Okay, and I'm just gonna just watch this. So we see I have a lot of kind of lag time before really anything kind of happens, but I want to kind of just wait for his head to turn a little bit. Okay, so, all right. So I don't really need all the stuff here, right? All that kind of like lead up. Yeah, those, those lobsters are pretty cool, but maybe I'll just put that into another shot. So like right about here is where I want to cut that. So if I hit this right here, or if I just tap on the C key, I'm just going to go right over there. Notice how it locks right in. Okay, it's kind of nice. I click on that and then notice I now have two separate clips, okay? And right now we're just noticing, we're not clicking on anything. Why do I not wanna click? Because my razor tool is still activated. So that's why we just learned about the V key. So I can go right back to my selection. So I can click on this and then just select it and then delete it, okay? So really important because guess what? I don't want this, but I do want this so I can very easily get rid of it. Now watch what happens when I hit delete on my keyboard. Big old gap. Right? We don't necessarily want that gap, of course, right? unless we're planning to put something else in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. So instead of just hitting delete, I'm gonna hold down the shift key and hit delete, and then notice what that does. Right, That basically does what we call this like ripple delete. So basically it says, hey, listen, let's go ahead and just get rid of all those extra spaces there that was there before and just close it all up and then bridge those two together. All right, so that's a really, really important one. We're gonna talk about kind of the ripple tool and the roll tool in just a little bit, but I want you to see how we can do that kind of maybe a little more manually, okay? Now there's another really important keyboard shortcut I wanna show you, which you can kind of do things on the fly rather than actually having to go to your razor tool if you wanna accomplish the same goal here, right? So say this is just happening a little bit too long here. I just wanna clip some of this stuff out. A couple of things we can do. Right In this same conversation about the razor tool, if you just do the command or control K, notice what that does. Okay, Con command or control K essentially just clips it right where the playhead is. Okay, so I don't actually have to go over to my razor tool to be able to accomplish this. Then I'm gonna do my shift delete and that goes away. Okay, so really nice. Okay, now there is also trimming. I'll do a separate lesson on that um, right after this. Okay, but just try that out, work with the razor tool, work with the keyboard shortcut. And then again, understand if you hold down the shift key and then delete, you're gonna get rid of that extra space. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson. Let's now talk about trim edits. And this is gonna be one of the more basic and pretty straightforward ways that you can make some edits. So if we watch our sushi chef coming over here, great. And let's say we decide we actually want a little more of what's on there. What's really neat about this is that even though I have been working and I've already edited some of this stuff out to be shorter and I've gotten little pieces of it from my in and out from where it started to my source, 
the stuff that's that we can't see, which is like over here or over here, right? Prior to what we did our in and out is still available to us. So if I come over here to the right, notice how I'm getting this little red bracket and an arrow and I click and drag out, I'm actually able to see the stuff that I didn't get the first time, right? And I just said, oh, you know what? That's actually what I wanted, right? But I said, listen, I didn't want that part. And then notice on the right-hand side, it's gonna show me where it's going to actually begin and also how it's going to edit from my C glass over there on the left-hand side, right? So I can see, is that gonna be a nice edit between from here to there? Okay, so it's really neat that even though we've decided what our in and outs are going to be initially from our source, we can always get those back without having to really do the edits all over again, right? So now if I watch this, starting a little bit later, but then I'm getting something a little bit different. But let me go ahead and just bring a little bit more out. Let's just go all the way to the end this time. And we'll be able to watch it. It's gonna be longer and we're gonna see the chef a little bit longer, okay? That's pretty great, I kinda like that. I don't really need to see the sign. And if I make a mistake or if I decide, you know, something creative a little bit different, I can always bring those things back, okay? So that's pretty neat. All right, now let's see it from another perspective. Let's go over here to this clip right here. I'm gonna watch this and it's okay, you know what? That little part came up a little bit too much. I don't really need all that. So I'm gonna just make all that stuff go away. So I'm gonna go over to here and then notice how my little bracket is facing the other direction. If I come over to here, it's facing this direction. So it's kind of important depending on where you're gonna be trimming from. So and if I just go ahead and just trim this way, watch what's gonna happen now. Because I have two clips side by side, there becomes that gap, just like we saw in that last video. And that obviously is not what you want. So what we're gonna do this time, I'm gonna go and undo, is I'm gonna hold down the control or command key as I do that, watch this. And then as I do that, notice how it doesn't matter, right? It just basically says, hey, we're gonna take that and then it brings it over back over to the left, right? If you see that, how it says, hey, not a big deal because I'm gonna close out that gap. This clip here is gonna be shorter, but it's gonna bring it back. This clip does not get affected, but everything else, right, gets a little bit shorter in terms of the entire length of the video, but only this one really gets shortened, right, because that's what I just trimmed, okay? But I didn't get any gap as a result of that, okay? So really nice. So let's just do another one that you might do very often just from the beginning. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just hold down my control or command key, look for that little bracket, and then notice I don't lose anything from the beginning. See that? Let's go right to there and then, okay, great. So there's no gap, no nothing right there. It does make the entirety of the video shorter, okay? But all I'm losing now is just the beginning of that sign. And a few of those other things were edited out as well, okay? And then here's another one I don't really need to see. These bartenders, I'm really just focused on the chef. So again, hold down the control or command key and then I just wait till we see him. And you notice here, there's a little preview. There he goes. That's really all I care about. I don't really need to see them. So notice the previews in my program panel. Good. He's the most exciting part of this. And now because I'm holding down the controller command key, I'm not going to be losing anything. There's no gap or anything like that. Let's watch that again. And now, great. Wonderful. Okay, so practice that, definitely necessary, definitely useful, definitely valuable, definitely powerful. All right, so we'll see you in the next lesson. Now I've reached a point in my project where I decided, listen, you know what, I'm gonna mix things up a bit and I wanna bring in some other video that I've shot from my science bin. And I wanna kind of mix up all my restaurant stuff a little bit in the beginning. So I wanna bring in something like, you see I have my little beginning of my Tesla coils. I'm gonna have these little hands coming in. You know, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear this in and out. And you can see I'll have some things in there. I wanna bring those in, so they're just gonna come right around here, okay? Now I have a few options of how I can do that. Some of the stuff we've done already before, but we did them with our timeline more or less being empty. Now when things are getting a little bit more crowded, let's see what our options are for bringing in this content, right? And it's gonna be very similar to what we saw, but we're gonna have a little bit of kind of nuance, 
Okay, so we see here we have our insert, we have our overwrite, and we also have the ability to do our ins and outs. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for like the hands to come in there. That's great, so I'm gonna say in, play it. Okay, and then that's a pretty good one. Pretty cool, all right, I like that. Now, notice where my playhead is inside of my timeline. This is where it's gonna end up. So I kinda of wanna just wait and see when's it gonna be a good time, right? He's just kinda of looking at his phone or something like that. So it's like, okay, that's not necessarily as engaging. We're gonna see him in action anyway, so maybe like as soon as we move away from the food, we start showing something from this Tesla coil. Now let's just see what our options are here. First thing I want you to notice is that I put my, my track setting back to where they were initially. Remember I moved them to V2 and to A2. I wanna move them back to here because I want them all on the same track. I don't wanna have any B-roll or anything like that. I'm gonna have them just right here. And I, my goal is to have it kind of sandwiched right into here. I'm gonna kind of eat away at all this stuff here, okay? So let's just see what our options are here. So if you'll notice, again, I have my insert and I have my overwrite. So let's see what happens when I do insert. You'll notice, oh, okay. That's interesting, just kind of pushes that away, pushes it over. Let me go ahead and undo that. Let's now try overwrite. And then notice what that does. It essentially just gobbles up all of that video information where the video length is still the same. So let me go ahead and undo that one more time. Notice how this is 18 seconds. You can see the whole video length right there. I'll do it the first way. Now it's 20 seconds. Right, It basically pushed everything off to the side. So it's leaving, it, it cut it in half, right? But it's leaving all this stuff in there that I don't really want, okay? So it's like, okay, yeah, that's, that's interesting. What, what do I do there? Well, the reality is I wanna overwrite this. So, cause I wanna keep the same length of time and I just wanna kind of gobble that up, right? Oh, that's pretty cool, great. And now it's still 18 seconds and now I can see, all right, very good, okay? but. He's still there, right? And of course I can get rid of him. I just learned about, you know, how we can just hold down the commander control key and then just bring that in if I want to, okay? So not too shabby and you can see how easy it is to be able to do that. And now we can see the difference between insert and overwrite in a different context, okay? Now, let me show you potentially a different way you might wanna do this to be potentially a little bit more kind of exact, if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and just undo that and I'm gonna clear out my ins and outs here. But this time I'm gonna do something a little bit different. I'm gonna do an in and out on this part here, right? In my program, I'm gonna do an in and out because what I'm gonna be doing in this case is I'm going to be telling Premiere where that I want to actually overwrite, okay? So essentially I'm kind of marking it to basically say, hey, listen, this is where you know things are gonna start getting a little bit like, no, no, thank you. So I'm gonna just say in right there, and now let me go ahead and just go right to this spot, right? And I can just hit the down arrow, right? Makes it a lot easier. Notice how that down arrow clips right to it. I'm gonna say, oh, just like that, okay? You see that? So it's like, I know for sure, I just don't want any of that. So I can be very precise about it because I've selected the whole part that I don't want and what I do want to be overwritten, okay? So think about that, okay? So now let's go ahead and just say overwrite and then Notice what it did, it's perfect, right? I got just as much video as I needed to overwrite that guy, and then it goes right into that, okay? So understand what we did there. You can do the in and out from the source panel, or you can do it in the program panel where you can say, hey, listen, this is the area that I want to overwrite, okay? Not this is the stuff that I want to take and overwrite something else, okay? So nice way to kind of just, you know, jerry rig it a little bit to kind of be a little bit more kind of precise, a little more creative and kind of nuanced of how you want to overwrite or insert your data. Okay. All right. So try that out. Practice all this stuff. Make sure it makes sense. Make sure you're fluid in your process and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to talk about the ripple edit tool and the rolling edit tool. And where do we find those tools? We're gonna to find them over here with all these little icons. Now, if you'll notice over here, there is this little double-sided arrow. If you hold down your left mouse button, you will see you have them kind of hiding in there. And kind of the culture of these programs, as you see that in the lower right, you can see you have these little triangles there that tells us that we have other 
icons living in there for other tasks that we can accomplish. So notice here is the ripple edit tool, which is the B key for a keyboard shortcut and the rolling edit tool, which is N for the keyboard shortcut. Now we've already explored what the ripple edit tool can do, but just as a little review, let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to come back to the beginning. And if I wanted to, I'm just going to go back to this. If I wanted to actually just, just cut out some of that beginning part, I can do the ripple edit tool without even accessing the ripple edit tool just by doing my trim, but my ripple trim. So if I hold down the control key or the command key on the Mac, and I just go ahead and just bring that like that. Notice how it's just eating away as a part of that beginning part, but it doesn't leave a gap and it doesn't really affect anything else. And that's kind of the distinction between the ripple edit and the rolling edit. But let's just try that in another scenario. Okay, and I'm actually gonna use the tools that are here in these icons. Let me just go ahead and just make this a little bit smaller, hitting my minus key on my keyboard. And notice where my playhead is here. And I'm just going to bring in this little tornado video right there. Okay, and then also notice that I'm at V1, V1, A1. So that's gonna be locked into those tracks. That's great. And then very simply, I'm gonna just say insert. And you can see how it just inserts it, right? Just kind of just to say, hey, listen, here is, this little beginning part of that, like Tesla coil with the hands, and then it comes again, just like that, okay? And that's quite a bit there, but I can play around with these to a certain extent. So let's just see what the difference is between what the ripple edit can do and what the rolling edit can do. And this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to access these. And the first way I'm gonna do it is with my mouse by just clicking on it and then Later on, I'm gonna to get to the rolling edit tool by using the N key, right? Just kind of getting that habit. So let's just see what the ripple edit tool can do. So I want to ripple, so my tornado gets a little bit smaller, right? My tornado clip gets smaller, but it doesn't affect anything else, okay? So just notice here, my arrow is facing this way. I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag that way. And you can see, bam, how everything gets smaller, okay? Pretty straightforward, okay? I can go ahead and do it this way too, how that my tornado tool, my, my tornado clip, that also gets smaller, right? But my also my timeline in its entirety also gets shorter, okay? So we can see that, right? That's relatively intuitive, we've seen that before. Let me go ahead and undo a couple of times. And now let's see what we can do working with the rolling tool, okay? So I'm gonna go over here to N, right? And again, just as a little review, you can see there it is, the rolling edit tool, and that's just gonna be the N key. Let's see what the difference is here. What this is going to do is it's actually gonna affect two things at once. Notice how there are four arrows, right? It's saying, hey, I'm gonna affect you to the right, I'm also gonna affect you to the left. That's kind of the big distinction there, okay? Now it's also keep an eye on the timeline length. So I'm now gonna go ahead and click and drag to the left, I want you to notice, then, oh, okay, look at that. It doesn't affect the length of the timeline, okay? But it affected two clips at the same time, okay? So you can notice here, as I click and drag, see, I'm actually gonna see on the top part of my program panel what I'm going to see and where that cut is going to happen, okay? That's great, let's try it on this side because this was kind of our key part of what we wanted to kind of see. Okay, you know what, I wanna see a little more hands there and then that tornado gets a little bit redundant after a while, but the hands are interesting. Let's bring this in, okay? So it's affecting both Tesla one and tornado at the same time, okay? So that's really your big distinction. People get a little bit confused about the ripple versus the rolling. That's your big takeaway there, okay? So are you affecting one versus the other? And then you'll notice where my edit actually changes a little bit, right, on both sides of things. All right, so practice that, use your keyboard shortcuts for that for in terms of accessing them, but also remember you can access the Ripple tool by holding down the command or control key while you're doing your trim edits. Okay, very good, we'll see you in the next lesson. We've discussed the rolling and the rippling edit tools. Naturally, we're now gonna talk about the slip and slide tools. Okay, so a lot of fun with these and not quite as intimidating as you might think they are, okay? Because the names not, don't necessarily lend themselves to understanding kind of what they do, but once you kind of give it a little bit of um, kind of grace, you'll understand and kind of have some forgiveness around it. Okay, so let's just see what and where the slip and slide tools can do. So they're in this same area over here where we have our toolbars, and you're gonna see that over here is our slip, 
and our slide tools. So let's just first take a look at what the slip tools and notice what the keyboard shortcuts are. And I want you to notice here what's happening with this particular clip here. Now, let's just say I have this clip inside here, but I know that there's some other stuff that's living inside of this tornado clip that I can't necessarily see, but I want to be able to see it, right? I want to be able to access it. So we've talked about earlier where like, even though we didn't get some of the stuff that's coming from the source and we might want to actually get to it again, it's still there, right? So what we can do while using, again, the slip tool, we can then see what's living inside of this. Now, this is not necessarily gonna edit what's happening here on the timeline. It's just gonna move what we view within this clip and within the source that's now out of sight and it's gonna bring it into sight. So check it out now, watch what happens now when I just click and drag right on here. It doesn't affect the timeline so much, but take a look at my program panel and we're gonna be able to see what I can see before and then after, right? See that I'm able to move throughout the original clip to say, hey, listen, I wanna go all the way to the end of that clip. That's actually a lot better for me, okay? So all I've done was kind of shift what is living inside of that little space for the clip to be able to bring that in, okay? So now when I view it, I'm able to see. And now it's gonna go all the way to the end where it didn't do it before, okay? Very good, that's kind of neat. Okay, let's try that again, let's go a little bit different ways. So now I'm still inside that and it's like, you know what? Let's actually, it's about as far as it can go and just know that you're kind of at the mercy of the length of your clip also because if you reach a dead end, that just means that your clip is only a certain amount of time. Okay, so then you're not gonna see anything more, right? Because you can't really invent that. So now let's do it one more time and we'll see I just kind of shifted it over just a little bit Okay, and that's gonna hang out there and then it's actually gonna go back up this time. See that? Do I want that or not want that? Okay, totally up to you, okay? Now let's see what its little partner in crime does and that's gonna be the slide tool. And that actually does make some structural changes to your timeline. So if you wanna keep this exact same clip that you decided on by starting off with the slip tool, but you wanna kinda of move it around, you can very, very easily do that. Okay, so let's just go ahead and check that out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab this and I'm just gonna move this over here. Okay, look at that. That just goes right over there and then everything else kind of falls into place, right? Let's move this back. Okay, great. And that goes into place, right? Let's move this back over there. Okay, great. So you'll notice how it's just kind of taking the entire clip by itself, right? As a chunk and then kind of moving it Okay, so you can see you can just kind of just shift these things in place. All right, so it's something you just want to practice and see if that's going to work for you. Okay, there's other ways to do this, right? You can use the rolling edits to do the same thing, or you can do it this way. You know, a lot of different ways to accomplish the same goal. All right. So again, pause the video, practice the slipping and the sliding. Let us know how you've done, and we'll see you in the next video. Let's now talk about how we can adjust the speed and duration of a clip. So sometimes for creative effect or for dramatic effect, you may want to slow things down, or you may want to speed things up, maybe for comedic effect, you know, for lots of different reasons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work with this little tornado that we got. And then right towards the end, I kinda wanna make this so it's gonna kinda slow down a little bit for me. All right, so like right when I start to see kind of like the crown of it, I want things to kinda slow down. Okay, so very easily now, I'm just going to clip this right here. So I'm gonna split it by just doing Control or Command K right there. And now this is its own separate element right there. You see that? So they're now two separate clips. And now what I'm gonna do very easily is I'm going to right click on the clip and I'm going to say speed duration, all right? And now just notice the length of time that we have here. It's now 34 seconds. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna speed this down a little bit, right? Cause right now the speed is at hundred, okay? And I'm gonna make this have a 50% speed, okay? Right there. Now, a few other options you can do here is kind of nice. 
or that you can reverse the speed, right? So you can kind of go backwards, right? So maybe you're having people go really fast, but they're going backwards. Again, kind of a more kind of a comedic effect if you want to do that. This is really nice. You can maintain the audio pitch. So if you have somebody speaking really fast, they don't kind of sound like a chipmunk. So you can maintain that as well, right? Now, this is probably the most important part, I would say, is to make sure that this, in fact, is selected, right? The ripple edit shifting and trailing clips, okay? By default, this is not selected. And what that's going to do, because this is going to be 50% slower, what it's going to do, it's going to make the whole video that much longer. So we wanna make sure it doesn't eat away at anything to the right of it, okay, on the timeline. Because if that's the case, then, right, the video is gonna be the same length, and then we're gonna lose a lot of the stuff that's in the adjacent clip to the right of it, okay? So we just wanna make sure that we do do a ripple edit, okay? So let's just see what that's going to do. I'm gonna click okay, and you can see now we've gone to 35, seconds and now you can see here it is in a normal speed and then pretty cool and then it goes back to normal and let's just try that for this one too right maybe that's going to be a pretty neat effect let's do it one more time right click speed duration okay and then i'll make that again 50 keep the same thing here click okay and again that gets a little bit longer see there nice i like it and it goes back to here. All right, good. And then let's find our speed demon sushi chef. And let's see, we can make him going even faster. Okay, so let's now bring him here towards the end. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring him in. All right, and we'll watch him in action. Okay, so let's go ahead and right click speed duration. And let's make him go twice as fast. So we're gonna say 200%, keep everything the same, click okay. And then notice how it's actually shorter speed, but let's just watch him go, or I should say shorter uh, time duration. Okay, so, you know, again, you're gonna see when the time comes to do this, right? Cause sometimes you're just kind of like, hey, listen, this is just kind of a hodgepodge of a lot of different things. And whether it's for dramatic effect or just basically showing as much stuff as you can in a short period of time, you can see that the speed and duration can really help out with that. Okay, very good. Test that out. and We'll see you in the next lesson. In this video, we're going to talk about linking and unlinking our audio from our video. So earlier we talked about our timeline, how we have all of our different tracks where we have our video track or whatever audio track right and we also have multi-track sometimes now you'll see here that when i click on either my audio or my video they both get selected see that when i click here this gets selected when i select here this also gets selected right if i click down here they both get selected there's going to be times when you don't necessarily want them to both be selected because maybe you want to delete your audio but keep your video right and you might want to do that because hey, listen, you're gonna have a voiceover, right? And that background from let's say a restaurant or something is getting in the way. You just don't want that there. Or maybe it's your voiceover, it's your music, it's whatever it is that like, hey, listen, that background audio just doesn't belong there. Maybe you actually just wanna unlink them so you can move your audio around, right? And maybe you're actually gonna take that audio and you're gonna put it someplace else. Right now, they're kind of glued together. You might not necessarily want to have them together and you wanna have a little more fluidity and a little more independence and kind of isolate the two. Okay, so again, let's just take a look at these, right? So if I look at, let's just say, for example, like these people are kind of talking, if you can listen to this. I don't necessarily want that. I'm gonna put in some like funky music behind that or maybe behind everything. So I don't want this. So what I need to do is unlink these so I can delete my audio. If I hit the delete key right now, they both get selected. Again, I don't want that. So if I right click on the clip itself, you're gonna notice there's this option to unlink, okay? So if I click on that now, you'll notice now they're independent of each other. So I can click on this, hit my delete key, and then bam, there's that. And then if I wanted to, I can put in any audio I want there whatsoever, whether it's audio, voiceover, I can even steal some of this audio and bring it over there, copy and paste it. You can be as creative as you wanna be, because now, 
this is a single player, right? It's basically got like, it's not connected to any other audio anymore. So if I play this now, see, now it's silent. Hopefully you can hear that through my video, but you can see, okay, great. There's nothing there. So I can work with that nicely and easily. Okay. So the other thing you might want to consider doing, and that is related to this right here is this link selection. Okay. So basically if I click on that, that basically makes everything unlinked, everything that's now inside of this timeline, whether you want that or not. So now like I could kind of just marquee over everything and just be like, okay, listen, you know what? No more audio. So it makes it a little, a little faster to be able to do that. So let me go ahead and just undo that and maybe undo that. And then I'm good to go and I'm back. All right. So just some nice little tricks to keep in mind. Okay. And again, a lot of times we don't want one and the other. So we have the choice to be able to unlink them very easily to be able to have them independent and isolated from each other. Okay. See you in the next lesson. In an earlier lesson, when we were discussing the source panel, we have been talking about both the insert and the overwrite tools. But now we're talking about the program panel and the timeline panel. So let's talk about its counterpart, which is going to be these two guys over here, right? So if you move your mouse over, you see we have the lift tool and we have the extract tool. So they're essentially gonna do something similar to what we've already seen from the source tool where we're gonna bring it into the timeline, but it's gonna essentially do its counterpart of taking it out from the timeline. So if you just say, for example, you know, I have, you know, this little endpoint right here. Okay. And then I'm going to go and do a little out point right here. I want you to notice here, if I choose lift, notice what that does. Okay. It just actually extracts that out for me. Okay. So, you know, it could be similar to what, you know, we've, we've done already with just, you know, splitting something, right. And then cutting it out, right. If you want to, now let's just go ahead and do its counterpart which is going to be the extract tool. And you can see what that does, that removes the gap. So that could be maybe a little bit faster of a way for you to be able to accomplish something that might take two or three steps, you know, with using the razor blade, with using, you know, rolling or rippling or whatever you're planning to do, this might be a little bit faster way for you to work with it. So again, it's coming back to those standard sets of tools that we learn about working with ins and outs, right? You're still going to use those. And then once we establish what's our in and out point, then we can come back and say, hey, listen, either want to lift it out and then put something in there in, instead of it, or you can use your extract tool, which basically just closes out that gap and then just puts it back into place and everything else falls in accordingly. Okay, so I just want to kind of throw that out there just so we can see kind of what some other kind of nuances we can do. So you have the options, okay, because everybody's going to want to do things in their own way, what's going to be the most comfortable, the most efficient for you. So there's a lot of different ways to do a variety of different things in our timeline, and it's going to overlap with how we work with our source panel and our program panel as well. Okay, so give that a shot, try it out, see how you go. And again, we'll see you in the next lesson. Let's now do a follow-up on our discussion about markers. Now that we're a little more comfortable with the program and we may have a little more to work with, let's now see how we can work with markers in both the program panel as well as the timeline panel. All right, so what I'm gonna do very simply is just go over here to my program panel. And if you recall, the keyboard shortcut is just simply M for marker. Now it's very important. I establish where I want my marker to be. So again, I can use my up and down arrows to go right through the beginning of that clip. And I'm just going to hit the M key and you'll notice here, bam, very good. There is my little marker. I can go ahead and double click on that and that's going to pop right up. Okay. And then I'm going to say, should we speed him up or slow down? Okay. That's great. Okay, or maybe I'll even put that as a comment. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and do that and just call this speed. Okay, great. And then I can maybe color code that. Fantastic, there it is. And notice it's gonna be both on my program panel as well as my timeline. Okay, so pretty neat. You can see both, both things are kind of inter interwoven with each other. All right, now let's see it in a little bit of a different way. I'm gonna go back over to my Tesla coil and I'm gonna activate this particular one right here, right? I'm gonna activate 
my timeline panel. And then this time when I hit M, I want you to notice very subtly, I'm gonna see that I have this little guy shows up right there where I'm gonna have my little timeline marker there, okay, for me to establish as my timeline and whatever and do things with it, right? So you can see, bam, that's pretty cool. So I can see that if I want to, okay? So one second here. And likewise, if you had actually created your markers in the source panel themselves, they would come together with all of their markers on here, which is actually kind of nice. You can see them there. Okay, now let's see what we can do as far as actually seeing our comments. Okay, because sometimes we want to be able to see the comments as we put them in, right? So there's a nice little sort of shortcut that you can do to be able to see, okay, what did I actually write here? I can mouse over it. That's pretty nice. But if you hold down the Alt key or Option key on your keyboard, notice I can actually open this up to be able to see my comments. Okay, pretty cool. Let's go ahead and do another one. Let's go over here to Tornado, right? So I'm gonna go over here to this one. And again, I could use my up and down arrow there. Okay, and I'm gonna hit this time. I'm gonna show you kind of a double trick. With this selected, my program panel, I'm gonna hit the M key twice. Okay, and then notice what that does, right? Really cool. You can see how it actually opens up to my dialog box. Okay, I'm gonna say remove voices. Yeah, or just add some cool music. All right, good, and let's make this a different color. All right, and then I know I got some stuff there, and now what I'm gonna do here is hold down my Alt or Option key, and then just open that up a little bit until it goes right to the end. And then I'm gonna go too far, okay, that's pretty cool. Now I can actually see everything there. Okay, so some nice little tricks working with our markers, okay? So again, you can put the marker on the program panel and that ends up on the top of the timeline. You can put markers on the actual clips themselves, kind of neat. And then you can use the double M key, MM, to not only put a marker down, but it's gonna open up to the dialog box where you can put in your content all within one, you know, some set of steps without having to actually, you know, double click on it or right click it or something. Okay, and then finally, you can use your Alt or Option key to then open up the marker to be able to see what those comments are. Okay, so making it a little bit more interactive, more engaging, more collaborative with your team. All right, so go ahead and practice that. Lots of good stuff here. Get yourself nice and organized and strategic and uh, looking forward to the next lesson. See you soon. And welcome back everybody. In this video, we are gonna talk about cropping. How do we crop our videos to take something out that we don't wanna see, right? Something's in the frame, you just wanna crop that out. Or maybe you wanna zoom in on something. So you're cropping everything out, but really you're just getting really close up on something that you do wanna see. And that's what we're gonna focus on mostly in this lesson. And we're also gonna learn how we can do picture in picture using a lot of the same tools. Okay, so let's just take a look at this particular clip here. You can see we're watching this and then we can see his hands are going really fast and we wanna see, okay, what's he actually working on there? I didn't actually get the shot I wanted while I was holding the camera. So I can post-production really zoom in on his hands to really get the shot that I wanted to focus in on, right? So I couldn't necessarily get it, but post-production, I can do that. So I'm gonna really just zoom in essentially by using the crop tool. So how do I actually do cropping? What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to here to my program uh, monitor here, and I'm gonna bring this back down to 10% because once I double click on my little video image there, I want you to notice what happens. I double click here and you're gonna see how I get this little bounding box. So that essentially takes me to the ability to resize my image. Now, why would I wanna resize the image? Take a look at the frame that's right here. When I resize the image, the frame stays the same while the image gets bigger, but so big that it can't actually fit in the frame. So if I grab from over here, you're gonna see my frame stays the same. And what I really wanna do here is just focus in on his hands right there, okay? So really nice, and now when I'm gonna play this, you can say, okay, great. He's gonna really, really kind of get zoomed in on that, okay? So very cool. So, okay, I like that. So now I can say, okay, he's showing this here, and now I really wanna kind of zoom in on, okay, great. Now, okay, it's a little bit off, right? 
So really what I should do is I'm going to go and undo all that. And I'm going to start off by kind of just giving myself a kind of a positioning shot here that like, okay, great. That's what we're looking at. And then I'm going to just split this, right? I'm going to slice this right where the playhead is again, by doing control or command K and then bam, I have this and I have this two separate things here. Now this is going to be my kind of long shot. And then as soon as we get to this part here, it's like, oh, what's he doing? Bam. And we're going to see in fact what he's doing. So, we're going to do that by zooming in on it. So let's go ahead and double click here and notice what clip I'm on. And now let's just go ahead and just drag out from the corners here. And again, remember I'm at 10%. And then let's just go ahead and get a nice little shot there of his hand. Maybe that's a little bit too close. So again, double click, you lose it. And then just get right to that double sided arrow. Okay, very good. And now let's just watch it. Let's just watch it from a little a few seconds before. And let's come back to the fit window so we can really see it. Normal shot. And then what's he doing? Bam. Okay, great. Now we can see that a little bit better. Okay. And then maybe I don't actually need all the rest of that right towards the end. Right. It kind of does a little bit of that. So I can easily trim that. Right. So it's like, okay, I don't need that's a little bit too much extra. Okay. And then maybe I would even like slow it down or whatever I want to do there. Okay, so you can see how nice that is just to be able to, okay, great. Let's go ahead and tell my story a little bit better. Now it's coming in a little bit granular, a little pixelated. That's because I'm at this playback resolution of just the half. So when you have high resolution video, you know, 1080, 4K, you're not gonna run into this issue. But keep in mind, if you are gonna be zooming in like this and it's low resolution and low quality, it might look pixelated like this. Okay, but this is high quality, so I'm not too worried about it. Okay, so pretty neat, all right? So what we're gonna do next is I'm gonna show you kind of another sort of variation on what we can do when we're cropping, and that's with a picture-in-picture -picture type of situations, which we are going to cover in the next lesson. So stay tuned and we'll see you soon. Okay, so the last lesson we talked about cropping. Now I'm going to get a little bit more kind of creative with our cropping tools and talk about picture in picture. So picture in picture and cropping kind of go hand in hand in a way because essentially when we are cropping, we're just resizing the image and we've resized the image so far to fit in the frame where it's going to be bigger. So it zooms in. In this case, we're actually going to make our picture smaller and we're going to put them onto another track altogether. So let's now work on a different part of our exploratorium. I'm going to bring in our percussive machines here. And you can see how this is going to be maybe a potentially a nice backdrop for some things. And as I do that, I might want to have some other elements of the exploratorium on the foreground of this. And these are going to be kind of in the background, right? So we have a little bit more kind of visual interest, a few more things happening on the screen. Okay, so it could be for a variety of different things. And then maybe eventually later on, you learn how to move some of these things around. So there's some animation happening. Okay, so let's just go ahead for now, just for our purposes, I'm just going to bring in our tornado. Okay, and when I say bring it in, I mean, I'm going to bring it in to another track altogether. Okay, because this part is really important where I actually want to make it so it's going to be on the track above the track that I want to have in the background, right? So think about layers, right? One's going to be in the front, one's going to be in the back. So very simply, I'm just going to go ahead and drag this over here. So it's going to be on V2, just like that. Okay. Now, when I play it, I want you to notice it just does that, right? Which isn't so bad, right? And we're, you know, we're lucky because of the screen resolution that it actually is portrait, right? So it's actually tall rather than wide. So you're able to see kind of what's actually happening here, but it is taking up a lot more than I'd like. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my best view here. I'm going to go down to 10%. And with this selected, I'm going to go ahead and just double click on here. And you can see that I now get my bounding box. I'm going to resize that. So now that's going to be just kind of coming in over here, over here, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to put that. Okay. And what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to make this so it's going to come in a little bit later. So I have a little bit of the positioning of what I'm going to see there. Right. And then I might want to put something else on top of that 
to make it so it's going to be coming coming up simultaneously. So guess what? I have another V3 that's coming up. So let's just go ahead and take a look. What else can I put in there? Okay, let me just go ahead and play this. See it? Okay, let's try another one. Yep, kind of like that one. Let's try it again. Great. So now let's go ahead and I'm going to come back over to here. I'm going to hit the minus sign okay, so I can see everything there. All right, and then let's go ahead and do control minus so I can have a little more room there. And then just drag this on top of it. Maybe I want to have them come in around the same time. Right, and you can see now I'm going to have some kind of competing elements here. All right, but let's start working with both of these at the same time simultaneously. So look at that. I have these two Tesla One and Tornado, and I have my percussive machine underneath it. So I'm going to go ahead and select my Tesla One, double click that, resize it, bring this over here, and you can see. Now I have them side by side, these two things here, and I have this as my background. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just move this down a little bit, double click on this, resize this a little bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and maybe zoom in a little bit more so I can kind of see their sizes a little bit better. Move it to there, okay, that's great. Okay, move this over there, move that over there. Okay, lovely. Now, let's see it in action. So you're going to see how this is going to come up, the percussive machines by themselves, and then this is going to come in maybe a second or two later, combined with this, and you're going to see they're on separate parts of the frame. And of course, I don't need all this stuff here, so let's just go ahead and close that out. And then just like that, and let's see what that's going to look like. I'm going to make that nice and big. Okay, now let me just go ahead and get out of that, hit the tilde, and then you know what? Let's actually bring this so they start off at the same time. Let's come over to there. Okay. Great. Now, let's see it. I like it. All right, so you might have some more creative ideas as far as how you might be doing picture in picture, you might have a you know person who's a, your kind of omniscient narrator talking over something, or maybe someone is discussing, you know, their project and you see their face and then behind them, you actually see the project of what they're discussing. So you can see how easy it is to be able to do that, right? So the fact that you just need to have another track that you're putting one on top of the other, and then you're just resizing it. Right, so really simple. So go ahead and practice that and we'll see you in the next lesson. Well, thank you for joining us. I've had a great time teaching you all the wonders that is Premiere Pro. And I hope you are feeling empowered, excited, and creative around what you can do with this amazing program. Let's do a quick recap on some of the topics we covered. We began with understanding the Premiere interface and seeing how we can customize it to our needs. We then imported and organized our content into bins so we can view and curate our content. Once we did that, we were ready to bring them into our timeline for editing. And editing we did, like trimming, rippling, slipping, sliding, cropping. We also did a cool picture-in-picture -picture effect. And even though we covered a lot in this class, there is a great deal more to learn. Again, thank you for joining me here and happy creating. Hello and welcome to this training on Adobe Premiere Pro. And congrats on making the decision to learn and master this incredible program. Premiere Pro gives you the distinct ability to harness your creative energies in the form of video editing like no other. And once you learn even the basics, you'll have a skill set that can be used in almost any industry and field. Now, just a quick note that this course is designed to be an interactive hands-on course. So occasionally, you'll hear me say things like, pause the video and practice on your own. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential, hands-on manner. I'm looking forward to teaching you all the cool things that Premiere Pro has to offer, so stay tuned and get ready to learn. 
Welcome back everybody. In this video, we are gonna talk about text and titles and captions and all kinds of good stuff here. So before I do that, let's do just a little bit of quick review because I kind of want to get some of my panels changed up a little bit so I can see things a little bit better so I can actually have some, some content to work with. Okay, so if you recall, I have all my bins and everything over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up my video bin here and I'm going to open up to where I have my science and everything but i'd actually really like to see everything that i have inside of here to have a nice little preview of it so i'm just going to go over to here to this icon view and then i'm going to open up to let's say video and then i'm going to open up to science very good now i can actually see everything there and remember i can do my little scrubbing there and i can see kind of what's what all right so just a little review on that okay and then of course you can see how i have my little tabs here and you can see I can go from tab to tab so I can see kind of what I had before. And then you can even go over to here to see kind of what's underneath there hierarchically. All right, and then I can come back to here where I started if I like to. All right, so I'm gonna come back over here. And what my goal in this exercise is to find a backdrop for some text, okay? Because it's kind of a nice effect to have a little bit of, you know, some kind of visual interest behind my text, behind my titles, behind my caption, you know, just to kind of just show a little preview of what's gonna be there by a little excitement, a little bit of context. So if I go ahead and just double click on this, it's gonna show up over here in my source panel. And you'll notice here, I can play this. And when I play it, yeah. you see, there it is. Okay, that's great. And I also notice here, I have an in and out still chosen there. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear that out, All right? And then maybe I can just go back and I sort of scrub it and say, okay, what do I want there? All right, you know what? That actually looks pretty great. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do my in and out. So I'm gonna say in, keep playing it. All right, good. And then right when it kind of starts to fade out a little bit, then I'm gonna do my out. Okay, so again, that's just the I key and the O key on your keyboard. All right, now I'm gonna place my playhead on my timeline to be where I want it to go, all right? So if you recall, I could do a number of different things here. I could just drag my video, just drag my audio, whatever I wanna do, or I could even use my insert or I can use my overwrite. What do I wanna do, right? So it just depends. I'm not really gonna be overwriting anything. I actually want to just insert this and just notice I can also just use the comma key and then bam, notice what that does. Okay, great, and it comes in, bam, and there's my opening shot. Very good, so I have that there. That's amazing, very cool. All right, so just a little bit of review there, again, in terms of your organization, little review in terms of how you can get content in and be able to kind of pick and choose parts you want from your source and then bring it into the timeline. Excellent. So my goal here, right, is to have some type on top of this little backdrop. And this is gonna be my little introduction to get people a little excited and everything. It's like, whoa, Exploratorium, wow, psychedelic, really cool stuff, right? So people say that. So what I'm going to do now is bring in some text, okay? I'm just gonna type out a few words there and then I'm going to edit that text. So how do I bring in text? So you're gonna see here on this toolbar that we've explored quite a bit already, we're gonna see that there's this option that says T, and you'll see there it is. Move your mouse over it. It should say this is the type tool. So you click on that and now I'm in the type tool. And very easily now I can just start typing right after I click and drag and make a nice little big box here. And you can see I'm able to now start typing some things out. You'll also notice that a new track appears on V2. All right. So I'm just going to start typing out Exploratorium after dark. All right, great. So you see how that comes in, just like anything else, just draw out your text box and start typing. Now, what you don't see here, which I'm expecting that you expected to see that, is that you probably wanted to see some editing tools, right? You wanted to see some formatting options, okay? So it's not very obvious, it's a little bit hidden, and it's also kind of in a place that you wouldn't expect it. And that's gonna be in a new panel called graphics. Okay, we have not explored this, okay? And they're considering 
text as graphics. So this is going to be one of those things you're like a little head scratcher. Well, why is it in graphics? Okay, it is because it is. That's what Adobe has said for it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click on graphics. And then if you just wait about five seconds or so, things are going to change pretty dramatically because I'm going to be in the sort of graphic workspace. Okay, so things kind of shift around a little bit, right? Not dramatically, but things do shift around a little bit. And you're going to see now I have this essential graphics panel that opens up here. Okay, and then this is broken down into two tabs. You can see I have my browse tab, which we're gonna be coming back to in a little bit, and I have my edit tab. Okay, now some of these, especially those of you who have some Adobe experience, you know, working with Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, some of these should actually look very familiar to you. So if we come down to this section here, you're gonna see we have a text section, and we have all kinds of good stuff here. We can see here's where our font is. You can see you can increase the size of the font. You can adjust the alignment, the tracking, the letting, the line spacing, okay? All those good things, right? So line spacing is also known as letting, okay? And then you can see tracking is gonna give us some space between all the letters within the word. And then kerning is gonna give us space just in between individual letters, okay? So if you wanna explore some of these other ones as well, feel free to do so. Okay, so not a big fan of this font. So what I'm gonna do now is now make some changes to it. So super easy, I'm just gonna go ahead and highlight it. And now again, because I'm inside of my graphics panel, I'm inside over here, essential graphics. And then I'm gonna come over here down to my text. I'm just gonna go ahead and click. I'm gonna find something to work with. Okay, let's just try maybe Monsters Attack. Okay, Exploratorium After Dark. Okay, maybe I'll try to find another one here. How about this one? That's kind of fun. All right, and then maybe I'll make that a little bit bigger. And just notice that you can actually increase your font size in one of two ways, right? You'll notice here I have this little ruler right there. I can just go ahead and slide that over. But I also have this guy here, whereas if I move my mouse over it, my cursor is gonna turn into a little double-sided arrow, and then I can go ahead and resize it that way. So if I click and drag this way, you can see, bam, I can do that. Or if you move your mouse over it, you can see how you can go left and right right on top of that, just the same. Okay, so whatever your pleasure is, that's how you do it. Okay, now let me go ahead, I'm gonna make exploratory about that same width, and then I'm gonna make after dark, maybe another width, okay, or I should say size, and I'm gonna make everything centered. All right, and then if I wanna adjust, let's just say the line spacing here, you can see here, I can adjust that. And that's going to be this section right here. Oops, excuse me. Okay, let's go ahead and zoom in on that. You can see that's going to be my letting. Okay, so pretty happy with that. But, you know, let's just say I wanted to change the color. All right, let's just say I want to change the fill color, which is going to be basically what you'd expect it to be. That's the color on the inside versus the stroke. I might want to add on a little outline to it. I can very easily do that down here. So if I want to change this, let's just say to maybe a dark red color, I can very easily do that. I click away and I'll be able to see that. And then if I wanted to maybe put an outline around it, that's going to be a stroke. Okay, and then I can maybe increase the size of the stroke, right? You notice here it's just showing a one, right? Let me just make that. I'm just gonna click on it this time and just say five, All right? And then in order to kind of like settle this and say, okay, I'm kind of done, done. So I don't actually accidentally kind of click and make another text box. I'm gonna go back to my selection tool so then I can actually really see it, what it's going to do, right? So then it kind of like takes me to my sort of home base there, right? And that looks pretty cool. Right? I'm pretty happy with that. So just know that's you know, essentially how this is done. Now, if you wanted to have more type on this, you could very, very easily do that by coming over to this section right here. So you can actually have another layer of type if you wanted to. Like if you just wanted to have something completely different where you just didn't want it to be part of this you know, text block, you can do that by coming over to here where you can say, hey, I'm gonna do a new layer right, of what? Of text or maybe you're gonna do a shape, right, of some kind, right? You can very, very easily do that. I'll just do it for fun right now. Just so you can see, wow, that's just gonna show up right there as a new text layer. And right, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit delete on my keyboard and that goes away. Right now, let's see this in action. So I'm gonna go ahead and come back to 
here, or I can do it from here. I'm just gonna hit the space bar. All right, and there we go. In a little bit, we're gonna learn about transitions and stuff. So I know it's a little bit jumpy, but you'll notice what happens here. Okay, and maybe some of you already caught this, right? What's actually going on and why am I seeing my text over this next clip, right? Because it's a little bit too long, right? So that's a really simple fix. I'm just gonna come over here and trim that and that just locks right in there, okay? And then by the way, uh, for your locking, when you do see that little magnet thing, that's typically happening because of this snap in timeline, right? It snaps right in there. Okay, so you'll see that all over the place, right? Whenever you want something to snap in there. If it's not snapping properly, you just need to turn this on. Okay, so let's just watch it again now that I've made those changes. Okay, very good, nice and clean. All right, so love that, super happy with it. If you wanna make the edits again, let's come back here, right? And I can go back to my type tool. Right, and then this is highlighted again, very good. And now I can make whatever changes I want. Okay, you can always come back to it. So just think about it as its own separate object. All right, then you can go ahead and click on it. And guess what? I can even move it around if I wanted to, right? Do all kinds of good things to it. All right, so if you wanted to kind of just play with it with different layers, if you have other text on there, you have full control over it, all right? So very good. And then lastly, what I'm gonna do with this, I'm just gonna kind of shift this over, but then, click on this little guy right here to adjust the alignment of the object, right? To make it so it's going to be perfectly centered within my frame, all right? So you have all the tools you need all right here, but it's a little bit harder to get to because it's not obvious, right? So we're gonna go to the graphics panel here and then we see everything that we need right here, okay? Now, let's see what we can do with a few other things, all right? I wanna actually stay within this essential graphics and let's now see what we can do with this browse option. So this is pretty neat because we're gonna see that Adobe gives us some nice little freebies, all right? It gives us actually a few kind of off the shelf little captions and titles and things like that that we can use. Some of them have little animations on there. Some of them have backgrounds, preset text, you know, things like that. You can see your title here. Just explore these. You'll see some of them a little more creative than others. You know, and then sometimes you're gonna use certain ones versus others, okay? So let me just go ahead. I'm gonna go to our famous chef, right? And maybe like, I'll just do one of the times that we see him kind of for the longest amount of time. And I wanna put in some, so a caption there, right? And this might be like the caption I decide to use like all the time, right? So you can see there's this kind of lower third situation that you can see something like this for sports teams, right? It's like, okay, it doesn't have to be a sports team. They're just letting you know that that could be something you can use it for. So we'll see, there's a bunch of other ones, maybe something like that, how graphics you wanna get, but it's kind of nice because they do give you, you know, some pretty fancy ones. Okay, so let me just go ahead and find a decent one that we can work with. Okay, that one's not bad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this right there in my timeline, it locks in place, and then bam, there you go. All right, not too shabby, didn't have to do too much at all. And if I play this, we're gonna see what happens. Great, I even get a nice little animation out of that, right? Didn't have to do any animation, don't have to know any special things in After Effects or even Premiere. To be able to create that, it does it for me. It's all off the shelf, okay? And again, you can see there's probably about like 50 of them in there. All right, now what I'm gonna do is I need to put in my own stuff here, okay? So when I click on this directly, right, and I'm still in my selection tool, notice how this gets highlighted. And also you're gonna notice that it automatically now takes me to my edit tab, okay? And I can go ahead and change all the different things if I want, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead now and just double click on this. Okay, I'm gonna say Chef Bob, okay? And then add title here, okay? So Sushi King SF. All right, and of course I'm gonna come back to my selection tool. And it's as easy as that, right? So then if I play it, Let's come back. Let's just watch it as it's leading up into it. Nice, and that looks really cool, really professional. 
You can see how long it stays up there. And of course I can change that. I think the default's gonna be about five seconds. So if I don't want that to be so long, if I want it to be even longer than that, I can very, very easily do that. Okay, now if we come back to this, you'll notice because this is one of these off the shelf graphics and text captions, you're gonna see that there's actually quite a bit going on here, right? You can see here, this says shape, right? And then I actually have two layers here. That stuff automatically comes in there. So you may want to explore some of that stuff if you're kind of hungry for, you know, kind of doing things on your own and doing things a little bit differently, right? You can actually see, like if I click on shape, there's a nice little gradient there, right? And a few other options that you might want to explore. Okay, so pretty cool stuff just like right off the bat. Okay, now the last thing we're going to do in this segment, so I want to talk about how we can bring in kind of a title in the beginning. All right, so if I go over to my beginning right now, it just kind of starts off with this, right, which isn't so bad, but maybe I want to do something that's kind of like opening credits or, you know, just want to have something that's just going to be with like a black background, right? That's not super obvious, right? There's not like a black background option for us, hey, but there is something that's very similar to that that's going to lead us to that place. And what we're going to do is we're going to come over to here back to our project panel where all our bins are and everything. And we're going to go over to this little guy right there, right? Something we have not actually used. If you click on that, you're going to see you get a lot of options here. Okay. And in our advanced class, we're going to go even some more of these like our adjustment layers and a few other things. But what we're concerned with here is something called the color mat, because that's what I want to do. I essentially want to create a background, right? Or even just think about it like a video file that has nothing on it except for color. And the reason why I'm doing that is so I can have a background so I can just put some basic text on there, right? Plain and simple, right? So let's just go ahead and click on that. And then it gives me, you know, the size and everything like that, right? It should match up to my sequence. So I'm going to click OK. That's going to ask me, right? Very simple. What's the color you want to have in the background, right? And you can choose whatever color you want, right? If you know your RGB value, right? And some of these other things here, you can do that as well. Totally up to you. I'm going to choose black, right? That's going to be nice and easy for me. I click OK, and I'm just going to call this black BG for titles. And I can use that over and over and over again. Now, you'll notice as soon as I hit OK, this now appears, right? Black BG for titles, right? Now it just exists. It doesn't go into the timeline. So what I need to do, of course, is bring it into the timeline. Now I want to bring it in so it's before everything else, okay? I don't want to overwrite anything. I don't want to, you know, put it on top of anything. So what I'm going to do is hold down the control key on my keyboard or the command key on the Mac and just drag it in. And now notice when I drag it in, I let go, it just pushes everything over, right? So it doesn't actually overwrite it, it just inserts it, okay? And of course, it's because of that special keyboard key that I press down as I drag it over, right? Which is control or command on the Mac, okay? So now I have this black background. Now, so what I'm gonna do next is very simply, I'm just gonna go over to here to my essential graphics panel. I'm gonna go over here to browse and I'm gonna bring in one of these preset titles. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm just gonna drag this in. You're gonna see, very cool, right? And that's gonna be all ready to go. Okay, so let me just go ahead and just drag my playhead over a little bit so I can actually see it. And then very easily, I can just go ahead and double click on the text box. I'm gonna say a Kazuto joint production. Okay, very good. And then down here, I'm going to say 2021. All right, very cool. And then again, you can see I got all kinds of different layers happening over here. I can change my font if you want to, but you know, this is all preset. They're giving you a nice little gift. So you can choose whatever you want, you know, as a result, or you can just kind of keep it as is, right? Totally up to you. All right. Now you'll notice that um, when I play it, it just does all these nice, cool little animations and all that cool stuff, right? And you'll also notice that I have my little black background, everything. If I decide I don't want this color background anymore, it's very simple to change that. You just double click on the track right there. And this is gonna come up and let's just say I wanna kind of do like a kind of a deep color red. I click okay. And you can see how easy that is to change it and it changes the whole thing. And I play it and then nice little animation comes in and then it's gonna transition. 
bam, just like that. Okay, and we're actually gonna learn about like real transitions in a little bit, so it kind of fades in a little bit more gracefully. But you can see how awesome this is, right? So it's just like, this is really integral to all of your projects, right? Working with text, whether it's gonna be just a title of some kind, right? Maybe something that's gonna have a color backdrop, it's gonna have a, another video backdrop, right? Or potentially like a lower third situation for captions. You know, if you're doing a documentary, something like that, for a variety of different reasons. So you see that it's relatively easy to do, but it can be a slight bit of a challenge to find where all your content is. So you simply just do the T and then you go ahead and you select it out and you can put your stuff in there. But then you need to make sure you go to the graphics panel, go to essential graphics, and you can see how everything's broken out into two tabs and then you are good to go. All right, now I'm gonna say one quick thing here just to know that like, if something weird is happening where like you can't actually edit your type, right? I'm just gonna give you a quick little note on this. Um, and it could be because your display is not set to your default display for your computer. So Adobe doesn't necessarily respond well in this case. If your display is set to like 125% and it's not like the native resolution, for your computer. So what you could try to do is switch it back to 100%, okay? So you might notice that my screen might look a little bit different than other videos that, that you've seen prior with, within this title. And that is because I changed it back to make it so everything does work. So my, things might look a little bit smaller and that's why, because I normally had it 125% for instructional purposes, but now I've got it for back to 100% so I can actually show you how titles work because ordinarily they would not work. Okay, so word to the wise there, nice little tip in case it's not working for you where you can't actually make any edits. All right, so as always, pause the video, practice it up, have fun hopefully, you're starting to see all of this come together for you're working with some of my videos, if you got some of your own videos, but this really kind of culminates everything together, makes it a full piece. All right, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about how to work with still images. Sometimes you just have photographs and you just wanna bring them in to make a slideshow. Sometimes you might wanna bring them in into your actual video and you wanna incorporate them into the timeline. We did a lesson on that earlier when we exported a frame and we brought something in or you can see where that actually lives as a JPEG. Now, before I show you how to actually do all of this, I want you to see what we can customize a little bit inside of our preferences. So if you're on the PC, you're gonna click on edit and then preferences. And if you're on the Mac, you're gonna click on the premiere menu in the upper left. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to here to the timeline option. When you go to timeline, you're gonna see that there's all kinds of different preset options that you can choose as your own for preferences. What we're gonna focus on here for this lesson is going to be this, still image default duration. How long do you want it to be, right? So it's gonna save you a lot of time for when you bring in your images, right, into the timeline. Do you always want them to be 10 seconds, right? You don't have to change it every time. You can change it right here to be 10 seconds or just three seconds or whatever you want it to be, the default is, so you don't have to make any changes. After the fact, you can do it ahead of time in your preferences, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just keep it at five seconds. I'm pretty happy with that. Click okay. Right. And then also, by the way, sorry, before I, I leave here, also notice that you have these audio default transitions and also video transition defaults. So we're going to talk about transitions in just a little bit. So this will be a nice little kind of preview of where to go in case you wanted to change some of these things ahead of time in case it's not coming in how you want it to. Okay, so let me go ahead and click OK. And now let's see how we can bring in our still images. Currently, I have an empty timeline. So what I'm going to do is go over to my bin here called still images, and you're gonna see I have all of these images that I wanna bring in to make a slideshow, okay? So pretty simple, I just go ahead and click on the first one, scroll down, hold down the shift key, and click on the last one. If you wanted to actually see what they look like ahead of time, you can certainly do that. And I can always hold down, the, hit the tilde key, and I can see everything here as well, right? Kind of nice, right? Pretty cool, so I have everything there. Hit the tilde key, and then again, have everything selected, and then just drag it into my timeline. And just like that, I now have all my images here. So let's go ahead and make this a little bit taller so I can see them there. 
All right, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and hit the plus sign so I can see, okay, cool. Now I can see what's happening between all of these. So let's just go ahead and hit play. You're gonna see that they're gonna come in for five seconds, three, four, and five, and it's gonna go ahead and transition to another and another and another, right? So pretty straightforward, right? So it's just like, okay, that just comes in as it is. And notice I actually have two of the same images there. So no problem there. I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and then hit delete. And then you can see how that ripples and that goes back to there. So very good. So you can see kind of a realistic experience that you might see here. All right, so very cool, right? So now we're gonna keep it like this for right now. In a little bit, I'm gonna show you how we can do transitions but I'm gonna show you one other thing here before we go. And that's gonna be a tool that's gonna help you really kind of automate the process, but also kind of go through a slightly different, more personalized experience for some of you who already have your things all numbered or you have them sorted in such a way. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a new sequence. So far, we have actually not created new sequences from scratch. We've been creating sequences from our content, right, from our images, from our video. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go back to this little new tab here down on the bottom, and we're gonna say new sequence. And you get a lot of kind of like dizzying options here. For right now, we're just gonna keep the default. You can kind of study some of these things here, and you can make some changes to them if you want to. But for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and click OK. I'm not even gonna rename this. I'm just gonna go ahead and just say OK. And now you're gonna notice how I have a new sequence here. Okay, in addition to the one that I have here, and of course I could change the name of that, which I will. All right, but you can see I have this blank sequence. What I'm going to do now is use this feature called, you're gonna see it down here, it's going to be automate to sequence. So I'm gonna change my view to list view, and I'm just gonna choose my images here, and then maybe I'm gonna kind of sort them in a certain way. Okay, great. And then I have these guys there. Let's make sure I don't have two of the same ones again. Okay, good. Looks like I do have those two again, so I don't want those. So I'm gonna hold down the control key, command key on the Mac to then deselect that. Okay, very good. So this is in a slightly different setup for me. Okay, and again, it could be ways that you have it set up where you have it sorted, you have it renamed in such a way. But what we're gonna do is we're going to come down to this little icon where it says automate to sequence. When we click on that, you're gonna see how it gives you this from Explore SF project, the ordering. Do you want it in the selection order or do you want it in the sort order, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and choose the sort order. That's more what I care about. And again, if that's how you're doing it, right, you may actually want it to be because it's alphabetized or whatever it is or by number, you can do that. You can see here also placement. Do you want it sequentially, okay, or at numbered markers? We don't actually have any numbered markers, but know that in the future, if you did have markers, this would actually be really helpful for you, okay? So that's not something we really talked about to a large degree, but if you wanted to go to the next level with markers, you can see how it's another use for it, okay? So method, okay, overwrite, edit, okay? So right now we don't have anything else in there, so it's not gonna really make a difference whether it's gonna insert or overwrite, okay? And then we're gonna see here, do you wanna have a little clip overlap? So let's see what that's gonna look like. Okay, and then we're gonna see still clip duration. Okay, use in and out range. Okay, so you're gonna see basically, ultimately what this is gonna look like at the end. Okay, so let's just take a look at these transitions are gonna come in, right? The video transitions, everything we saw prior within our preferences in terms of how many seconds, that's all gonna come in. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And now let's go ahead and Zoom in a little bit, come over to here, all right? And now we're gonna see that when we play it, it comes in the order that I asked it for, right? Slightly different order than before. And you're gonna notice here how it actually automatically comes in with a little bit of a transition this time. Even though I didn't even really ask for transitions, I didn't even really talk about transitions, anything like that, right? they're all going to be there, right? As a result of me doing this automate to sequence. All right, now you also might be wondering, okay, I'm gonna come back to here this time, right? If I wanted to like crop in on one of my images, you can see I can do that as well. Cause some of these, if you notice, are actually maybe a little bit kind of weird or I don't see everything there. It maybe kind of didn't have the same kind of resolution as far as my sequences are concerned and my images, you can fix all that stuff. So again, what I'm gonna do is just simply double click on this. And you remember from when we did our cropping of video, you can do the same thing here 
right, within your still images. So let's go ahead and now I'm gonna bring this down to 10%. And I'm just gonna, I wanna really zoom in on this thing here. So I'm just going to make it so that's really the thing that I want people to focus on. Great. And then, yeah, this is a little bit too far of a shot. I really wanna focus on one part there. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this, double click it. And then let's go ahead and find our corners there. Okay, that's great. That's nice, a little more detail in there. So you get the picture now, right? So really slick, okay? The fact that I have that kind of control over it relatively simply, relatively easily, okay? Now, what we're going to do in these upcoming videos is we're gonna add on a little bit of transitions. We're gonna do it manually, as opposed to how we did it with the automate to sequence. We're gonna bring in a little bit of audio, okay? And we're also going to do some movement around them. So we're gonna go into the effects panel to be able to do that, right? Have them pan across, maybe have them zoom in. Okay, so I think maybe one last thing we'll do is just adjust the length of these, right? Just to have a little bit of review of how all that works, right? Just before we move on from here, okay? So of course, if I wanted to stretch this out, it can pretty much do this like indefinitely. If it comes in at your five seconds, I can very, very easily do that. Okay, and if I wanna bring this over here, okay? Notice I have a bit of a problem there, but if I then hold down my control key, notice how that's gonna do it that way, right? You can see that, fantastic. And you can see, great, I can make that extend out. I can make that stand out, right, extend out. All right, so you have that kind of creative control and that type of layout control anytime you want, okay? Just a little footnote, just as some review from what we talked about in the past with video that applies also to our still images, <laughs> okay? So very good. We'll see you in the next video and practice up. In this lesson, we are going to talk about transitions. So transitions, basically, we're going to move from one clip into the other in a little bit more of a subtle kind of graceful sort of smoothness that's going to just allow the user to have not sort of a jumpy move or shift from one scene to the other. All right, so earlier we saw some transitions, right, when I did that automate to sequence. Now we're gonna be able to do this manually. I'm gonna show you how we can do this with our still images, and then we're also gonna go into video and how to do that, and we're also gonna show you some good keyboard shortcuts that are really, really gonna help you out quite a bit. All right, so where do all of my transitions live when I want to apply a transition. So if we go over to here to the effects tab, okay, so you can see here, this is a new tab that we have not explored yet. When you click on that, you're going to see a lot of things change, just like how we went to our graphics panel, everything kind of changed. All right, so as soon as I go there, you're going to notice that on the right hand side, I get a whole bunch of effect options. And you're gonna see in our upcoming advanced premiere that we're gonna get into a lot more different effects. So we're gonna to touch on just a handful of them here. And in particular, working with the video transition. So you can see that we have a bunch of presets, we have audio effects, we have audio transitions, right? We have video effects and we have video transitions. So if I go ahead and click on this here to expand that out, we're gonna see we have quite a bit of different categories of transitions we can work with. Okay, so if I choose, for example, page peel, notice how there's page peel, page turn. How about wipe? You can see, wow, quite a few there. So these are all kind of different types of transitions that you can do. If I go over here to this dissolve one, you're gonna notice that I have a whole bunch of dissolve ones, and one in particular, I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here, has a blue box around it. That's because that is the default that is the default transition, and that's gonna be very important for us in just a few moments to understand what the default is and why that's gonna be important and how we can apply the default very easily and quickly. All right, so let's go ahead now and let's just apply any one of these, right? So let's just go ahead and go over to my wipe, and I'm gonna choose this band wipe, right? And I'm gonna make it so it's gonna go from here to here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click and drag, and I'm gonna move it so it's kind of like right there in between. And then if I really, really show you here to zoom in, you're gonna see that there's now this new transition that exists. All right, and I'm gonna go ahead and just do kind of plus plus so I can really, really see it. Notice it even says band wipe there. So let's play that and let's just see what it looks like from image to image. Keep your eye on your program monitor. You can see, okay, pretty cool, right? Maybe, maybe not, so if I don't like that, I can just go ahead and select it and then hit delete. 
So notice that I'm selecting the object of the transition. I'm not selecting the actual clips themselves. Okay, so let's maybe try a different one. Let's go ahead and just try one here. Film dissolve. Okay, very good. Let's try that again. Oh, that's pretty nice. I kind of like that. All right, so lots and lots of different options and definitely lots and lots of ways, of, I should say, much, much easier to do it than you might expect, right? You just simply just drag it right there where the two clips meet, okay? Now, if I wanted to adjust the length of the transitions, if I double click on the transition itself, you'll notice here it says set transition duration. If you recall from an earlier lesson I showed you in, under the preferences what the default transition length is, this is making it one second, which is essentially just a half a second on either side. So if you want this to be a little bit longer than that, let's make this two seconds. Right? Notice how that goes out a little bit further and you can have a little more of a subtle fade from one to the other. Oh, that's nice, very graceful, very romantic. Okay, so really cool, right? To be able to work that way very quickly and easily. Now, notice you can also use the trimming options to be able to do the same thing. So if you only want, you can see how I can do this way, right? You have a little bit more sort of fluidity around that. You can notice what's happening with that, right? The duration is coming up. And you can see you can do that way, or you can do that way. Okay, so that's kind of nice, right? You can see, all right, very good. Okay, but now that could take a long time to do all of these pretty much like one by one by one, you know, because if you've got a whole slideshow of 100 images, that could take quite a bit of time. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all this here. I'm just going to go ahead and just remove this transition. And let me just zoom so I can see everything just like that. And I'd like to actually use this cross dissolve, I decided, right? And I'm deciding it's because now it's currently at the default. And again, how do I know it's a default? Because it's the blue square. How did it become the default? Is if you right click on any one of these, notice it says set selected as default, right? You can see now that becomes the blue. I'm gonna come over to here and make this. Now this become the blue. Now, why is this gonna be important and how is this gonna help us? There is an amazing keyboard shortcut that is gonna allow us to apply transitions very quickly and easily. And especially if I have everything selected just like that, I can now apply it using that keyboard shortcut, which is, wait for it, Shift D, right? And you'll notice how everything now has that transition. So let's watch it. Nice, that transitions, wait about five seconds or so. Another one comes in, very cool, right? Didn't really have to, okay, love that, pretty great. Now let's just try a different one, okay? So I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna say dip to white. I'm gonna make this the default transition, highlight everything all over again, do shift D, okay? That now changes. See that, dip to white. You barely noticed it on the timeline, but in fact, it did change. Okay, so depending on what you're trying to do, right? So really cool, I'll do that one more time. Let's go ahead and highlight everything. And again, I'm gonna make this, I'm gonna say, let's do our film dissolve again. Make that, notice again, the blue box, All right? I'm gonna do Shift D, and now let's watch it. All right, very good. And that's where I'm gonna settle, right where I started. Okay, so pretty happy with that. Now let's go ahead and take a look how the experience would be working with video. So let's go back to our project. And if you remember, I had a sequence, right? I actually had a sequence folder, right? You can see my sequence bin, there that is. And I have this my exploratorium doc, right? Nice and flushed out there. And we can see, let me go ahead and select this, minus, minus, so I can see everything there. Very cool, getting nice and filled out. And it might be cool to have a little transition kind of going from like here to here, so it's a little more kind of subtle. So let me go ahead and just select both of these. And then if I just do Shift D, notice how that gets applied nicely and easily, right? And let me just go ahead and zoom in a little bit more so I can see that there. And now let's watch it. Now it's going to kind of zoom in. Actually, let me make them even better to have this be a little bit bigger. That's so cool. All right. 
Let's go 25%. There we go. All right, and then you may want to actually adjust this, right? So like this maybe doesn't transition so much over here, right? Or maybe it only transitions on one side. Just notice how easy that is to be able to affect that. See that? So really cool. Now that's going to be on this side. Yeah, I like that. So then that part comes in, all right? And then you can certainly do it on here as well. So let's go ahead and select these two. And I'm just gonna drag this into here. All right, so it's making sure everything gets affected. Nice. Okay, so we have a little bit more kind of like visual interest. All right, let's just do a couple more. Let's just see what else could benefit from this, right? We're just kind of transitioning from one scene to the other. And sometimes you, know, you don't wanna go crazy with the transitions, just to just kind of keep in mind, you wanna really, kind of make it so it's communicating something, maybe make make it so it's going to be, you know, part of the sort of, you know, energy and sort of style that you're creating, right? So you have certain kind of music, you might want to match the transition to that, right? You don't want to be jumping all over the place with transitions just to be able to show you have transitions. So let's just kind of keep that in mind. <laughs> okay, so I have these two here and I want to basically make this go into there. Okay, and it tells me here, it says, insufficient media, the transition will contain repeated frames. So let's just see what that's gonna look like, right? Because sometimes if your media is too small or too short, then it may not know what to do with it, okay? But that's totally fine. Pretty happy with that, right? Nothing big is happening. Now, what I want you to notice is that because I'm working with video and I now click on my transition, notice how I'm getting this kind of split screen up on top. It's showing me kind of where it's gonna kind of come and go to, right? Do you see that there? So I can see where the split is going to happen, right? So you can see that, that like, okay, it's gonna go from here, right, to there. And when I hold my mouse down on this, it actually shows me that kind of split screen. And let's just go ahead and maybe finish it off for the rest of these. Let's now just do transition just because we can on all the clips here. And you might see that you're gonna get that insufficient message there, okay? but that's okay. I think we're okay with that. They're just letting us know that, again, the transitions might be a little bit longer. That's not gonna be a lot of footage to show. All right, so let's just go ahead and take a look at it now. Let's see. I'm gonna transition from that to that. And then the next footage, slow motion, goes into the next thing, that's cool. Pretty neat. All right, and this could be a good thing if you're fading out or fading in, you might wanna try different ones. Like if you're starting off where you're introducing your new content, maybe you wanna do one of these like, you know, dip to whites, right? That could be a good one where it's like, hey, you know, lightness is coming, right? Or you're dipping to black using, hey, this is now over. Okay, so that might be a little bit of a different look that you want to create. So if I, now just go ahead and select this and I hit delete. Okay, I'm just gonna go and get rid of that for the sound as well. And then I could just do one kind of ad hoc right here. Okay, and then bam, there you have it. And then we can watch what dip to black does. And then maybe I even wanna make that a little bit longer. Okay, so it's gonna be just kind of a nice slow fade out. Okay, or maybe even longer than that. Or I can double click on it again, maybe make it go a little bit longer than that. Okay, so let's just do it like that way. One more time, let's keep an eye on it, and then slow fade to black. Okay, very cool. And of course you do the same thing with audio transitions if you like, if you want your audio to fade out equally. And we're gonna talk about audio in just a little bit. All right, so have fun, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna do a quick overview on how we can work with um, certain kind of effect controls to create movement. So um, if we look at our slideshow here, we can see, yeah, kind of nice. However, when it's coming in and out, it's a little bit boring, a little bit static. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move things around a little bit because maybe we're gonna have them kind of pan from left to right. Maybe we wanna have them zoom in a little bit. 
have a little bit more control over what people see. Okay, so in order to do that, we've got to go to a completely different panel again. All right, so we've been working with effects, we've been working with editing, okay, we've been working with graphics. Now we're going to move over to one called effect controls. You see that there? So here is effect controls here. And then there's a lot really going on here. It could be a little bit intimidating at first. So we're only going to explore just a handful of these for right now. But you can see what can we affect? We can affect the motion, right? Meaning the position and the scale. Where is it on the X and Y values? Where is it on the scale in terms of the size of it? Okay. But now what we're going to learn about is something called keyframes. Because if you think about what a keyframe is, it's basically just saying, hey, it's going to start off in one place. That's your keyframe number one. And it's going to end up in another place. And that's going to be keyframe number two. It's essentially going to kind of fill in the gaps between those two points from beginning to end. So we're going to see here that I'm going to have my ability to then make this kind of go from one thing to the next, right? So let me go ahead and just zoom this out back to 10 so I can see what I can do at first. All right, so I'm gonna bring this back over here to the far left and notice how my scrubber, my playhead scrubber matches what I see on my timeline down below to what I see up on top over here, okay? So that's great. So notice that I'm all the way on the far left because that is where my first kind of movement is going to happen if you will, right? So let's make, sure, let's make sure that, you know, we're there. We're pretty happy with that. We're good. And now we're going to now play around with the actual movement of things, all right? So the first thing I want to do before I set up anything is I'm going to click on this little stopwatch thing. So I'm telling Premiere that like something is going to happen in terms of like a keyframe and a time going from one thing to the other. So I'm going to click on that and you're going to see how that gets kind of lit up. And then you'll also notice how I have this little blue thing that lights up. It's saying that there's a keyframe that's there. And if you'll notice here, there's another little kind of like diamond there. That's also telling me that a keyframe has kind of like happened, if you will. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come all the way to the end of my clip. I'm just going to hit the down arrow, but then I'm going to come back one, right? It's kind of a nice little trick because if you go down if you go down all the way you're actually going all the way to the next clip you don't want that you want to go to the next clip minus one so therefore it's going to it's going to now affect the end of that first clip now i can do a few things here i could work with my positioning by going to my you know is it my 1296 or 968 i don't even really know what those things mean but i can go ahead and click and drag on those to then make it move okay what's it going to be like that okay maybe that's what's happening sure potentially right but you know i might want to actually do things a little more kind of i don't know sort of fluidly right it's like well you know what or more sort of like concretely or tangibly so i can just simply click and drag and if i hold down the shift key i know for sure i'm getting it straight and notice I'm now working with my X axis, all right? So we can see, okay, that's pretty cool. And now if I were to watch this, I know it's gonna go from left to right. See that? I've now created that movement. So let's take a look at what's actually happening. I have keyframe number one here, keyframe number two over here, right? So keyframe number one starts off at 1296 and just watch how the numbers grow, grow, grow as we go over here to keyframe number two. Okay, so pretty cool, right? So it's very easy to do that. Let's now continue on with that where I'm gonna go to my scale because I actually want my scale to be a little bit bigger because it's not taking up a whole lot of the screen at this point. So I'm gonna come back to the beginning. I'm gonna click on my little clock, all right? And I'm gonna make it start off a big. I actually want it to be big the whole time. Okay, so I'm gonna come back here, double click, and I'm gonna go ahead and make that nice and big. I might want to see what it's going to look like. All right. And now you can see I'm not losing any information. By the time it comes over to here, it doesn't completely die off. Okay. And if I wanted to, I can always come back to my positioning at this place and then I can even control it still. See that? So I'm coming back to position. So notice how position and scale are both highlighted in blue to tell me that, okay, this is where some keyframe sort of movement is going to happen. Okay, so let's now see here. We take a look, 
you can see my position is going to be at 1386 and my x okay and then it's going to start off 162 percent right so instead of 100 percent, it's going to be 162 but it's going to remain at 162. i don't necessarily want it to grow in this case so let's just take a look at it it's beautiful that's great i love that and then the transition happens okay great and now let's try to find something else we can work with, right? Slightly different modification on our movement. So I have now this little snake. So let's say, for example, I wanted to kind of zoom, starting off zooming in on the head of the snake, and then I'm going to kind of zoom out so we see the whole kind of broad perspective of it. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and hit the down arrow there. And I can see I'm still on the frame, right? I'm beginning from the frame itself, and then I'm going to now work with my scale okay so i'm going to go ahead and click on scale and in this case i'm actually going to start off by again clicking on the little stopwatch and i'm going to zoom in just by adjusting it here a little more manually okay so to kind of be a little bit let's just go ahead and want to rotate it come on premiere let's try to find maybe another spot you know, she can rotate it. It's a nice little thing you could do. Okay, good. And now let's go ahead and start off again. It can be a little bit tricky getting that corner. There we go. And if it is a little tricky, don't worry about it because guess what? We can always play around with these numbers here, right? So I can always click and drag to kind of move this over just like that, right? And I can always click and drag to move it this way as well. And notice how that's affecting both the X and the Y position just the same, okay? So I'm going to make both of these start off as a keyframe at this place, right? But where do I want it to ultimately end up? So I'm going to create this kind of pan and zoom effect where we're starting off looking at the snake and then we're going to pan out, right, at some point around here. Okay, and again, I'm gonna use my trick down and then back one. All right now let's take a look at what's that's that's what we need to do okay so now ultimately i'm thinking about like what do i want my viewers to see at this point so i'm going to go ahead and double click back on there all right and now let's go ahead and bring that in and i'm just going to just use this guy since i can't see the bounding boxes no big deal drag this in make that a little bit smaller again kind of bring it into the frame Okay, and as I'm doing this, I want you to notice all these two keyframes have now appeared for both the position and the scale. So I'm able to have this nice effect for panning and zooming, right, for both my X and Y and also my scale. So let's just go ahead and see what that's gonna look like now. So now transition and then, okay, cool, there's a snake. And then, whoa, how big is it? How big is it, right? Gotta stay tuned, whoa, that's a pretty big snake. Wow, holy cow, right? So we're now creating that sort of drama, that a little suspense through that kind of like slow pan and zoom. All right, so this is a nice little foundation for the concept and application and process around keyframes and working with your effect controls. This is really just the beginning, but once you kind of get that concept and process down, it'll help you immeasurably with just an untold amount of things that you can do within Premiere. All right, so go ahead and pause the video, practice all this stuff up, go to your effect controls. Um, you can do the same thing with images if you want to, you can do the same thing with videos if you want to, right? So mix it up, you can see the process is essentially the same. All right, so we'll see you in the next video. Up until this point, we have discussed all kinds of video editing tools. We've discussed our interface. We've discussed different effects and transitions and rippling and all kinds of good stuff there. But we have not talked about audio so much. We've seen our audio in action. We've unlinked our audio from our video, but we have not learned about how we can bring in our audio and make some edits to our audio. So let's just see how we can do that. Just like how we brought in our images and brought in our other video clips, it's gonna be just as simple to do that. So I have within my bins here, I have a folder here called audio and I have one audio file and I simply just wanna bring that in. 
Now, if I double click on that, I can listen to it if I want to. Okay, I can even do my ins and outs on that just the same way. If I only want a certain part, I can move that around, just do that over there. If I know a certain part that I want, I can very, very easily do that. Now, if you recall, if I'm also working with a video, but I only want the audio part, I can use this guy right here to say, hey, listen, only drag in just the audio. Okay, so remember all kinds of different options to be able to do that. But for right now, I'm gonna go ahead and clear out my ins and outs. So I'm gonna right click, clear in and out, and I'm gonna bring in this audio, and this audio is gonna go underneath here, my slideshow that we've been working on. So very simply, I'm just gonna go ahead and drag that in, and then notice it's gonna go right there in from A1 to A1. Now keep in mind also, if I had some other audio there, I could bring it into A2, and I can even, I can set the track to basically make it so it's gonna go to that particular track, right? To make it so it's gonna automatically go to A2 or A3, so it doesn't override any of those other tracks, okay? So now, you can see, here we are. I'm going to play that. All right, and I like it. All right, but now let's go ahead and see what we can do to maybe not have all this audio over here. I can very easily trim that and treat it just like I would if it were a video. Okay, and I just go ahead and trim that and then it's gonna end at the same time as all of my video does. Okay, now keep in mind if I decided to like extend this, right, and if I wanted to extend this out, it's still here. Even though I've trimmed it, I can still extend this out just as far, just the same way as I do with my video and my images, I can extend the audio out just the same, as long as there's information left, right? So if, if my video is like 45 minutes, but my audio is only 10 minutes, I can only go so far. So of course I can bring that audio back out if I want to and then repeat it, okay? So that's how we can work with our audio within our stills. So now let's just take a look at our Exploratorium uh, video here, our sequence that we've been working on. And you can see here, I've got quite a bit going on here. And do I need these? Maybe I do, maybe I don't. So I need to decide what I'm gonna be doing with some of these, right? So do I actually wanna remove some of this audio that I don't necessarily want? Okay, so if I listen to, you know, if I start off here. So I can actually hear like some voices back there and stuff. I don't really need those. Okay, so if you recall that when I select one of my clips here, notice that these are still linked up with each other. So if I right click on that, I'm gonna say unlink, and now I can then isolate this and then delete that. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this one too because I don't need that one also. That one's separate, left over from before. Okay, but now you can see when I play it, all right, so what I wanna do is I wanna actually take this same audio and put it there here on the audio three track, right? So that's gonna be below everything else. Now, are they going to interfere with everything else inside? Are they gonna compete with each other? That remains to be seen. So certain things I might want, certain things I don't want. So let's just see what we can do. Let's just go ahead and bring this in, bring this down. And now let's go ahead and play it. Cool, I like that. All right, that's a good way to start. Okay, now, so you can see that, yeah, it works pretty well, but there's certain elements that are gonna be necessary, but maybe I don't want them to be so dominating, right? So what I can do now, is just bring down the audio to a certain extent on parts of these, and I can maybe even raise the audio on some of these parts to a certain extent. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and hit the tilde key. So now I can have a nice bigger version of my audio that I can see and work with, all right? And if you recall, if I can do my Alt plus plus plus, notice I can actually make that a little bit bigger to work with there, so that's kind of nice. So you can see, all right, great. I can then now work with this little line right there that we have not talked about too much. And all that's gonna do is allow me to adjust the volume on that particular part right there if I want to, right? Or if I wanted to increase or decrease the volume here, I can do that same thing, all right? Now, 
You will notice, just so we understand about how you know the sound works, there's an L and an R in there. These are set in stereo, right? We'll talk about that in just a little bit, but these are actually set in stereo, so it's a left and a right. So sometimes you actually may have a mono where it's not going to be left and right, but it does give you a little bit of control sometimes in terms of you know what sound is coming in from what side or whatever it is to kind of have a little more control so they're isolated out from each other. Okay, so just so we have a good idea of kind of what we're looking at here. All right, so I'm just gonna hit the plus sign to actually make this spread out even more. All right, so let's go ahead and just kind of see what I can do with this. So let's just back up a little bit and then it's coming in. Okay, that's a little loud. So let's just go ahead and make this a little bit lower. So notice where my mouse is right there. I'm just gonna bring that down just a little bit. Okay, and now not so bad good and I have this one competing with it let's get rid of that don't need that and then notice how that jumped up a little bit right so I probably all of these right I'm going to bring this down a little bit okay and I also again want to decide hey listen do I even want these to begin with so I'm going to watch these right are they competing are they adding anything to my story right totally up to you okay so now I'm going to hit the tilde key and I'll watch it and listen to it So let's go ahead and do the same bit of editing here while I'm in a smaller version of this. Okay, great. All right, wonderful. So you can see how easy all that stuff is here. And then notice there's also some transitions here. So you can have the sound fade in and out like I showed you from our effects panel. Okay, now let's take a look at this. And I want you to notice that as I'm actually playing this on the right hand side, you're gonna see your little channels going up and down on there. So it's gonna give you some indication about kind of what's going on. So let's go ahead and play it. It's a little bit lower. And then you can see the next one's gonna come down a little bit more, which I actually prefer. So I want a little bit, something subtle, and you can see you can do this all day long. All right, now let me just show you one quick thing, and this might kind of take you to the next level of audio editing and understanding if this ever comes up. In our advanced class, we get a little bit more into audio, but let me just go ahead and right click on this, and I'm gonna go over here to my audio channels where you can see what's going on here. Sometimes you may or may not want to have you know both or one or whatever it is, and maybe if you're showing here as mono and you wanna play with it a little bit, you can very easily do that. Okay, so you can see how I can turn this on or off, right? So there's gonna be times when you're gonna to want to do that in case maybe you're getting like a hiss on one channel and you wanna actually say, hey, listen, I don't want that hiss. You can actually make it so it's gonna be like two lefts, right? We don't necessarily have anything like that, but if that does come up, this is a good way to address that. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just cancel that. And now one last time, let's go ahead and play it. Chef Bob. Excellent. Very good. So hopefully this helps. You can see how easy it is on a lot of levels to just bring in the audio, how easy it is to adjust the volume, how you can unlink and separate out your audio from your video. So lots of things you can do and hopefully pretty straightforward on how to do it. All right. So go ahead, pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Believe it or not, we have made it all the way to our output phase of our project. Thank you for sticking around. Hopefully you have made it this far and you've either worked on creating something from this bit of video and audio that we've got here for you, or maybe you're working on something on your own with your own content. So what we're gonna do is learn how we can just simply export this and render it as a video format that can be available to put on a website, publish it to YouTube or Vimeo or whatever you plan to do. All right, and you can see it's relatively straightforward. Premiere does all the heavy lifting. I'm gonna simplify this process for you just so you don't have really too much to think about, but 
for those of you who have very specialized needs, I'm going to show you the window you can go to as far as what choices you need to make, but we're going to keep it nice and simple for our purposes here when we do our exporting. So I have my exploratorium doc video and it is now ready to be rendered. So how do I do it? I'm going to go over to here to my file menu, click on file, and you're going to see mostly way down here is export. And all I'm going to do now is just choose media. So I do that dialog box is going to pop up and you're going to see here. All I need to do is tell it what format I want to export it as. And I also want to say, okay, what's going to be the name for it and the location. Now you can see, it's also giving me a summary of, you know, where it's going to live and all that good stuff here and even stuff around my sound. Right. And you also have a few other options here that's going to tell you some bits of information also that maybe you even want to change some things at this point. But again, we're going to keep it relatively simple. And then finally, at the end, you just simply click on export. So good standard to go by is this H264. When you click on that, you're going to see we get a lot, a lot of options here. OK, some older formats that are really not as useful like AVI and even MOB files. Um, and some of these things, and maybe that's going to come up for you, but this is typically kind of your industry standard at this point, and it is the same as an MP4. So when you do see H.264, you should really be thinking MP4, right? So it's a certain standard of MP4. Okay, so you're going to get a really good high resolution. So it's going to bring everything together in terms of your audio, your video, and you will have a quality output. All right, and then again, you're going to see this area here for output name. So when I click on that. That's going to take me to, okay, so where do I want to export this to? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and export this to my Premiere Pro intro folder here. It's going to be an MP4. That's great. All right, so now I've set what the location is going to be. I'm going to keep it at the same name as where it started. All right, and then again, if you want to explore some of these things here, you can see if there's any kind of effects that you're needing to be working with or anything like that, just know what these options are. If you need to change the codec or anything like that, just know that the options are here within this export window. Okay, so I'm just gonna keep it as is. And then finally, we're pretty much good to go as far as our purposes are concerned. And we're to come down here to export. So I click on export. And as this is waiting, you can see over here in the lower left, it tells me the size it's going to be 202 megabytes. So just good to know that before you actually, you know, commit to something. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while we're waiting for this and I'll come right back right when it's about to be done. Okay. And we're back with about five seconds left to go. And here we are. That wasn't so bad. But just know, of course, for a longer video, it's going to take more time. Okay, there it is. It tells me here, your video has been exported successfully. So let's go ahead and get to my folder so I can see it here. There it is, Exploratorium doc. And I can go ahead and play that. It's going to open up to my default MP4 player. Two minutes, 35 seconds. And let's see it. That looks very cool. I'm very excited. High quality coming together. And I can very easily upload that to my favorite streaming service, put it onto my website, send this to Exploratorium, do whatever I'm going to do to it. Okay, so pretty awesome. So congratulations. Well done. And give that a shot. All right. So stay tuned for our future classes on Premiere. Hopefully this is a good foundation for you. And uh, congrats once again. Have fun and uh, we'll see you next time. Let's now continue our conversation on customizing our window. So let's go ahead and open up to any file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and open up to a video here and I'm gonna go ahead and double click on this here. Now, I want you to notice that Within both the source panel and also the program panel, you're going to see this little wrench right here and also right there. Okay, now that wrench is going to allow us to do some customization to bring up certain elements that we may want to see on the screen. Okay, so what are those things? You click on that and there's a ton of options that are going to come up here for you. Many of these things you probably will never use. Some of them you will realize that, oh my God, how did I live without these? 
Okay, so as an example, let's just go ahead and first of all, bring up, for example, our ruler. If I click on that, you can see, oh, that's really nice, right? So when is this gonna be important? Potentially, you're bringing this into a website and you need to know exactly how big the video is, right? You need to know exactly how this is going to fit in to a page of sorts, right? So you need to know, okay, what is going to be the width and height of this in pixels, okay? That's great, very nice. So let's go ahead and add on another thing. Let's bring up the guides. So I click on that and nothing really happens. But if any of you have ever worked in other Adobe programs like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, you'll note that you can actually create guides by simply using the ruler, by clicking and dragging, and then just saying, hey, listen, this is where a certain element is going to go, right? So let's just say, for example, I wanna bring in some type, I wanna have like a lower thirds type of thing. I can say, okay, great, this is where my content is gonna go. So I've created a guide now to be able to actually show that, and then I can use this to say, listen, this is where my text is going to go. Very good, okay? So I can go ahead and click on that and say, listen, I don't wanna show the guides anymore, and it goes away. Click on that and I can say, listen, I don't wanna show the ruler anymore, okay? Let's go ahead and continue on with this. I'm gonna click on my little wrench, and now what I'm gonna do this time, I'm gonna click on Safe Margins. Click on that, and you're gonna see what comes up here. Now, this is gonna tell us now what may not be shown right on a screen. So if you're gonna have important information here, you wanna be within these safe margins, right? So they're pretty much like telling you kind of where these things might get cut off. So you wanna be aware of that. So if you do have kind of a, a history of this and you wanna, wait, why does this keep getting cut off? What's happening here, right? These are gonna be really helpful for you. Let me go ahead and turn that off. Okay, let's go ahead and add on some other elements to our program panel. So if I click on my wrench again, you'll notice there is this option for time ruler numbers, right? So you can see here's your ruler, but that's not really giving me a lot of information. I might wanna see that a little more clear in terms of where I am here. So you can see if someone tells me, let's move it right to you know 16 seconds, I can see, bam, there it is. Of course, I have my timestamp right here, but this gives me kind of reinforcement of what's what and where things are, right? If I did not have that before, so I can click on my wrench to add that on there, all right? And then the last thing I wanna talk about is your playback resolution. You can see here, this is, it's saying it's coming back in half resolution. You can see, I can also see that here as well. So you can see the difference there. Now, what does that actually mean? Essentially, it is not showing my video in the full original resolution as it's going to when I finally render it, why might it not actually show it in full? It's to basically save on my computer's processing power, right? So it's gonna say, hey, listen, you know, we know you got potential, but for right now it's not necessary, but I could turn that to full. And you can see I can have that, also change that here as well and change that, okay, just the same. Playback resolution, I can change that to one of these options here, okay? And again, you have all the same options here within your source panel as well. All right, so go ahead and just play around with those in a little bit. We're gonna come and see how we can actually customize some of these buttons as well in the program panel as well as our source panel. Now, Premiere gives us some pretty good options in terms of keyboard shortcuts. It gives us some really good options in terms of all these little buttons here to be able to do any number of things here. All right, but now this list is by no means exhaustive. There are a lot of other icons and features and tasks hidden in this little plus sign and also this little plus sign. So if you are not a keyboard shortcut person or if you wanna just know what else is available, you might wanna think about opening up to this little plus sign here to say, let's just see what other options we can add. So we are now currently inside of our button editor, okay? So you can see, some of the buttons are gonna look familiar to you, right? You can see there's your in point, your out point, and some other things is clear, right? And also clear out, right? Just like that. Now, you'll notice that as you move your mouse over, it's also telling you the keyboard shortcut, right? We've already know this one, the in and the out, but what about clearing the in? Oh, cool, look at that. Control, Shift, I, and of course you're on a Mac, it's gonna be Command, Shift, I. But you can see that if you wanted to add some of these things on here, you absolutely could, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and bring in this one right here. And you'll notice that I'm just gonna move this right there. And I'm just gonna drag this 
just like that. All right, so really nice. You can see I'm starting to start customizing my button panels here. Now, you'll notice that there's some other ones that you know may have value to you, right? We've already got overwrite, we've already got our insert. Okay, there's our safe margin, right? What we talked about in our last video. If you wanna have that there all the time, you can do that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. And now let's go over to here to our program panel and do the same thing. I'm gonna click on the plus sign. And you're gonna see how maybe we have a few different options here because this is our program panel, a little bit different, right? Because again, this is gonna be for rendering it. We may have different options that we can't necessarily do within our source panel. Okay, so you might see some options for our VR. You're gonna see some different effects things here. You're gonna see there show our rulers and a few other things on here. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do some of the things that we already talked about. Let's go ahead and just drag this. I like to show my rulers all the time. I also like to have my guides up there all the time. Cool, and I don't wanna have to go and click on the little wrench every single time. It makes it nice and easy to be able to do this. So you might wanna explore these. There's my safe margin, okay? You can go ahead and export frames, okay? If you're working with multi-camera. So, so many different options you can explore. And as you get deeper and deeper into the program, you're gonna to wanna to come back here and see what options are available to you to be able to make it a lot easier for you to access these and also implement them, okay? So you'll also notice that there are keyboard shortcuts associated with these, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and click OK, and you'll notice that when I click on the wrench, it doesn't necessarily tell me the keyboard shortcuts, but when I move my mouse over, this new icon that I just added on as a button, you can see, oh, there is just Control R, so that's really nice, and I just learned a whole new thing. What's this one? Oh, it's gonna be control and the semicolon. Oh, very nice. And it comes right back to the guy that I created earlier. Pretty cool. All right, so we get a little added bonus there, right? It tells us that. And now that we're maybe accustomed to the keyboard shortcut, we can then go ahead and remove it. So let's just go ahead and click on the plus sign. And then I can go ahead and just drag this out. I don't need it anymore, okay? And if you wanna reset it back to where it was, you can simply just click on reset layout and it goes back to where it was when we first started, okay? So this is really all about you taking control over the program, control over your documents, control over your process, okay? So I just learned one last thing here is I wanna get rid of that guide, so I'm just gonna do control semicolon, that goes away. Control R for ruler, and that goes away. Coming back full circle, all right? So get used to that, get your flow down. I know we're already advanced at this stage and you're probably chomping at the bit for more stuff. And we'll get to that right away. See you in the next video. In this video, we're gonna talk about transitions and do a little bit of basic review, but then go a little bit more complex with some of our options within transitions. So we have a sequence here that I've created called Iceland, and you're gonna see here how we've got one, two, three, four clips, and I wanna be able to transition them going from one beautiful waterfall into this geothermal activity. is going to these beautiful horses and then it's gonna to go to something else. Okay, so I wanna be able to make a nice little transition that's gonna go into all of these. Now, how do I get to my transitions? You're gonna find all your transitions in the effects panel. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on effects and you can see there it is right there. Now, if you unfurl to this little section here where it says video transitions, you're gonna find all of your video transitions right there. Now, you can always do a search anytime. This is the same thing for any of these panels that have multiple options, and you can go ahead and just do a search for it. So if I knew that I was gonna find, let's just say dip, you can see, bam, there it is, dip, right? I'm gonna go ahead and just say cross, and you can see, bam, there's my cross dissolve. Now, you will notice that this transition right, has a little blue box around it where the rest of them do not. That means that is the default transition. And why is that important? It means that I can do a keyboard shortcut to apply that. Okay, so for example, I'm gonna go ahead and just highlight both of these. And what's my default keyboard shortcut? It's gonna be Control D. And you can see, bam, as I do that, this now is gonna pop up. I'm gonna just watch it transition into it very nicely. Okay, and that's gonna be my cross dissolve. Now, if I wanted something else to be my default, let me go ahead and open this up. It's very easy to do that. I'm go ahead and open up to my transitions. 
Okay, and then here we are. And let's say, for example, I want it to be dip to white. So if I right click on that, I pretty much just get one option. And now that is going to be my default. You can see there it is dip to white. And then all I need to do now is just simply either click and drag that on there. Or what do we just learn about? We learned about the keyboard shortcut of control or command D. And now that is going to be my transition. Okay, so depending on what kind of effect you're trying to get. Now I want to show you kind of preemptively um, an error that you may see with transitions. Okay, so let me just go ahead. I'm just going to highlight both of these right here. I'm going to do Control or Command D, and I'm going to get an error message: insufficient media. This transition will contain repeated frames. So it seems a little scary, and it seems like it's not going to work. But let me just show you. If I click OK, you'll notice here, right? This looks a little bit different, right? compared to this one, right? You see how this one is solid. This one has a little kind of like zebra stripes going on there. Okay, they're telling you essentially that because you're sort of at the end of this media clip, there's not a whole lot for it to, to sort of go off of when it's transitioning from one clip to the other. So it really just depends on kind of how meticulous you wanna be, but typically the naked eye won't be able to tell that it's going to repeat some of the frames. So if you really take a look at it, you'll see that it's going to kind of just do a little bit of a still shot of what we have here, right? You can see it's gonna kind of just add on some frames to be able to kind of make up the difference. You really can't tell the difference there at all, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of that just by simply selecting it and then hitting delete. All right, now the way to get rid of that is to simply make it so you've got a little bit of wiggle room to play around with. Now, how do I know that this is the end of the clip? I want you to notice here that there is this little triangle there, right? It's telling me that this is pretty much the whole clip right there. Now, if I hold down the control key and you can see now, I do not have a triangle there on the left-hand side. I'm gonna do the same thing, hold down the control key and click and drag that way, right? You can see it gets rid of it on that side okay so depending on what you want to do right so let's just go ahead now i'm going to go ahead and get rid of that side you can see that's great and now good now i have no issues on this side right you can see how there's no triangle to have it indicate to me that that there's no footage for it to work with okay so let's go ahead and take care of this one as well okay and bam i should not have any issues at all. So I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these and just do control or command D and see that no issues at all. Okay. So in case you ever see that, don't freak out. Not a big deal. Even if it does come up and even if you don't want to fix it, it's just basically telling you that you're at the end of that clip. All right. Let's now go next level here. Let's go ahead and just see what's going on with these individual transitions. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just watch this. You can see as I kind of like go right from here to here, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and click directly on the transition itself. And you'll notice now I have this option under my effect controls to basically see kind of my A and B comparison and also to be able to control my transition in terms of where it's gonna begin and end and also my duration and also my alignment. All right, so we're gonna start getting into a little bit more advanced stuff here. So at the, at the most basic level, you might wanna just increase the length, right, of it, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just gonna type out 300, okay? And that's now going to be three seconds, okay? You can see that made it a little bit. Let's go ahead and just type out 400. That's gonna be a little bit longer, okay? So let's go ahead and watch it. A nice slow fade out, like, whoa, wow. Okay, and we just got, you know, dusted out there. Like, what are you trying to communicate? Okay, pretty cool. So you can do that. All right, now the alignment. Okay, what are we talking about in terms of alignment? The best way to understand it is to look at this part of the panel right here. This is my geothermal clip. This is my horses clip. Notice how this guy is right in the middle of them. Okay, that is my alignment to show where is the transition going to begin and end. Right now, it's perfectly in the center of the two. But if I click here, I'm gonna say start at the cut, and you can see what it does here. Okay, right at the cut, that's when it starts. So it's like, okay, so do I even want it to do that? It's like, okay, see that? 
See that? So it's a little bit more clouding over the beginning of the horses. Okay, let's go ahead and try it a different way. Let's go ahead and say end at cut. And then notice what that does. That goes onto the other side of it. Go ahead and play that. Okay, you see that? That if you were to play this, I'm not sure if you could hear the audio, the audio actually comes in a little bit later, right? Than it did the first time, right? So you can see it might appear to be the same to the naked eye, but it is actually delaying which part comes out before or after to transition itself. Now, of course, all this can be done manually as well. So you can see how you can even move this if you like to make it kind of perfect. Just like, okay, when's that gonna come? Where's it, when's the transition gonna come? And then when's it gonna fade in and fade out? Okay, so let's go ahead and try that with another one. So you can see it can be very similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and just select this transition, hit delete, and I'm gonna do a different one. Okay, let's just go ahead and do this film dissolve. Let's go ahead and drag that. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and click on it. And I'm gonna make that a little longer. I'm gonna type out 300. You can see that gets a little bit bigger. And you can see now as I, that's a very different one. Very nice, okay, nice fade in, fade out. All right, so you have really a lot of control over these, all right? So practice all that. Now let's go ahead and go to maybe a different type of transition so we can see potentially how we might be able to actually get more options potentially depending on what the transition that you're gonna be doing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and maybe get rid of this one. And I'm gonna go over here to my iris. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this to iris box. Okay, and I'm gonna make this maybe a little bit longer. I'm gonna type out 400. Okay, and I'm gonna bring this so it's a little bit bigger so you can see. And I want you to notice that underneath all these options here, I have now the ability to customize this because this particular type of transition allows me to have different types of features and properties around it, like a border width, a color, I can make it go in reverse, right? All kinds of different things you can do. But let's now go back to the actual transition so we can see what that does. Okay, now I want to be able to customize that. So I'm going to go back over here. I'm just going to scroll down this time. I'm going to say my border width. And you can see that border starting to come in, just dragging over that. It's going to get a little bit thicker. Border color. Let's just make it red so we can really see it. And you can see, right? Kind of interesting, right? So maybe you want to do things a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and try that. And there's my transition. Like it says cap. Okay, so you know you can see you can get a little creative with these, right? It's a transition, but it's like it's kind of giving birth to the next frame, you know. So it really looks like, you know, it's kind of coming out of nowhere. It's not like a fade in or fade out. So it's a little different. And we've also framed it, right, to really kind of get the eyes focused on it. So you want to kind of pay attention to these things because some of them can be a little bit hidden down below. All right, so let's go ahead and try reverse this time. Let's see what that does. Okay, so now it's just swallowing up the image and it's going in the other direction. Okay, so a lot of creative options here. Okay, so play around with it, right? Just know that there's a lot more than meets the eye. Know these keyboard shortcuts, right? Play around with some of these other video transitions. Come and play with the duration, play with the alignment. Okay, and then some of them may even have other options for you to play around with in terms of border sizes and things like that. Okay, so pause the video, practice, and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're gonna talk about something called subclips. Now, subclips are gonna be useful when you want to use a clip over and over and over again and have quick and easy access to it. So typically you're gonna start off by having an in and out point for your clip and you're going to want to save it as a subclip and then reuse it over and over again.
Okay, so what we're gonna do is I'm going to, let me just go ahead and get my stuff all set up here. And you'll notice here I have a subclip folder where I'm going to save part of what's in this video as a subclip and put it into this bin. So watch what happens now. I'm gonna go ahead and play this, hit the space bar. And I know I wanna go from here to about here. Okay, love that. I wanna use that over and over again. So let's come back to the beginning. I'm gonna hit I for in and then wait for it to be about maybe four or five seconds or so. That's great. Now I wanna make this a subclip so I can use it over and over and over again in a variety of different places. Okay, so how do I make it into a subclip? If we go over to here to clip, you'll notice that there's this option for make a subclip and there's also this control or command U and then bam, this is gonna pop up saying, hey, let's make this a subclip. Okay, so I'm gonna say flying elf. Okay, that's great. Now we're gonna talk about what this is in just a second, right? Restrict trims to subclip boundaries. Okay, I'm gonna keep that checked for right now. That's gonna be your default. I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. And you can see here is this flying elf that comes in. Okay, bam, there that is, right? And it doesn't affect the original. It just basically extracted out one little bit of it right there so I can use it anytime. So I'm gonna go ahead and come into here and then I'll be able to then open this up. Okay, and you're gonna see when I play it, it's just gonna be that four second clip, right? So now it's independent of the original, okay? Which is pretty neat. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and bring this into the sequence, right? And you can see, bam, there that is, okay? Pretty neat, okay? And I can use this anywhere else, right? If I had another one that was happening, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and go to my sequences. I have one called Iceland. Let's go ahead and open that up. Notice I have two tabs. I'm gonna bring this in to here. You can see, very cool. I can use that over and over and over again in a variety of different sequences as much as I want, right? So you can see it's gonna make it much more efficient for you. So a lot of people will do that where they might have you know, different types of content they wanna be able to use repeatedly or, or maybe you're gonna use it to stay organized with different content as you're viewing it. You're saying, let's make that a subclip. And it's a really great way to also label your content. Let's say you're doing an interview and then you might want to just say, hey, listen, here's an in and out point of that one thing that they talked about, you know, when, you know, where they were from, their experience in the war, the time that they were, you know, playing in front of 50,000 people at Yankee Stadium. Cool. That's the part I want to take out. And then it suddenly becomes its own identity. OK, so there's a lot of different reasons to do it. OK, now let's go ahead and do that one more time. And this time I'm going to do it for another Iceland clip. Okay, so let's go over here to our waterfall here. Okay, another one. All right, and let's go ahead and see where do I want to watch this. Okay, let's go ahead and get out of this. Okay, great. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make this my endpoint. And that's gonna be my out point. That's great. Now I'm gonna do control U this time or command U on the Mac. And this time I am not going to have this checked and we're gonna see what the difference is gonna be here. Okay, so I'm gonna call this Voda Foss. Okay, and I'm going to uncheck restrict trims to subclip boundaries. And we're gonna see what the difference is between those two. So I'm gonna go ahead and Click OK, and I'm going to have a new, there she is right there. There's my subclip. OK, so let's go ahead and just drag that into my subclip. All right, I'm just going to drag this over to here. And I'm just going to move this so we can kind of see what our distinction is between those two subclips. All right, let me go ahead and just zoom in a little bit. I want you to notice that this particular one has those little triangles that we talked about in the last video. This one does not. What do we know about that? It basically means that this is the beginning and end of this, right? So I can't really go beyond what I have clipped out. With this one, it does give me the option to then go beyond this and to even slip and slide and do all those things to 
go further and make this longer with this one can't do it can't do it this way or that way because i've restricted the boundaries around that okay so it's an important thing to know about because you won't really be able to do anything further but maybe that's what you want maybe you've committed to that okay that that's all you want you don't want anybody mistakenly going beyond those boundaries so that's why you've clicked on that box but with this one it does give you the option to do that if you do feel comfortable doing that on your own okay so just kind of keep that in mind okay now the last thing i want to show you here with our sub clips i'm going to change this from going from icon changing it from thumbnails back to our list i just want you to see how your sub clips look a little bit different right you'll notice here how the icon is different than regular clips of course this is the sequence right there okay and that's relating to this sequence that we have here but I want you to notice if we go back up to these, right? So it's gonna look a little bit different than what we have here. So it's basically telling us that this is a subclip. So that's how you'll know. And you can go ahead and add on your metadata display and you'll be able to see that down below within our Premiere Pro project metadata, you'll be able to see, you could get some information about your subclip start and end very easily. And of course, you'll have to make that nice and big and you'll be able to see that this in fact has information on the subclip subclip where the other ones do not because they are in fact not subclips okay so lots of ways to understand kind of what's going on here using our little icons there and of course also looking at the subclip beginning and end all right so you'll definitely find a lot of utility for subclips so use it practice it and we'll see you in the next video in this next video, we're going to switch up gears a little bit and we're going to talk about speed of your videos. In our intro to Premiere, we talked about how you can actually speed up an entire clip or you can even slow it down. So a little review on that. If you right click, you'll notice here is the option to go to your speed duration and you'll notice here I can make it maybe two times faster by saying, okay, this is going to be 200 speed instead of 100 speed and notice the duration changes i can go in reverse if you have some sound you can go ahead and maintain the audio pitch so things don't sound too crazy okay and then also you want to make sure that um, everything else before and be in and after it everything gets rippled right so you have all that stuff if you want to do this so i'm going to go ahead and click ok and you'll notice this is going to be twice the speed running super fast but what if you want to have variable speed Okay, what if you wanna have just for certain parts of it, it's just gonna go super, super fast and then it's gonna go super, super slow, okay? That's what's called time remapping, all right? So my timeline right now, I've set it up to be having my video to be a little bit taller, okay? So you can see I can go ahead and make that smaller or I can make that taller just like that, okay? You can also work with these guys here. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to have this little effects option shown here because I wanna to, want to be able to work with the different levels of certain types of effects that I can now work with keyframes to be able to apply those effects at certain part and then apply them in other parts, but they're gonna vary all throughout. This is gonna be our first introduction to what keyframes are. So this is gonna be very important that we understand the concept of keyframes because the concept is the same all throughout, but the utility and the application is gonna be slightly different depending on where you are within the program. Okay, so let's just see what our options are here first of all. So I'm gonna go ahead and go right to my clip you'll notice there is this FX option right there. If I right click on that, I want you to notice I have motion, right? Which all kinds of different options right there, which is pretty neat. We're gonna get into our different effects and effects controls in a little bit. And we'll be able to change a lot of these things. Okay, you'll also notice here is opacity. And by default, believe it or not, we are actually in opacity, right? So if I wanted to actually make some changes to this in terms of how see-through it is, I'm in opacity already as it is, right? So you can see here, if I were to drag this little line down, just like that, notice how this gets a little more dim, but if there was something behind it, I'd be able to actually see it. So by default, you are going to be in opacity, right? Without having to really do anything at all, you should see that selected. What we're gonna do now is something called time remapping. 
and speed. Okay, so how is this going to work? I want you to notice that there's this line right here. Okay, and this is the speed that the video was taken in. Okay, so nothing's really changed, right? And if I were to go ahead and make this come up like this, right, you notice how everything now changes, right? Everything's going really, really fast. So it's very similar to what I did the first time, right? When I actually right clicked on it. So I don't necessarily need to do this, but it is another way to accomplish that same goal. All right, but what if I wanna do something a little bit different? Let's say I wanna have her kind of starting off running really, really slow, and then have her go really, really fast, and then go slow again, all right? Just for a little bit of kind of fun, a little creativity, and also maybe it's communicating something. So how do we create keyframes on these lines? All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply hold down the control key on my keyboard. If you're on a Mac, it's gonna be the command key. And I want you to notice I'm gonna get this little plus sign. And I simply click and then I get this little guy right here. I'm gonna go ahead and do this one right over here about, and I have another one. And I have another one here, and then I'll just do one more here. Okay, I want you to think about a keyframe as sort of the beginning and end point of some type of change, right? So it's going to start off one speed here and then it's going to vary, right? On when it gets to here and then I have individual control in this part right here and then it's gonna change right after this keyframe is here. Think about it as sort of like, like, like an elbow or a joint, right? Where it's like you can kind of bend at one point and then something else starts on the other side, right? So each of these are like individual joints. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start off by dragging this part here lower. So only from this part here, from like whatever it is, five seconds, right, is going to be slower, where the rest of these are gonna remain the same. Now, as I do it, it's gonna look a little bit odd because the actual clip itself is gonna change. Why is it gonna change? because the length, the duration of the clip will also change, right? Maybe it'll get longer, maybe it'll get shorter. So I'm gonna go ahead and just move my mouse over this and click and drag down and you'll notice what's happening there, okay? Go ahead and do that even more. Let's go real slow, okay? Because it's gonna be slow, it's then going to make the clip a little bit longer. So let's just go ahead now and watch. That's gonna be slow, slow motion. And then right when it reaches that second keyframe, it's gonna to go to normal speed. Okay, so let's go ahead. I'm gonna bring this back up a little bit. So we have to wait so much. So it's gonna go, you notice how the little percentage is coming up there. So we're just gonna go a little bit slower for this segment. And then suddenly she's gonna be going real fast for this part. So let's watch this. Let's have to wait so long. Let's go over to here. Running pretty slow, and then all of a sudden. And let's have her go slow once more. A little bit more on this side. And we finish off with the regular speed. Okay, so pretty neat feature, right? Because you've probably seen that done, you know, in a variety of different formats and maybe different scenes you've seen. How do they do that? So you do have that little bit of control, you know, where it's like you might see that where, you know, a car is coming in or lots of things are coming in and you want to be able to speed everything up. And then suddenly when the object that you want to see actually just comes in, you want to slow it down. So it's like, okay, great. So all in one clip, you can have that variable speed, okay? And it all starts with right-clicking on here and going over here to time remapping and then changing the speed. And then, very important, we're gonna create these individual keyframes to be able to have them all independent of each other to be able to do independent speed elements all throughout one clip, all right? So you wanna practice that and you can certainly do that for some of these other ones here as well, but we're gonna try and work with other effects, right, in a slightly different way when we go over to here to our effects panel and we can see different things that we can do that are similar to this, right, to some of these options that we have here. They're gonna give us a little bit more control, but this time remapping 
really gives you probably the most amount of control. And of course, we do have time remapping within the effects as well. Okay, so we'll be able to see all that in just a little bit. But in the meantime, please go ahead and practice this up. Try to do it on these clips if you like to, or try it out on your own. Okay, and we'll see you in the next video. In this lesson, we are going to cover some of the basics of color and lighting, but more specifically, we're gonna work with effects. So we're gonna learn how we can use the effects panel to do some very basic and very simple, but very sophisticated changes to our video. So if you look at my video here, you're gonna notice how it is what it is, but I think it could be improved. I can have a little more contrast, right? I can maybe brighten things up a little bit, mess with the white point and the black point to have a little more texture. Okay, so this is gonna be some really great post-production tools. Now, what this is also gonna allow us to do is get introduced to the effects panel because there are a ton of options within the effects panel. So let's go ahead and click on effects. And you're gonna see on the right hand side, I'm gonna have my effects panel here. And let's go ahead and make that so it's kind of grows a little bit so I can see more of it. Now there's a lot of stuff built into here. We're, we'll explore a lot of these things. We've already gone into our video transitions. You'll also notice that there's a bunch of different presets that you might want to explore, but I think we'll take a look at a handful of these at some point as well. But it's definitely worth checking out some of these things here. But what we're gonna do at this point is do a quick search for contrast. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just click on the box there and just type out contrast and spell it correctly. Now you're gonna see I have a lot of different options around contrast that now appear. So there's so many options that searching like this really can save you a lot of time and it comes up relatively quickly if you know how to spell, unlike me. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is very simply, I'm just gonna bring in this auto contrast. And where am I gonna bring it in? I can certainly bring it in to my timeline here, but you'll also notice how I have this effect control panel right here. And this is where a lot of your stuff is gonna come in. And some things may even look familiar to you, right? Like time remapping, you might see some things around your opacity in our last lesson on Premiere Pro intro. We did some stuff on movement as well. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is simply bring in our brightness and contrast. I'm gonna bring it into here. So you can see now I have a new set of parameters for me to play around with for this video. Okay, and it's now embedded onto this timeline. Even though we don't see it, it's actually here. But you will see very faintly this little FX thing there, and it tells me that there's something going on there. All right, so nothing's really happening, but let me go ahead and just play around with the contrast. So I'm gonna move my mouse over this right here. You can see contrast and you can see, oh, very nice. I'm getting a nice little bit of richness on my image here. Let's go ahead and bring down my brightness a little bit more, maybe bring it up a little bit, right? So you can see, very nice. That gives me a lot of control around that. Okay, so I can very easily reset those by coming over here, just the same, right? Let's go ahead and bring up my contrast again. And let's see what's hiding inside of here. And you'll notice that there's a ton of options, potentially, living inside of brightness and contrast for me to have a, maybe a little bit more control and maybe even a different way to interface with it, okay? And as I did that, you'll see that a lot of the other options that we're hiding also appear as you expand it out, okay? So each of these is gonna have their own set of parameters and options that we're gonna explore as we go through, okay? So let's go ahead now and bring up our auto contrast. I'm gonna go ahead and bring that in here and you can see what that does. And you can see I have my black clip and my white clip. So let's go ahead and bring that up a little bit. You can see, ooh, it brings a little bit of texture. Let's bring that down a little bit. Maybe you wanna see the clouds a little bit more. A tiny bit like that. And you kinda of just kinda of spice the taste as you come together. All right, so I can go ahead and bring this up here a little bit. Bring that, it's a little too much contrast. Okay, fantastic. Now, one thing to note about the effects panel, right, the effect control panel, is that there is kind of an order of operations here, right? So depending on which one is on top, you might get a different effect. If I drag this above here, notice how that actually changed things a little bit. 
Let's bring this down a little bit and that changed things a little bit as well. All right, what we're gonna do in the next exercise is we're gonna learn how we can do black and white and that's gonna be also a difference on like how do you wanna actually show it in terms of the stacking order and that's gonna demonstrate a different look depending on what order things you're gonna be in. Okay, so let's just go ahead and just take a look at it. And you can see how the grass is a little bit more rich. Okay, not too bad. And maybe I'll go a little bit further with my black. And very nice, right? So it really brings out those greens. Okay, so you can really experiment. And by just looking at some other elements inside of here, let's just type out depending on what, what your levels are here. You can see there is my auto levels, right? You can see, bam, I can bring that in. And then if you're comfortable with this, you can say, all right, you know what? Let's actually go a little bit deeper with each individual level of the lighting inside of the image. You can see that there's a lot of different things here that you can play around with, right? That's gonna give you a lot more creative control around this, okay? So this is definitely, definitely a spice to taste kind of thing, you know, and there's really no harm in doing this, but you can see, right, how you can actually take a look at that. So you get a very, very different look there. Maybe I'll bring that down a little bit, okay? So, you know, you really want to experiment with these, okay? Now, I'm actually gonna remove this and very simply, by simply clicking on levels there, I'm just gonna hit the delete key and that goes away, but the other ones remain. All right, so really I wanna encourage you just to go experiment with what's inside of all these. You see there's really gonna be a ton of them to play around with. And we're gonna be doing a handful of these in this, in this um, video series, but whatever we don't do, feel free to experiment on your own. Okay, so that's about just working with some basic lighting, contrast, brightness, and a little bit of levels. and a little bit, we're gonna look how we can make this into a black and white image. And I'm gonna show you how we can do some pretty neat different keyframing to achieve a pretty nice creative effect. Okay, we'll see you in the next video. Well, thank you for joining us. I've had a great time teaching you all the wonders that is Premiere Pro. And I hope you are feeling empowered, excited, and creative around what you can do with this amazing program. And even though we covered a lot in this class, there is a great deal more to learn. Again, thank you for joining me here and happy creating. Hello and welcome to this training on Adobe Premiere Pro. And congrats on making the decision to learn and master this incredible program. Premiere Pro gives you the distinct ability to harness your creative energies in the form of video editing like no other. And once you learn even the basics, you'll have a skill set that can be used in almost any industry and field. In this class, we really get into some fun stuff. We will cover color correction, blur effects, masking, a deep dive into several different key framing techniques. You will also learn to apply and master adjustment layers, clipping masks, 3D effects for video, and also use blending modes on your video layers. We also spend a good deal of time covering a ton of special text effects including basic text and topography techniques and styles, making text disappear in a really cool way, using special caption overlays, applying and animating shapes to your video, and finally, we learn how to apply and use green screen to your videos. Now, this course is designed to be interactive and hands-on, so occasionally you'll hear me say things like, pause the video and practice on your own. This will ensure you get the most out of the course and learn the program in a more experiential, hands-on manner. I'm very much looking forward to teaching you even more cool stuff that Premiere Pro has to offer, so get excited and get ready to learn. This lesson is going to be all about masks and keyframes. And in particular, we're going to be working with the black and white effect, where I want to actually make it so part of my image is black and white, and part of it is in color, also known as a mask. I want you to think about mask as like a blindfold. You can't see anything at all, and what you see here is essentially blindfold mode, right? There is actually no effect happening, but when we have a mask, we poke a hole through it to be able to see parts of it in that different effect, right? So that hole is gonna allow us to see through this color in black and white only in different components and different parts of the image that we show. That'll make sense in just a little bit. 
where the key framing aspect of it is going to be where it's going to start off as one size, meaning the mask, and then it's going to get bigger, right? As we keyframe throughout. And earlier we talked about keyframing and we defined it as one thing changing to another, right? And then we have another keyframe that goes into another. And in this case, it's going to be one size changing into another size. All right. So let's go ahead now and we're going to apply the black and white effect. You can see here it is. I'm just going to go ahead and just drag that right onto my clip. And you're going to see that I now have a new black and white effect right there. And not a whole lot happens. But what we do have is this little circle here in this little square. This is going to be our masks. Okay, so notice how it says create ellipse mask. And notice what happens as soon as I click on that. You'll notice how my black and white kind of goes away for a certain part of it, right? And you can notice here, I can move this around. You'll notice how only that part is in black and white. So that's actually kind of cool. So if I were to just now show this, you'll be able to see, oh, that's kind of interesting, right? Maybe that's what you want to do. Maybe, maybe not. Okay. But you can see what it's actually doing. Let's come down here to the bottom, right? Of this list that now just appeared and I'm going to choose inverted. You'll notice, oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, let's look at the difference there. Inverted, right? So maybe go ahead and play. See that? Maybe you're just trying to spotlight that thing just in color there. Okay. So really lots of options that you can do here. All right. Now this particular ellipse, this can be resized, right? In a number of different ways, right? You can go ahead and just grab from here, grab from here. You can move it around if you want to, as I just showed you, this little guy's going to play around with the feathering of it. So it's not such a hard circle. Okay. So you can see it's a little bit fuzzier, right? Let's go ahead and do it again. Okay, so you can see you can play around with all that stuff there. Okay, now what our goal here for this project is to make it so it's going to start off in black and white. And then as we progress through the clip, it's now going to come in this kind of like Technicolor dream a la Wizard of Oz. All right, and we're going to do that by using keyframes. And remember what a keyframe is, it's going to start at one property and it's going to finish at another property. All right. So let's just take a look at what we have here with our new mask options. The first thing I want you to notice is these little guys right here, these little stopwatches. Okay. These are very important. This essentially is saying, Hey, I want to do a keyframe. We're basically starting off our beginning of the keyframe for one of these particular elements to say, Hey, start off doing it this way and then end up doing it another way. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off way at the beginning. Notice here is my scrubber. And as I go left and right up on top here, it's also going to match it down below because at the beginning of my clip, I want to have it start off in a certain way. Okay. So my goal here is to make the color almost non-existent in the beginning. And then it's going to grow, 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 right? As the timeline progresses. Okay. So if you'll notice here, I have this mask expansion right here. All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring this down smaller, 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 right? It's almost like to nothing. Okay. Now I need to start things off at this place for my keyframe to progress. So watch what happens now when I click on my little stopwatch, I now get this little guy right there. That's telling me that a keyframe has now begun. You'll also notice this little area right there. See, I can have this little keyframe right there. So you can see that's telling me that this is now in keyframe mode. Like the rest of these are not going to be affected at all, right? Nothing's really happening with these. I certainly could play around with these if I want to, but I'm going to make it so it's only going to be playing with the mask expansion as I grow, right? As I move, this is going to grow. So I'm just going to go ahead and make it. So at about this amount of time is she's going to be in full color. All right. So what I'm going to do next is now just simply expand it out. And as I do that, I want you to just notice, right? That's going to happen. And automatically a new keyframe appears. I don't have to necessarily say 
add new keyframe. That's what's kind of neat about this is that you'd think you have to give the command of add keyframe, which you certainly could, or that option is here, but by virtue of the fact that the playhead is here, I don't have to do that because it automatically did that. Okay, so just so you understand that. Okay, so just remember, what did it do? It started off at like negative mask expansion, and then what, just a few seconds later, it went really, really big, and then she's in color. Okay, so let's just go ahead and go real fast, and let's just see. I'm gonna go ahead and play this. Very cool, all right? But let's just go ahead and perfect that a little bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and just bring this back to the first keyframe and notice how I can click on these guys to be able to do that. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now, just have a little bit more kind of nuance on them. It's gonna go ahead and just resize this. So maybe it's gonna be maybe a little bit more of a wider circle. Maybe center it a little bit. And then when this grows, you're gonna see kind of what's gonna happen now. Okay, so it's just gonna kind of explode right from the center there. Okay, and if you want it to actually make it so it's gonna be happening a little bit later, or i.e. taking a little bit longer, you can click on this individual keyframe, you can see that there, and then just drag that out. So then maybe it's gonna take a little bit longer. Okay, so let's just watch that now. You can see there's the shape of it. And you can see how it's taking a little bit longer. Okay. All right, let's now just play around a little bit more. Let's come over to here and let's now play around with the mask feather. So I'm just gonna go over to here. I'm just gonna add that and I'm gonna increase the feather. Okay, and then notice how I have a new keyframe. And then I'm gonna to go to the next keyframe. So you notice it bounces right to it. I'm gonna make that even more fuzzy. And let's just see what that does. Nice, he's a little more subtle now. Do you really know what's going on? Okay, cool, nice, okay. So you can see how you can play around with a variety of, of different effects within the same element, okay, just by tinkering with the different parts of the keyframing and all the different parts of the individual elements within it but on the timeline to make it come in very slowly and gradually, okay? So you're gonna to wanna to practice this, right? And you can do this with a variety of different effects. Black and white is a nice, easy one to do, but really understand you know, what a mask does, right? Because it does either reveal it or conceal it, okay? But also working with the keyframe to make it so things are gonna gradually move or grow as a result of where the keyframe started and where it's gonna end up, okay? So that's really kind of like the basic tenets of working with a lot of the stuff within Premiere is understanding masking and also understanding keyframes. All right, so pause the video, practice it, and we'll see you in the next lesson. One of the effects that you're gonna be using most often is going to be around color to basically do some post-production work on your video that maybe some of the colors didn't come out the way you wanted to because the lighting wasn't so great, your camera's not that great, whatever it was, right? So within Premiere, you have some really nice features that you can use. Now, we've already worked with our levels, our contrast, our auto contrast to be able to do some fixes to these. But let's now, now go to um, more specific color options within our effects to allow for some nice specific changes. So I'm just gonna type out L-U-M and you're gonna see as I get into here, you're gonna see there's a lot of these Lumetri presets. Now I'm gonna scroll down here and I'm gonna bring up Lumetri color down here. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag that into my timeline and you're gonna see that I have this Lumetri color option right there. And we've already seen some of these like basic correction, creative curves, etc. Now let's just go ahead and just go a little bit deeper into these. Okay, now this is gonna be more specific around color. And you're gonna see that 
these little changes are going to really go a long way. And this is, I usually just recommend to people, this is going to be more or less the first thing you do with your video um, to really kind of get the most out of what's showing to be able to bring out of what you really want to be shown essentially. Okay, so let's start off with working with our highlights and shadows and our blacks and whites. Okay, so I'm just gonna go ahead and play around with my shadows for right now. And let's just see the difference here. When I bring this down a little bit, you see how it becomes a little bit more rich, right? A little more contrasty, right? So it's only affecting my shadows there. So let's go ahead and bring that back to the original and you'll see the difference there. So let's just go ahead and bring that down. Okay, and then in this same vein, I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the blacks. With the blacks, it's gonna be, it just finds like the darkest parts and you're gonna see I can then isolate those so they're gonna be a little bit even darker, but only affects those darkest parts there. So again, you can see the difference, right? And that kind of contrast makes all the other colors really stand out. Let's go ahead and go to the highlights and you're gonna see only the highlights now get affected. So then you can see some of the brighter colors then now come into focus more than they were before. Because the eyes like to see that contrast. So when we see that the shadows and the blacks get darker, it makes the other ones get translated and interpreted as being brighter. So even if you didn't play around with the highlights, with the highlights, you'd be able to see that major, major difference. Okay, so let's now go ahead and play around with the whites a little bit. And you can see it has really kind of starts to shine without being overexposed. Okay, now in that same discussion, you can see you do have the ability to play around with the exposure if you want to. So I'm gonna go ahead and just bring that up and just notice how that can be a little bit too much. You know, maybe bring down the exposure sometimes works a little bit better for me. Okay, so just bring that down or whatever. Okay, that's just gonna be, you know, probably I'm not gonna do anything at all to that. Okay, and this is all gonna be under the tone. Okay, now let me go ahead and just collapse that. And you'll see a few other options here. Like you can see we have some other options under creative, right? So let's just bring up our saturation a little bit. Let's just bring that up so all of the colors are gonna get that much brighter. Do you see that? Let's bring that down. Let's go ahead and bring that back down to 100 so you can see how it changes. Bring this down to like nothing. Okay, let's bring this back up, maybe just a tiny bit over 100. We can see how things are gonna get a little bit brighter. Okay, so not bad. I just went up to 103 tiny bit of a difference. Let's just try going maybe to 110. Okay, and it's not, not too garish, not too much in your face. Now, vibrance works really well, especially when you have um, people in your image because people's skin tends to get a little bit too orange if you work with saturation. So vibrance is actually a really nice one, but let's just see the difference between saturation and vibrance. We can see it's gonna be a little bit more subtle Right, let's just see the before and after. You can't really see too much of a difference there, but when you have people, you know, you'll be able to see. But you'll notice here, there are certain things that are getting affected by it. So again, kind of a spice to taste type of situation here. Okay, sharpen. That really brings out your image. Notice how the edges get a little bit sharper. Notice I can make that blurrier, but there's another tool for that. And that really, really does make a difference. Okay, so again, this is something you really want to start your color correction with is working with this particular one. So you can see a lot, a lot of good stuff here just working with our Lumetri color. Okay, so the curves, we played around with that earlier, so we can skip that. Our vignette, I think we did a little bit of that as well, but we can see how we can play around with that a little bit. So let's just go ahead and bring this up. Okay, or if you go less, that makes it darker. Okay, let's go ahead and bring that. So that kind of brings in your eyes into those colors when you have a nice little vignette there. Okay, so and you can see again, 
you can play around with some of these things as well. Underneath there, you can open that up. The midpoint, the roundness, the feather, right? How much do you want it to be feathered, right? So you can just kind of really play around with these things here, okay? Now, what we're gonna do in a little bit is we're gonna save these presets because let's just say you have a whole kind of series of things you wanna do, right? And it's like, okay, there I have a lot of photos that look just like this. I might wanna save this as a preset. We're gonna do that in our next video because I would like to not have to do this all over again. I wanna remember it so that I can apply it onto these other videos so I don't have to do it again. So it's gonna be a huge time saver, all right? So again, this is gonna be one of the first places you go when you're working with adjusting your colors and a little bit of the lighting and putting in you know, vignettes and all kinds of good stuff. Now I'm a big fan of what I just did here and I wanna use this again and again and again. So let's just go ahead and take a look at this and it looks pretty great and you'll see how it did lots of things, not just for what I was looking at, it does it for all of the video, including all my ocean, everything like that. So I wanna use that again and again and again. So I love that effect because I'm gonna have all kinds of other images that are gonna be just like this. So I'm gonna save this as a preset, so therefore I don't have to do all that work all over again. Okay, so you'll notice that way at the top of my effects, I have something called presets. So that is where the effect that I just created is now going to be saved when I save it so I can reuse that over and over and over again, right? So a lot of the things that we've done already, including, you know, the black and white, you know, and some of the other things we did with the monochrome and a few other ones, right? You can save these as presets so you can then apply them very quickly and easily without having to remember what you did, All right? So how do we do that? Very simply, I'm gonna go ahead and see my Lumetri color, there it is, and then just simply right click I'm gonna say save preset, okay? And I'm just gonna say color correction with bin yet. Okay, and you can put a little description there if you want to. And if there's any type of anchor point happening in terms of a keyframe or anything, you, you'd wanna set it up to do this, but we're not gonna worry about that for right now. Okay, so now let's go ahead and find a good candidate for this. So let's just see, this one might be a good one. So let's just go ahead and bring this over here. And now you can see there is that vignette for this one. You can see it's still there, nice little colors there and everything. This one does not have that. So what I wanna do is go to my preset and you can see there it is, color correction with vignette. And very simply, I drag that on top of it, and bam, look at that. Brought up some nice color, brought in my vignette. It was very quick, very easy to apply that. I don't have to worry about it. And what's so cool about this is that if it's not perfect, I can go over to here to my effect controls, and I will see that I still have this Lumetri color, and I have the ability to then start playing around with all these things a little bit more if I want to, so I can just see What's going on with some of these guys here? Okay, great. Oh, that one actually could use a little bit more color, whatever you wanna do here so you can start playing around with these a little bit more if you like. So let's just go ahead and give that a shot. So I'm just gonna go over here to my basic correction and let's just maybe bring up my shadows a little bit and you can see how that is making the changes right there. Okay. Let's start playing around maybe with sharpening it a bit more. Okay. So we have this like individual. So then if you wanted to, you can now make this a preset just the same. Okay. So again, if you know that you're gonna be doing these things over and over and over again, you may want to then save it as a preset so then therefore you're gonna save a lot of time, all right? So that's pretty much this lesson. Just know that you can do that very, very easily. Know where they're gonna end up. Know that you can apply it very easily and then know that you can then make edits to that after it's been applied 
no problem at all. It's not necessarily linked up to this one. Okay. All right. So again, pause the video, practice it up, try it on your own videos if you want to, not just these and see how you do. Now, so far we've been talking about applying effects to individual clips and then maybe adding on another clip and then adding on some effects to those clips. Now, that could be very tedious, very time consuming. And if you ever wanted to change your effect, right, your lighting or anything like that on your videos and on your clips, that's going to be even more time consuming, all right? So what we're going to talk about is a way to address that. And that is through something called adjustment layers, an adjustment layer. Okay, so think about an adjustment layer as a kind of container for all of the clips that you want to have an effect on. Okay, but it's basically going to be sort of this overarching sort of like envelope for all of the elements inside of it. And basically that envelope takes the effect and it puts it on top of all of those things within the envelope. All right. So this again is called an adjustment layer. So let's see this in action. All right. So you can see I have all of these clips here. Okay. And let's just say, for example, I want them to all be black and white. Right? I don't want to have to do one, two, three, four, five different clips. And for some of you, this is going to be 500 things. We don't necessarily want to have to go through that. So let's see what we can do now to make it very efficient. So how do we create an adjustment layer? So let's just, first of all, I'm going to just be very handy here. I'm going to go over here to my adjustment layers and notice how it's empty. I'm going to create a new adjustment layer. By itself, an adjustment layer is really nothing. All it is is just an empty envelope, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to this little new item, and you're gonna see here is an option for adjustment layer. I click on that, and then it just pretty much asks me just, okay, what's the size of it? What's gonna be your frames per second? That's great, happy with that. And you can see here's my adjustment layer, okay? And it's really pretty much like nothing. There's nothing happening with it yet. I just have to now move it over to what I want it to envelop, right? Think about it like that. Like what's gonna, what do you want it to contain? Okay, so I'm gonna just simply drag this over to here. And you can see right now, it's just very small. It's only five seconds or so. I wanna make it envelop all of this, okay? So it's gonna be one thing, right? One item, one object that's gonna carry the load for all of the objects underneath it. Okay, so watch this now. I'm just gonna go ahead and just do like monochrome. Let's just do like this monochrome faded film. And notice how what I'm doing. I'm dragging it on top of one object and then it's gonna affect everything that lives inside of it. See that? Now, watch what happens. As I go across here, got a nice faded film that could be Italy in the 1950s. Okay, and then wait for it to go to the next clip. You'd think that it's going to maintain its own, but guess what? Very nice. Okay. And what's neat about this is that I can then make changes on my effect controls to this monochrome faded film. You can see this there. And let's just go ahead and play around with some of the things I can do. Let's just go ahead and bring up my contrast a little bit. And you're going to see how that's going to affect everything not just this one clip but everything here okay so let's just now watch this one and we'll just see how see how that gets affected just the same see that let's come down here to creative let's do some sharpening Okay, and that's going to speak for everything underneath our adjustment layer. It's such a, such a smart way to work. It's going to save you a ton of time. And again, if I want to make a change and I want to add in some more, I just add it to one thing and then it speaks for everything underneath it. Okay, so you're going to really want to start to kind of get some of these processes down to make it so it's gonna be a little bit more efficient for you, not only for when you're actually applying something, right? You're gonna applying it to like a whole swath of different clips, but also thinking long-term 
when you're going to want to be changing something after the fact, right? You don't have to change it on five different clips. You just change it on one adjustment layer and then it affects all five or 500 of those clips underneath it. Okay. So that's adjustment layers, right? Practice that up, really get to know it and then use it in real life, you know, use it in a project and see how you do. All right. Pause the video, practice that, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Now, one quick addendum to this discussion on adjustment layers is the fact that you can actually cut up your adjustment layer into several subsections if you wanted to, kind of making them as individual clips using the razor tool. So if you don't want everything to be black and white, you want to kind of mix things up a little bit, you can absolutely do that. So notice my playhead is right here. I'm just going to hit the down arrow and that takes me right to the end of the first clip. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the razor tool by coming over to here or just tapping on the C key. And I'm just gonna go right to where it is there. You see that there? So it kind of goes and knows where, where to go. I click on it and now you're gonna notice that this is going to be, I'm gonna hit the V key to select this. This is now separate from this, okay? So I can then put a different effect on this if I want to, right? So this is gonna be somewhat separate from this, right? So if I wanted to remove the black and white, I absolutely can. And then maybe I'll put in like a fade or something like that, you know, so you can just really kind of play around with these, right? So let's just go ahead and just see what that's going to look like, right? So I can go ahead and just remove this, right, from that one. And then notice there's my color coming right back, right? And then if I notice how that just goes right from there, to there, right, and I don't really lose anything, right, and then bam, that goes black and white, okay? And if I wanted to, I can then put, you know, a nice little fade on there, so I'll just, just do my cross fade, okay? So I'll cross dissolve or whatever you wanna do, let's just maybe try a different one, let's do cross zoom, okay? And let's just see what that's gonna look like. Okay, so kind of an interesting one. All right, let's just maybe zoom in a little bit. And let's get into our remember that from a few lessons ago. Let's maybe make that a little bit longer. All right, and let's just watch that go. <laughs> okay, so you can kind of see what that type of effect can do, right? Let's just try one more. Let's do cross dissolve, we'll replace that. Okay, so then you just kind of play around with it however you like. All right, so I just wanted to kind of put that out there to show you how you can have these to be separate. All right, in a little bit, we'll just do a couple of more effects, right? I'm gonna show you maybe how you want to do maybe a 3D effect on some of your images and kind of just be a little more creative with things. But just wanted to kind of throw that out there for the adjustment layer kind of next part, just so you can see kind of different things you can do. All right, so pause it up, practice it up, and we'll see you soon. In this lesson, we're going to learn how to make a kind of movement collage, working with different kind of basic elements in terms of transformation, bringing images in so we can kind of resize them. But we're going to use some keyframing for movement as well. All right, so let's just kind of back up to kind of get over some basics if we haven't gotten some review on this. So let me just kind of get this nice and big for you so you can see kind of partially what we're going to work with. So you can see here is three very short clips. Okay, there they are. Okay, and we're going to bring in a fourth winner. So I just did these three just in the interest of time. And then I'm gonna bring in this fourth one just so you can see the process of how we're doing this. And then ultimately what our goal is we're gonna actually kind of have them move in. All right, so let me go ahead and get out of this. 
And let me just kind of give you a little bit of kind of deconstruction of what we have here. We have three individual images, right? One is here, one is here, one is here, right? As different video clips, right? All coming in one, two, three. And I've positioned them somewhere on the canvas, right? So they're gonna play independent of each other, right? So it is kind of like a picture in picture type of situation, right? So if you wanna have a picture right in the middle of it, you can absolutely do that. So we're gonna learn how we can bring in another video clip and then also resize it if you haven't done that before. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually put on some movement onto these as well, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and bring in this vineyard clip. I'm gonna drag this up and out just like that. And you're gonna see it's gonna come in pretty big just like that, right? It's kind of covering the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is very easily transform that to make it the size that I want, okay? So there are some transformation options within the effect controls, and there is definitely a transform effect itself that you can add on to this, right? You can change the scaling, you can do all kinds of different things, but the easiest way that I find is to simply double click on it. Now you wanna make sure that the arrow here is active, right? Your selection tool, because that way, when you double click on it, you're gonna be able to see it gets highlighted and you have the ability to then just transform it and scale it like you would in any other program if you've done that before in Photoshop or even Word or PowerPoint. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab it from the corners and then just try to kind of fit it in like so, right? And this is actually be nice where, where guides might come in for you as well. So remember how we talked about that earlier on. And then of course, if you wanna zoom in, you can see that as well, okay? Now, if I double click it, and if I wanna kind of nudge it, if you hit the arrow keys, it doesn't do what you think it's gonna do, right? Notice the arrow keys on your keyboard, right? Just kind of go to and from like you know, the end of the clip, right? So, but if you hold down the shift and the control key, or if you're on the Mac, it's gonna be shift and the command key, you can see then you can actually do a little bit of nudging. So that's kind of a nice thing to know about, okay? Because sometimes you do wanna nudge these things just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit the tilde key, bring this up a little bit, and I can see that nice and big. And then, let's watch it, I got a nice little montage collage. All right, and then to set to some nice music, that wouldn't be too bad. Okay, so let me go ahead and just pause that and now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna work on these kind of moving in, okay? So I'm gonna kind of have them move in a variety of different directions, but I'm gonna start off at this starting point because this is where I know it's going to end. So I'm gonna kind of work backwards with my keyframes. Let me actually just trim this in there. Okay, very good. So I'm gonna start backwards with my keyframes, right? Because I know this is ultimately where I want them to end. Okay, so let's go ahead and just make this a little bit wider and then bam, I'm gonna put on a keyframe here at the end and again, kind of work backwards, all right? So it's essentially the position that I'm concerned with for each of these, right? So if you see here, here's my position and I bam, just have a keyframe right here, okay? So easily, easily done. And now when I go back over to here, it's like, where is it going to begin, right, for my vineyard, right? So I'm gonna have that maybe coming in from the right, okay? So my position now for this keyframe, this beginning keyframe is gonna be off the side, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and just move this over just like that, okay? So then, you're gonna see I'm gonna have this movement happening just like that, okay? So it's gonna come straight in, okay? And I'm gonna continue doing the same thing for the rest of these, all right? So now let's just see some good ways to do that. I'm gonna to go to this one right here, and I'm gonna come all the way to the end, and what am I gonna do? I'm gonna add on a keyframe, right? So I'm gonna say toggle animation, Right, because again, that's where I know where I want it to end up. Come over to here, right? and that's my 
Roma subway. All right, that's going to be this one right there. And this one, I'm going to have it coming from underneath it. It's going to be coming up from the bottom. And that's going to be my Y axis here. So I'm going to go ahead and bring that down. Make sure that's off the frame. All right. And now we can go ahead and watch it. A little dynamism there. Okay. Pretty cool. All right. Now I'm probably going to ultimately end up changing where that last keyframe is going to be. And maybe I'm going to even make it so they're going to come in at maybe different times. You know, maybe you want to kind of have them collide with each other and then move back. So a lot of things you can do once you establish kind of what your movement's going to be and you establish what your process is going to be. All right. Now let's go over here to our Positano. And I'm going to pretty much just do the same thing. All right. So let's go ahead and add on keyframe and if you want to experiment with some other ones too like the scale and things like that you absolutely can do that all right and then this one is going to come let's have that one actually come also from off on the top and one more of the piazza and the people that's going to come in from the left So now going back to the beginning and then I'm going to be working with my X axis. All right. Now at this point, when I play it, when it ends, it's going to kind of disappear. So let's just watch. You're going to see kind of coming in a little slow and all right, that's interesting. And maybe there's some cool music happening and you know, you're making a shape. There's some text happening or something like that. It's taking a little while for it to get there but you can see what's happening. And I'm gonna have some control over it ultimately, but you're gonna see, bam, they're gonna connect, right, perfectly. So let's now decide where these are gonna go. So where is it going to end, right? At what time do you want it to actually finish, right? So meaning it's gonna take about whatever that many seconds until this guy gets there. Notice how he's there before everybody else. All right, so let's establish that. So let's just say seven seconds. Let's go to here, bring this over there, seven seconds. And then maybe just for fun, I'll have this one come in a little sooner. Okay, maybe we'll do the same thing for this one. A little bit of visual interest, a little bit of dynamism. Okay, some Italian music, it's coming in, everybody come to Italy, amazing, fantastic, great, and then bam, here we are. Okay, so you can do this in a variety of different ways, right? Where I'm just showing you one very simple example of movement, you know, from the position, but it's really about you really understanding how keyframes can work in this complex level. And you'll see how I actually started with the end. You know, and that's the kind of thing you can think about kind of creatively, right? So it might be something around color. It could be something around movement. We're going to talk about 3D in a little bit, right? It can be done with so many different things that where do you want to begin? Where do you want to end? And in this case, it was just about our X and Y values. But again, it could be about color. It could be about black and white. It could be a vignette, right? It could be so many different things. You're going to want to experiment with it, okay? So, and later on, we'll talk about text. Maybe text, you wanna have that come up on the screen. Maybe just basic shapes, you wanna have that move across the screen. It's all about keyframes to be able to do that, to be able to accomplish that. All right, very good. So practice that, create something. If you like something like this or something different, love to hear from you in the comments what you've created, and uh, we'll see you in the next lesson. All right, and welcome back. Uh, we're going to continue on with this project here, and we're going to do something a little bit, I don't know, a little more whimsical, all right? We're going to learn about uh, the 3D effect, okay? And the 3D basically allows you to have some kind of texture and dimension and perspective to something that's otherwise flat. And in this case, we're going to make it so there's going to be some movement around that particular 
video. So it's going to come in, it's going to be sort of, almost sort of like flipping in the air. And this is just to give you one little example of the process so you can see how it's done. And then you'll be able to apply that to text and shapes and possibly other images. Now, you may not always want it to move, but I am going to show you all the different process around making it 3D, right? Which maybe that's all you really want to do. But I'm also going to show you how we can make it move using 3D with keyframes, moving from one part to the next. All right, so we are going to use, let's just go to our... This guy right here, which is going to be our Amalfi Positano. And I'm going to apply a 3D effect to this. All right, so how do I do that? I'm going to go over here to my effects. And all I did was type in 3D. And then notice here is this basic 3D. So very simply, just I'm going to drag this on there. And then, of course, I now have this basic 3D effect that shows up in my effect controls. Now, I have to ask myself, well, how do I want it to end up? Just like I did with my position, I know I want it to end up at the seven second mark looking normal like the rest of these. But when it starts off, it's going to be kind of flipping. It's gonna be a little bit askew. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and hit this guy here. So it's gonna lock right in to that particular time. All right, now I know that I want this particular time, I want my 3D to be non skewed at that point. So now that my playhead is here, I'm going to go over to here to my basic 3D and just basically tell it, hey, you know what? This is going to be a keyframe at some point, And then maybe it's even going to be a tilt at some point. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do at this point. So I'm going to put a keyframe on both of these properties. Okay. Good enough for right now. All right. Now, in order to actually see what it's going to look like, right? I might want to actually not go all the way back over here because if it's at second zero, I can't see the actual effect. So just for the purposes of me being able to see the effect, I'm just now going to keep it here, maybe about the five or six second mark, and then ultimately drag over my keyframe so it starts off with that effect, okay? So my goal is to make this kind of flip a little bit. So let's just see what swivel does, right? You can see that's gonna allow me to do this kind of like swivel effect. Oh, left and right, left and right. Oh, that's kind of interesting. So you can see what 3D does. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that. I can go ahead and remove that. I don't want that. Let's just see what tilt does. You can see, oh, okay, that's kind of interesting. So it's coming in from the top. So I may wanna actually have that kind of look like it's like really flying from outer space, kind of like Superman 2, if you remember that. Okay, so when they're kind of flying through space. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just make that exactly-ish, just about that. All right, so it's gonna kind of flip two times by the time it gets there. And you'll notice that it has a new keyframe automatically, right? Just added that on there, right? Which is pretty neat. Okay, again, I don't have to do anything, but now I need to move this to the beginning, right? So I'm gonna simply just click and drag that. You got a little preview of what it's gonna do. And now let's watch it. All right, that was a lot of turns. Okay, and it took a long time to do that. Okay, which is fine, you know, I'm not, I'm not too unhappy about that, but maybe I'll just experiment with it. See what it does this time. It's gonna come in a little faster. Okay, not too bad, not too bad. Could be kind of fun. All right, and then let's just, for experimentation purposes, let's just now do our subway people. Let's go ahead and do the same thing, but we're gonna have them flipping kind of left and right. Okay, we're gonna be using a different one. So let's now go ahead and just say basic 3D. Okay, do that same exact situation. I'm gonna go ahead and make it so I'm at the right place. Remember, you wanna lock right in to where you know it's gonna end, right? So bam, there that is. So I'm just go ahead and say next keyframe. And now I'm gonna say swivel. And in this case, I know I'm gonna be using swivel because I know it's gonna be going left over right. All right, and then let's back it off a little bit so I can see what that's gonna do. And ooh, I guess I'm on the subway. Okay. And then just for fun, I could even 
decide to make it smaller as it's coming in, right? So why not? So I can go ahead and let's just say, I'm gonna make this start off a certain size. So I've got this already laid out, and I know I want it to start off like that, but I also wanna make it so there's gonna be a scaling thing. So when it comes in, it's gonna be small, and then when it lands, it's going to be the normal size. It's very important that we have this size at the end. So again, I start with the end. I'm gonna say scale, it's exactly what it is right now. But then I want it to get, I want it to start off small. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, and let me just see what that's gonna look like, of course. Let's go ahead and just make that really small. And then bring that from the beginning. And let's just watch what that's gonna do. And it's gonna grow, 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 and just pop right into place. So, you know, you really just wanna kind of think about, this is, you know, just a kind of a weird example, maybe not the most elegant, but I want you to kind of see it on this grander scale, how you might have kind of a more of a elaborate type of thing that you can do with all these different elements, right? We have positioning happening, we have 3D happening, we have swivel, we have tilt for different ones. We started off one way and we ended up another way. And then I just decided, you know what? Let's do a little bit of scale. And maybe you wanna play around with the rotation. You know, you're just trying to get a little bit of a visual interest, okay? And again, if you're working with text, if you're working with another image on top of something, you know, whatever it is to kind of just draw your user in, you can do that with this movement, you know, with 3D, with size, with all kinds of different things, all right? And of course, we talked about color and black and white and masking, right? So there's so much things, so many things you can do creatively and uniquely with a lot of these tools, right? Now that you have the skills under your belt. Okay, so practice that up and we'll see you in the next lesson. Welcome back, everybody. We are gonna switch up gears a little bit and start working with our blur effects. So we've been looking at a number of different effects so far, and we know how to actually search for our effects so we can find them. And in this case, we're gonna be working with what's called the Gaussian blur. So we're gonna put a blur effect on the outside of our video. So it kind of has this nice ethereal sort of glow around it, but it kind of draws your eyes in closer into the subjects, into the center of the subjects. So we've done a vignette before, and you can see a vignette is very similar, but it's gonna be with kind of an ethereal black and white. With this, it's gonna be an ethereal blur around the outside. Okay, so we are going to, first of all, bring in some video into our timeline. I'm just gonna use these horses here, and you can see, there they are, okay? And they just cannot wait to be blurred. All right, so let's go ahead now and search for blur inside of our effects. And you see there's lots and lots and lots of different types of blur effects. We're gonna work with the Gaussian blur, probably the most commonly used blur effect. So very simply, I'm just gonna just drag that right on top of the timeline. And as you can expect, you're gonna see here is, in fact, a Gaussian blur effect, okay? And as you can expect, there is also these masks here. Okay, and you can also see there is the blurriness of the blur, okay, and also a few other dimensions and everything like that, right? So we've seen this pattern so far with all of our other effects that we bring in the effect and we have the ability to change it to whatever properties it is, but we also have the ability to add on a mask, okay? And then also we have the ability to do keyframes around it. So maybe that's a keyframe you wanna kinda of bring it into focus, right? So there's lots you can do with this, right? To kinda of just really sort of draw the user's attention in and have some visual interest, okay? So now I am working with this, but instead of drawing out either the ellipse mask or just using a regular rectangle, the four point polygon, I'm gonna show you how you can use the free draw. Okay, so very simply, right, I have my layer selected. I'm just gonna go ahead and click four corners, two, three, four, and then finish it up. Okay, and then this is now complete. And now let's go ahead and, okay, let's go ahead now and increase the blurriness. All right, and notice what happens as I do that. OK, 
Okay, so the outside gets blurry, but maybe it's the opposite of what you want. Okay, I can do that, right? See? Now, if I play this, you can see I have this nice blurry square all around the inside. Okay, not exactly what I want, but it's a start. Okay, so you can see all my options here. Now, what can I do now as a result? to make this kind of do a little bit more of what I want to do. I want to make it a little softer. So the first thing I'm going to do is play around with the feather. Okay, so I can just go ahead and bring that out like that. You'll notice how we get these little dashes in there. Okay, you also notice how this little kind of pin on the left hand side is also expanding out. And I showed you earlier how you can also do it this way as well if you like okay so that's pretty good so you can see i have my blurriness at about 117 i can of course just type in to that and just make that 120 nice even number and then there's my feather inside outside but you know let's go ahead and just check it out let's just see all right pretty good subtle i like it all right and then let's do a couple more things here let's decide i don't actually want this like hard cornered square. What I'm gonna do now is play around with these guys here, because notice I can actually click on these corners, right? So I can actually move it around, right? Notice how I can kind of get this little, what's called the Bezier handle, right? I can kind of move this around as well, right? See that? And I can go ahead and just bring it all the way in if I want to. But now if I want it to be round, you'll notice how the Bezier handle just happened to appear here, right? I'm actually gonna do it using a keyboard shortcut Okay, using my Alt key or Option key on the keyboard, and you'll notice how I can now make this rounder, right? Holding down the Alt or Option key, and then I can go ahead and just make it more round, more subtle, okay? So it's not just so kind of a harsh thing there. I can very easily do that. Okay, now when I come back over here, I can now move this, and then I'm always gonna get these little Bezier handles. You're gonna see the Bezier handle come up whenever you're working with a round object of some kind, right? You have like round corners, you can very easily do that. Okay, so let's bring this one up and then bring this one down. And it's gonna be just kind of barely noticeable, right? So let's just go ahead and... I can also make that turn into a hard corner if you want to. All right. Fix that in there. Bring that in and let's take a look. Okay, so now you can see it's a little bit more subtle. Okay, it's there, but it's not there. And then maybe I'm gonna make this mask a little bit more kind of flush out. Now that I've made the feather a little more feathered. I might want to bring this in a little bit more. I like that. It's perfect. It's like a dream, right? That's kind of the effect that you're looking at there, where it's like, ah, okay, cool. But my eyes still go right into it. But we're creating this sort of ethereal environment, you know, so kind of nice, right? So you'll want to experiment with that. Okay, now let's do something related, but a little bit different where we're going to start using a keyframe on a blur. We're going to have it so we're going to make something be out of focus, if you will, for a little bit, and then it's going to go into focus. So we're going to continue on with this discussion of blurs, but we're going to use a different graphic altogether. Okay, so let me just close this out. All right, and then let's use our remapping from earlier. Okay, and then Let's make this a little bit bigger so everybody can see it a little better. Okay, and then we're gonna have this just kind of be out of focus and then eventually come into focus as we get a little bit closer. Okay, so how can I do that? Very easily, we're just gonna just bring in our Gaussian Blur. And you can probably guess at this point what I need to do. Very simply, I'm gonna come over here to my Gaussian Blur and I'm going to start off by applying a keyframe simply by clicking on the stopwatch. And then it knows automatically, okay, this guy, 
he's going to start off doing something, right? There's going to be some kind of change leading to something else, okay? So in this case, I wanted to start off blurry. So I'll notice here I have my little diamond there. This is in blue. So fantastic. This is going to be blurry, 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 blurry. Okay. All right. So good enough. And I'm going to make it simple. I don't really necessarily need to draw any shapes or anything like that. I just want to go from blurry to not blurry, right? And that's it. So let's just find out kind of where she's going to be kind of turning around ish, right? And of course I can always move that to a certain place, right? So it's going to just come right into focus right around here. Okay, and you can do several different keyframes. So don't worry about it if you want to kind of match it up to one and it stays at a certain level and then it goes to another level from that level. You can very easily do that. All right, now, again, I don't need to say new keyframe, which I could. All I need to do is just now just make a change and the keyframe then automatically gets created. Okay, so in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and just say no blur. All right, and let's just see. So she comes into focus right around there, doesn't she? So it's like, okay, you know what? That should be moved to here. Okay, so that shouldn't take very long for it to just get into focus. So let's just take a look at it now. So you can see keyframe one, keyframe two. Okay, starting off with 48, right, of blurriness, and then it's going to go to zero. So you're going to watch this go down. Very nice, very cool. Okay, so again, you're learning all these different effects, you're learning all the nuances of the effects, but you're gonna to start to see patterns across the board in terms of applying the effect and using keyframes to then make movement happen between those keyframes, whether it's over time, size, Okay, and all kinds of different things, right? And if you wanted to morph one shape into the other, you can absolutely do that. Okay, so we've seen several examples that can really allow you to be creative and create kind of, you know, um, interesting visuals and experiences for your user. Okay, pause the video, practice that, and we'll see you in the next lesson. We're gonna continue working on the blur effect, but we're gonna do something a little bit different where we're gonna blur out somebody's face, okay? They haven't signed the waiver, they don't wanna be seen, you know, whatever it is, maybe you just don't want somebody in the image with you. For whatever reason, we can blur them out. Now, that's pretty easy to do as we know if something is just kind of sitting there, not, not moving and they're still, but let's say we've got this guy who's moving around, right? I'm like, okay, you know what? That guy's gonna sue us for a million dollars because he's now in our video, okay? So we need to fix that. So what are we gonna do? Very simply, we're just gonna put on our Gaussian blur right there onto our image. And you're gonna see that I'm gonna have my Gaussian blur option right there. Wonderful. Now, you're gonna see a lot of the same options. There's our blurriness, okay? And then some of the other things here in terms of any dimensions or anything like you wanna do. And we'll also notice here's our masks, right? And then also here are our little stopwatches to say, hey, listen, this is going to be some type of keyframe, right? There's gonna be some kind of movement happening, okay? So let's just see what we can do first of all. I'm gonna go ahead and simply click on my ellipse mask. I'm just gonna draw a circle of blur around this fella. Doesn't have to be perfect as long as we're not seeing anything around him. Now, what you might want to do if you make it too big is just adjust the feathering a little bit, right? So it's a little more subtle, okay? But of course, you can adjust that as you go forward, okay? Now, the next thing I want to do is actually make him blurry, okay? Good. So I cannot recognize him at all, okay? So that makes it nice and easy, okay? But watch what happens now when I play this. Uh-oh, look what's left behind, okay? And then I can now see the guy. Uh-oh, now we're definitely getting sued, okay? So what I need to do is start doing a bunch of keyframes along my mask path, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. And then let's now watch it. As he moves along, what do we wanna do, okay? So notice here, because I chose that, I now have a keyframe of this setup here, okay? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just drag this over to here. And then, okay, with this selected, now drag this over to here, 
Okay, and now I should have a new keyframe, right? Let's watch it as it's now moving, as he's moving. Oh, it's really trying to get away from me, isn't he? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that again. All right, let's come over to here. And now let's move it over to here. And then a new keyframe should now appear right there. Let's do it a little bit more. Probably even take him off the frame and do that. And that should be enough. So let's check it out. Let's just watch it. Nice, unrecognizable. Okay, maybe you gotta do it for this guy and that guy and it continues to go on and on and on from there. So pretty neat, relatively easy to do. Okay, now let's just try it for her, but we'll do it maybe in a slightly different way this time. This time I'm gonna go ahead and draw out a mask for her. And this time we're gonna use one of these automated tools to be able to do it. So let's go ahead and just draw one more mask. Okay, and I'm gonna do it for her. Okay, and in this case, this is going to be another mask right here, you can see. And well, we're going to go ahead now and do the same exact thing with this mask path. But I want you to notice how we have this little guy right here, okay, to be able to track mask forward, right? So it's going to basically follow her, right, as she goes through, right, to be able to then just, okay, let's just watch her as she goes, right? I'm going to click on that play button. And then if she gets a little bit off the path, right, it's kind of looking at her face to see if in fact it is her, it's looking for like her skin and obviously her movement as we go past all this. Okay, and that took a little while. So now let's just go ahead and back up and I'll just notice what we did here, right? You can see it has like a zillion keyframes to follow her along here. So now let's just back up a bit and we'll just see pretty magic i did not actually have to do those one by one you can see very nicely it did it for me as opposed to these guys but there's a lot of keyframes so again that could take a long time and it could you know slow your system down a little bit increase your file size but let's just see the magic of what it's done right pretty remarkable okay so lots of cool stuff you can do now additionally with the blur effect and now combining that with your different masks and keyframes, but potentially in a more creative way. All right, one more time. Let's keep an eye on that. And yeah, look at that. None the wiser, we are protected for another day. All right, practice that, lots of good stuff there, and we'll see you in the next lesson. And welcome back everyone. In this next video, we are gonna switch up gears a little bit and we're just gonna do a little basic review on how to bring in some text. So we're gonna go over how to bring in the text, how to move things on the timeline, how to do a little bit of background on the text. And then we're also gonna go into some text uh, modification in terms of formatting. So just a little bit of a primer to kind of get us going for the next few lessons. All right, so how do we do text? Super simple. We're gonna go over to this area right here where we have the little T. And then when you click on that, you're gonna see, it's gonna give me the option to actually draw out some text and I just go ahead and type it out, okay? And then I just go ahead and type whatever I want out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just delete that right now. So I'm just gonna go back to my selection tool by hitting the V or hitting the selection tool and deleting that. Pretty simple to do our text, but what I wanna do first is actually give it a place to kind of live as a title. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create kind of a background, okay? And this is a little review from what we've done in previous lessons. So in order to create a background, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over to this area right there, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that and choose color matte. So essentially that's allowing us to have a background as just sort of like a title page, if you will. So when I click on that, it's gonna ask me very simply, what's the size you want? All that looks pretty good, just kind of sticking to what my sequence um, width and height are. So I'm gonna click on okay, and it asks me, hey, what color do you want this to be? And I can choose pretty much any color I want if you're used to Photoshop or any of these. You can see you can choose whatever color you have here, and then bam, then go ahead and select it from here. 
right? So you can see I have the kind of the spectrum of different colors. And then I can just choose my actual color that's derived from this spectrum of colors. Now, if you know your RGB value, if you know all these other things here, you can go ahead and put those in. Here's your hexadecimal. If you want to actually do a little eyedropper and grab it from the actual stage, you can. All right, but I'm just going to choose a very simple black and notice what those codes are for the color profile. And I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to call this black BG, just like that. All right, and you'll notice that that now appears inside of my project panel right there. And what I'm going to do now is while holding down the control or command key, just drag that puppy in and then notice how it just bounces over there or ripples forward for me. Okay, so that control or command key, remember, just bounces over there. If I didn't do that, let's just go ahead and back up for a second. Remember, that'll just oop, eat it up. I don't want to do that. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and hold down the control or command key, drag it over there, and then bam, that gets now moved over. Now, this is a pretty good amount for my text. You can see that just black, play it, and then wait for it. It's going to be about five seconds or so. And then, bam, here comes the rest of my video. Okay, so you can see that's just going to be a black background. And why did I do that? So I can put text right on top of that. All right, that's going to be the first lesson that we're going to do here. Okay, so how do we bring in the text? Exactly what I showed you before. Now moving the timeline back over here to the beginning. Come over to here to text, or I can just simply hit the T key on my keyboard. And then just simply click and drag to make a little text box there. I'm just going to type out I C E L A N D. And that's, of course, not that big. So I'm just going to go ahead and double click that. And wait a second, where do I make all of my very simple formatting? applied, right? So I can't necessarily see that here. So what I have to do is go over to here to my captions and graphics panel. And then things get a little bit wonky here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just make that a little bit bigger. So I have a little more space to see my actual stage of my video. And over here on the right hand side, very importantly, you're going to see here is my essential graphics. Just right there. Okay, now, once I'm in this, I want you to notice that there's actually two little tabs here. There is the edit tab and there is the browse tab. Okay, we're gonna get to that in an upcoming lesson. So we're gonna go over here to edit and you're gonna see potentially some familiar options here, right? So you can see here down in the bottom is all of my font options and my alignment options, the size options here. And then if you have a lot of text here, like if you're doing just say credits or something like that, you can be working with your line spacing, also known as your letting. You can be working with your tracking and your kerning, right? So that's essentially gonna be like the space between the letters. Then of course I have my colors, right? My fill color, and I also have my stroke color. So what we're gonna do now is very simply just gonna choose a font. I'm gonna go over here, click on my dropdown, and you'll notice that I actually have quite a few fonts to choose from. Okay, bam, like that. And you'll also notice that there's a little star option right here. So if I click on this star right here, notice what it does. It takes me to the items that I have starred in the past. So what does that mean? It's essentially a bookmark for all of your fonts. So I'm gonna unclick that. And you're gonna see if I just start, let me just go ahead and add on some other ones. That's kind of a fun one right there. Click that, right? There's another goofy one right there. Go to there. And now when I click on my star, very nice. Okay, so it's a really great way to add on fonts and also save them and have quick access to them. You also might be working with Adobe fonts. You can do that as well, right? So therefore, you're going to get a whole wide breadth of fonts uh, that maybe are not available on your computer. So I'm just going to go ahead and convert this font to from Tahoma to let's just try impact. And obviously not big enough. So what I'm going to do is take this little slide ruler here and just make that grow, grow, grow. And I'm going to make it centered. Okay, like that. And then let's make that centered just like that. Ooh, that's nice. I like it. So what I'm going to do next is decide, well, you know, maybe I want to do something else with this, like maybe a stroke. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And then here is the color of my stroke currently, which is just white. And then here is the width of the stroke, which is just one point. So obviously it looks very invisible right now. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click on this. And then let's just go ahead and choose another color. I'll just choose green. And I'm gonna make this by clicking and dragging a little bit 
thicker. Okay, so let's go ahead and just move that there. Now it's at 14. Okay, let me just go ahead and click away. And you can see very faintly, there it is. Okay, so maybe that's not the best choice because it's kind of on top of uh, black. So maybe you want to choose something a little bit lighter, you know, whatever, maybe a little bit thicker. So you, you, know, you have a chance to really kind of go in many, many different directions. Okay, so it's kind of spacing out right now on what the color of the Icelandic flag is right now. But let's just go ahead and try something maybe a little bit more kind of interesting. If we wanted to have another stroke on there, let me go ahead and just say, hey, listen, let's just do one more and just add that as another color. And let's just make sh pretend that Iceland is actually Italy. Okay. And add on a red stroke. Now we can't see it. Why? Because the stroke is too small. So let's just go ahead and make this, let's just say 51. See what happens. Ooh. Okay. Very nice. It's smart enough to understand kind of, all right, let's make that a little bit smaller. Let's go ahead and go to 45. Let's go ahead and just type it in this time. Let's just say maybe 18. Okay. So a little bit of, you know, kind of visual interest there. Let me just go ahead and bring this down a little bit more so it's not so dominant. Okay, gives it a little bit of texture. No, well, and that's not too bad. Now let's just go ahead and start adding on and tinkering with some of these other types of font, you know, topography tools that you may not have worked with in the past. Okay, so this, if you're ever gonna be working in Photoshop or InDesign or Illustrator, this actually will help you kind of understand some of that typographical stuff. So let's now focus on some of these items here, like our tracking. So I'm just gonna go ahead and just bring this up a tiny, tiny bit. Okay, so let's go ahead and just drag that over and notice what it's doing there. See that I'm able to control how much space is between the letters. Okay, notice I can even do it this way. Okay, so it's kind of interesting, right? So it's like you have all that kind of control in the world if you wanna be a little bit more creative tracking negative or tracking much, much higher to be able to have a little bit of space there. Cause this could also be for like readability, but it could also be for creativity and kind of artistry if you want as well. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of just tweak that a tiny bit, make that a little bit wider, click away. Now I can see what I've done there. All right. So let's see what other options we have here. Notice if you wanted to, I can make these potentially a little bit thicker by kind of doing this sort of faux bold, right? I can do this faux italic if I want to. You can make things all caps, small caps, superscript, subscript, all kinds of wonderful things here. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I kind of like both of those. So why not? All right, so let's go back to our regular selection tool and then let's uh, take a look at this. And I think we're pretty much good. So I'm gonna keep this for right now. I'm gonna pause the video, have you practice this. And then in a little bit, I'm gonna have you practice this. We're gonna come back and we're gonna be doing some kind of effects on this and making it kind of do some more interesting things. We're also gonna set it to some sound and all kinds of great creative things here. So go ahead, pause the video, practice up, and we'll see you in the next lesson. And now that we have the basics down with our text and how do we bring it into our timeline, let's now just do a couple other more kind of creative things. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to just make this go a little bit longer on my timeline here so I can have this just go maybe about 10 seconds instead. So then when it finishes, it continues to go as an overlay on top of my already pre-existing video. Now, the other thing I want to do is I want to make it so when my text comes in, Right? You can see it's kind of coming in, but there's no sound underneath it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of steal this sound here. So I'm going to make it just like, hey, listen, there's some tight title coming in. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. What's happening? When I bring in this title, there's something kind of looming, right? There's something kind of threatening in there. Wait a second. What is it? And it's going to be the sound of this roaring waterfall. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unlink this audio from this video. So very simply right click and I'm gonna say unlink and now these are separate from each other. And then very simply I'm just gonna go ahead and copy controller command C and controller command V. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and bring that over and then bring that over in case it kind of swallows it up. It went in there because I had the timeline there because I had the scrubber there. So ordinarily you'd have the scrubber where you want it to be placed. So, but this should be fine and now
Yeah, and that continues on from there. All right, now that's just kind of my first thing there. Just a little bit of you know nuance. If you wanted to have you know a background that's not overlaying the video, but you still want to have a little bit of sound there, that's a nice little trick. All right, so let's just come back here. And I'm going to continue working on this type. Now I'm just going to do, you know, maybe one or two different kind of effects in here. Maybe we'll see where we get with that to kind of just add in a little more kind of visual interest for us. So what I'm going to do again is select this and I'm going to go over to here to my effects. And what we're going to do for starters is I'm going to go ahead and just type out 3D over here in my effects. Okay, we've done a little bit of 3D already, but now we're going to do it with text. Now, I just want to kind of set your expectations that it's not going to be 3D like the way that maybe in After Effects can do 3D, but it's still going to be pretty cool nonetheless. So I am going to first split this because I only want this 3D effect happening like right there, you know, at this little five second spot there. So I'm going to go back to my razor tool or I can hit the C and then bam, that is now going to be set between two things here, right? So I just have these two separate clips and as a result, when I apply my basic 3D, it's only gonna be on this particular clip, not on this one, because I have something else planned for that. So let's just go ahead and just drag this on top of it. And if you can recall from other videos that we've done, that when you put some effects on a clip, you're gonna now notice that we now have these effect controls, right, available. And you're gonna see I have a number of different effect controls available to me by default like my position, my scale, my rotation, all this good stuff here. And then guess what's waiting there for me is this basic 3D. Now we need to do again, a little review on keyframes, right? Which we've already done a lot in this course, but let's just go ahead and just talk about it once again. You'll notice here, I have these little stopwatches there. That's essentially gonna tell Premiere that I want to start a keyframe. I wanna be able to begin some type of action that's then ultimately gonna morph or animate into another action, right? I want a little bit of movement. So the keyframe is basically saying, this is where the beginning of the movement will be. And that movement could be actually just a position on the screen. It could be the scale of the object itself. And in this case, it could also be some basic 3D, right? Or you can do a whole combination of them, all right? So in order to do a keyframe, super simple, make sure that your Timeline, where you want it to be is at the beginning of where you want it to start and where you want it to be, all right, on the particular object you want it to be on, right? So pretty straightforward. This is where I want my keyframe to start. So let's go ahead and just see kind of like what these things can actually do first, okay? So let me just go ahead and just swivel this a little bit, right? That's the kind of, like, oh, it's kind of interesting when you're dealing with type, a little bit kind of more interesting than maybe an image, right? Because it's like not so much too much like cognitive overload. Let's now bring this back to zero. Let's just see what this does. Tilt, kind of cool. Now this one's pretty neat. I'm just gonna go ahead and bring this distance to image. Look at that. So you can kind of make it sort of fly off the screen. You see that? So it's coming at you. Iceland and then, okay, and there it goes and it's just gone, right? Like, okay. Where are you going with that, right? And then it maybe just disappears into something else, All right? So we're gonna experiment with that a little bit for this video, and then we're gonna pause the video and we're gonna try it out uh, with some other effects as well. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and reset this back, and then we're back to where we started. So let's go ahead now and just do a keyframe, starting off here, okay, just right there at the beginning of my clip. And I'm just gonna say, let's just do tilt for right now. And then my tilt is gonna be at zero. And then eventually, once it gets to maybe around here, it's just gonna kind of go up a little bit. Okay, and then it gets to the end and it's gonna go right back a little bit. Okay, maybe it's even gonna kind of overdo it a little bit. So notice that as I change the parameters here, the keyframes then get applied automatically. So pretty cool. So let's just watch it in action. Not bad, kind of interesting, but let me go ahead and just change my mind on that, reset it, undo that, click OK. Let's just try another one. Again, coming back to the beginning of my timeline, beginning of that clip. Let's try one more and let's just do a little swivel. And that's time to show, let's have this swivel kind of a little bit off, right? And let's just have it come all the way to the end and let's just have it go to the other side. Maybe about the same amount ish
right? And if I wanted to kind of do a little bit more, let me just go ahead and move this timeline over here, a little more activity, okay? And then let's do another one, bring it over to here. Okay, let's bring that back a little bit. Let's bring this back this way a little bit. And one more, bring that back. Very smooth. So we can do kind of a cool thing like that. All right. So just to kind of give you a little taste of all the different kind of like subsets of this tool that you can use. All right. Now let's now I'm going to remove all these. I'm going to say no thanks. And that gets rid of everything. Just reset this back to zero. And now let's just do this distance to image, which I think is kind of fun. So let's just go ahead and create a keyframe here. And you can see I made a little mistake. Look where it ended up. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to do Controller Command Z, come back to the beginning. Then I apply my keyframe. There it is. There's my little half diamond to tell me that the keyframe is about to begin. And for this one, I actually want it to be like super, super far away, right? It's going to be kind of like Star Wars style. It's going to come right in and then it's going to be coming right at you. Okay, so how long you want that to take is totally up to you. Okay, but right now we're just gonna do five seconds and then bring this back down to, let's just say zero for now. And let's just see what that's gonna do. Whoa, okay, so that's pretty cool. Kind of a little bit of suspense comes in at you. And let's try bringing that so it's just gonna kind of fly off the screen a little bit. So I'm just gonna make that negative and let's just say negative say 100. So now let's see what that does. Okay, and then it comes right back to where we started from. All right, so there's a lot you can do like that 3D effect is a lot more than meets the eye, isn't it? So go ahead and practice that. We're gonna do something completely different, just still working with type here. We're gonna be doing a few other things with blur and some bevel and a few other things as well. So go ahead and pause the video, practice this, practice it you know, with other elements as well, not just type if you want to just kind of see all the things that you can do. But with type, you definitely get some nice effect, especially when you incorporate it with our keyframes. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson. Okay, and welcome back. If you recall, within our last text lesson, we split up our clip that was 10 seconds into two five second clips. So I'm gonna keep this one here, we can see that. And then when it comes in, it's gonna then just kind of jump right to where we were with this just plain old Iceland text. So you might wanna have that sitting there, you might want it to do a number of different things, totally up to you, but we're going to just kind of again, be a little more creative with this and see what other elements that we can provide here using some of our effects. So let's now add on something really simple, but really kind of cool is maybe a blur effect. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and go over here to our effects. I'm gonna type out blur, and then I'm gonna come over here to my Gaussian blur and just drag that down just like that. Now, not a whole lot happens yet. So what I wanna do is start adding on um, my Gaussian blur options to here. So you can see here, not a whole lot of complicated options is there, which is kind of nice. Now I need to know, first of all, that okay, when I do my blur, if I'm gonna especially do a keyframe, I need to bring this to the beginning of my clip. So there it is, I can see that there. And you can see, all right, once somebody starts on the part of this clip, what do you want to have happening in terms of their blurriness, right? So you can see, what are my options? I have blurriness currently at zero. I have some different kind of dimensions, right? Where am I coming from? The top, the, the side, the bottom, all these different things here. And you'll also notice that there's other ways to control the blurriness in addition to working with our little numbers there to be able to slide it across or just type them in if you want to, right? Totally up to you. And of course, I have this option here for adding the keyframes. So what we're gonna do for right now is I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a slow, slow blur, okay? So it's gonna start off not being blurry at all. And then by the time it comes to the end here, 
Okay, I want it to actually be a little bit blurry. So let me just go ahead and bring it over a little bit so I can actually see it because when you get to the edge, it kind of just starts to overlap with the next clip. So I'm just gonna at least bring it over here so I can see it. And now how blurry do you wanna go? Okay, oh, that's kind of cool. All right, so let's just check it out. And I'm gonna make my sound a little lower, excuse me, so you don't have to listen all that every time. So there it is. Let's actually bring this back up. Let's just see what it's gonna look like from here. And then, bam, cool. And it's kind of blurs out. All right, now again, if that's coming a little bit too slow for you or whatever you wanna do, you can very, very easily fix that by just making this a little bit less time. So then therefore, this is just gonna go a lot faster. Okay, and then it kind of goes into the next thing. All right, so that's pretty neat, right? So you can actually do that kind of blur on there pretty easily. Now, this is a nice way to do it. You can see that's pretty cool. We do all that. But let's say you want to have a little bit of control over the blur, right? You actually want to kind of mask in or out certain parts of the blur. So there's a little bit more kind of like control or nuance on that blur. So we're working with this really cool background, which is this waterfall in the background. So let's kind of just make it look like the waterfall is almost sort of like coming at it in a way, right? So it's like as the water and the text are sort of like intermeshing with each other, there's an effect that happens, okay? So how can we do that? And working with something called masks, okay? We worked with masks already in this lesson so far, so let's go ahead and do a little review on it, but maybe in a different context. So every time you see these little guys right here, that essentially means a mask, right? Like, do you wanna see something or not? Do you wanna mask it in? Do you wanna mask it out? Okay, notice you can do different shapes of the mask, right? An ellipse, a circle, you can do something more rectangular or square, you can draw it out free form if you like. All right, so for this one, we're gonna go ahead and just start from the beginning of this clip. I'm just gonna just so I can see it there. And I'm gonna go ahead and just draw out a very simple ellipse mask. And you can just see as soon as I do that, I get all of these options that appear here, all having to do with the mask but understand that this Gaussian blur is kind of the boss, right? It's basically saying, I am masking in or out the blur, right? Do I wanna see that or not? Okay, so again, the mask has to do with the effect itself. How much of the effect do you want to see? So for right now, I'm just gonna go ahead and make it so it's gonna start off not blurry, and then it's gonna come in blurry, but I wanna kinda of do it really small. But before I do anything at all, let's just see what that effect even looks like. So I'm going to, let's just make my, let's see here. I'm gonna mess around with, let's just see here, I can see it coming in just like that. Do you see that? So I kinda of wanna do the opposite of this, right? So let me just go ahead and try that out. So I'm gonna say inverted, and notice what that does. It might start off blurry, and then it's gonna end up less blurry. See that? So you can see, you kind of stare in the middle there. So that's allowing me to have kind of a window inside of it, okay, by doing the inverted, okay? Is that gonna be a cool effect? I don't know, let's try it out. So let's go ahead and we can make this move around if we want to. We can also resize this, right, if we want to as well. So we can go ahead and make that go like this. Again, just experimenting for right now, see what that's going to do. So now you can see, all right, interesting, but not that interesting in my opinion. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this mask. You don't have to, but I want you to actually see how you can delete a mask when you're done with it. Certainly I can resize this if I want to, but I'm just gonna go ahead and delete this mask by hitting the delete key, and then it starts all over again. I'm back to my Gaussian blur. So what I'm gonna do again is come back over here to my ellipse, and I'm just gonna go ahead and start this off nice and small. Okay, and I'm holding down the shift key to keep things in perspective there. And I'm just gonna make this kind of start off right in the middle here. Now, a really important part when you're doing something like this to kind of get a nice kind of realistic effect with a mask like this and with blurriness is to play around with some of these other options like your feather, right? And eventually it's gonna be our mask expansion 
to make it so it's going to slowly, slowly come into play. OK, so I've established that I do want to start it off kind of clear. Right. And then it's going to come in blurry. OK, so let's go ahead and now play around with that. So I'm just going to go ahead and bring my feather just like that. So it's going to be kind of a softer edge. It's going to look a little more kind of ethereal and a little bit more kind of natural. Right. So pretty cool. And I'm going to go ahead and make this is going to be my first stop in my keyframe here. So starting from here. So I'm just going to go ahead and just say mask feather. I'm going to say maybe mask opacity if I want to play around with that as well. My expansion. All right, expansion is going to allow it to grow. So let's just again see what that is going to do. So I'm just going to bring this all the way to the end. And then notice again, I can make it so my expansion then grows. OK, so you can see what it's doing now. If you look at my stage there, it's going to be nice and big, big, big. OK, maybe you want to make it even bigger than that. Cool. And by the time it gets to the end, it becomes totally blurred out. It's like, whoa, I see what's happening there. So I had some control over it, right? It's not only the amount of blur that's happening, but where the blur is happening as well. OK, so kind of a neat way to to project that type of effect. Now, let's see it in action. This is going to happen relatively fast because guess what? I did it really only after about, you know, a second or two. All right. So I'm going to be able to move that around if I want to. But let's just see it kind of come in real fast. And then bam. And now. And then that just kind of gets a little blurry, which I kind of like, actually. You can see, whoa, and that just kind of fades away a little bit. OK, so pretty neat, right? So you can definitely do a lot of different things with not just the effect itself. But when you add on something like a mask, when you add on the mask with the feather, right? When you add on the mask with expanding it, right? So it's actually growing, right? That circle grew from small to big to big to big. So it just kind of ate up the entire text, ultimately making it fully blurry, creating the illusion that like, oh, this is going into the water and it's kind of fading away a little bit. OK, so in a second, we'll go ahead and do um, a little bit of an effect around making it potentially disappear or we're going to do something called blending modes. We'll play around with that in a little bit. OK, so go ahead and pause the video and we'll see you in the next lesson. In this lesson, we're going to continue working with our text, but we're going to add on a different type of graphic to our text. And this is part of the same lesson because you're going to find the ability to draw graphics in the same area where you're going to find your text. So let me just show you what we're going to create. I'm going to show you how to create it. So let's just go ahead and watch this. We're going to keep that same little bit that we've been working on, that kind of Star Wars effect where it's kind of coming in from outer space. And then we're going to see a little graphic is going to be there and we're going to watch it kind of grow and sort of underscore that text. OK, wait for it. Next frame. All right. And then just for the purposes of this lesson, I did remove all of those other effects there. I just wanted you to see kind of what we can do. All right. So how did we do that and how can we create it from scratch? So I'm just going to go ahead and just take a look at it. You can basically kind of deconstruct what's happening here. I have the shape here, which I'm going to show you how to draw and we're going to be using our effect control panel and we brought in something called the transform effect right and the transform effect allows us to have a little bit more sort of control over the types of things that we're going to do and in this case changing one keyframe's horizontal scale to another keyframe's similar right horizontal scale again but it's going to be a little bit bigger so if we take a look at what's actually going on behind the scenes you can see we're watching it grow 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 so really cool stuff you can do with this, right? This kind of like it's a vector graphic. So it goes, comes in really nice and smooth. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete this. All right. Say goodbye to that. Thank you very much. OK. And there's nothing there. And I'm just going to go ahead and go over here to my captions and graphics panel. And you're going to see currently I just have my Gaussian blur effect on here. Right. And I also have my Iceland text right here. OK, now, how do I bring in some type of graphic, right? There's not a whole lot of options here. It's very subtle. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little guy right there. And when you click on it, you're going to see a whole bunch of options appear here. 
Okay, so if you wanna bring in some more text, if you want to, vertical text, but then there's your option for shapes, rectangle, ellipse, polygon. And if you wanna bring in from a file, you can do that too. You can bring something in right on top of it if you like. Maybe it's your logo, something like that. Maybe it's another image altogether. You just wanna have it on top of it, right? Just a picture of you, something like that. This is where you can go ahead and superimpose something right on top of it. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a really simple rectangle. You'll notice that as soon as this pops up, you can see I have the ability to change all the alignment options here. I can change my color of the fill, my color of the stroke, right? You can do all kinds of great things with it. So let's just go ahead and start off with some of our basics. Notice here it says shape one, right? It's another layer there. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just bring this down. And I'm just gonna maybe just size it how I wanna size it right now. And let's make that just like so, don't worry about it, because we're gonna do a lot of this stuff in the transform options as well, okay? So go ahead and maybe zoom in a little bit so I can really kind of get into it. All right, let's make it so it's gonna be perfectly centered, okay? And now I'm gonna bring in my transform effect on here, because it's gonna give me more options. I'm gonna apply it to this little bar that I just put on there. So how do I do that? I'm gonna go over here to effects and I've already have transform already put in there, it remembers it. And I'm just gonna very simply drag that on top of here. All right, and you do get more options. I know it seems like, wait a second, there's a lot of transformation options already within my graphics and effect controls here, but we are gonna get a few more options here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down until I find my shape in there. It's kind of buried, so just keep that in mind. Right, because over here I'm working with my graphics and all these other things here, it's gonna be a little bit confusing. I'm gonna come down here to my shape and then here's where I can see, oh, there's my transform, that's great. And then you can see here's the scale option. Now notice that horizontal scale is grayed out. Uh-oh, what do I do? Because I wanna be able to actually adjust it so it gets wider, wider, wider. By default, this uniform scale is checked. So I'm gonna go and uncheck that and now bam, I can see it's lit up and I'm able to then do exactly what I want to do. So let's go ahead and just bring this back to the beginning. And I'm gonna say, hey, listen, I'm gonna start off as a keyframe, making this a particular you know, size, whatever that's going to be. So that's how it's gonna start off. Maybe I want it to be even smaller than that. Okay, so I can go ahead and make that smaller, just the same, if I like, right? You can see, let's go ahead and make that a little smaller. A little bit tough to grab. Maybe I want to drag that in. It's going to make it. There we go. Okay. Now let's go ahead and make it so when it gets to the end, it's going to grow. Okay. So notice there's my keyframe, right? And as soon as I go do this, it's going to let's actually back this up a little bit. Okay. So I can see it. Move this back. Yep. Okay. And then let's make it watch it grow, grow, grow. And while I'm still here, I can probably do this even manually, right? If it's not doing what I want it to do, don't worry about it. And that is going to be my end product. So let's just see what that is going to do. Pretty cool, pretty cool, pretty cool. All right, and if you wanted to, you can then do the same thing now to your type here, right? So it's like, all right, let's kind of, let's make it so this has a little bit of movement on here if you like, right? So you can see, I can very easily do that same thing. Now keep in mind again, we need to make sure that we're working on the right thing. So you can see here is my Iceland layer, right? Here is my shape one layer, right? So just keep in mind that we now have these kind of new layers to work with here. So maybe I'm just gonna do kind of just a little subtle thing that as this is coming in, it's just kind of growing, growing, growing a little bit. So like this is not the only thing that's moving there. Okay, so what can we do? Really, really simple. Let's go ahead and just start from the beginning. And I'm gonna now play around with my scale, right? So just notice here, scale size, and you can see when it comes in, it's gonna have a certain scale, that's my keyframe. So I'm gonna make that just a tiny, tiny bit smaller. Not so small where it's kind of like, huh, what's going on here? I just want it to be a little, little bit smaller so then when it kind of comes in with some kind of movement, it's at least kind of, you know, having, it's not, it's not kind of asleep the way that the other one is, right? It's like, oh, okay, that's pretty cool, right? Oh, I like that. All right, now, 
Let's just see here. Let's watch it. That comes in, then bam, and then here it is. And as you watch it, see it's just really subtle because as that shape grows, this is also growing too, right? See how it kind of reaches the end of the frame? So it's like the eyes kind of notice that. They're like, wait, that, that's not really moving or like that's, that is moving. So it kind of pays attention to like the sort of the static or sort of moving movements. So it kind of helps with that sort of visual interest and that sort of animated experience for the user, kind of making it a little bit more enjoyable. So experiment with this, play around with the movement of objects, play around with all of the different transformation options, seeing how you can animate things, how you can use these animations to underscore different parts of your images, your text, making sure that you incorporate some of the other effects, like working with our different masking options, working with our different types of transformation, right? Where we can actually go a little bit deeper into it, right? And then just, you know, using these things creatively, knowing that we have all these different tools under our tool belt to be able to kind of go in a lot of different directions, but in this kind of symphony of using a number of the tools all together, all right? So practice that, maybe practice even bringing some of your own images in there and see what you can do with, you know, movement, size, you know, all the good stuff that we've covered today. All right, we'll see you in the next lesson. And welcome back. We are going to continue on with our advanced text tips and tools using something that in Photoshop and InDesign and Illustrator, you call a clipping mask. So pretty neat effect. What you can do here is we can make this text be more or less kind of a window through itself to show what's behind it. But that's all it's going to show. It's pretty much going to like mask out everything. And we're going to use this type as kind of just like, again, as a mask or as a window to be able to see through it. So in other words, when we're done with this, all we're going to see is like the waterfall coming through the I, the C, the E, et cetera, but nothing else. So it's going to be kind of a nice little sort of teaser effect as the text is coming in. We see a little waterfall. We're going to hear a little waterfall through the type, and then eventually it's going to come right in. And then Iceland, as its form that we were seeing it earlier, will then show up. And maybe we'll do it as a nice little transition as well. All right. So how do you do that? Let's run through the process. So um, notice where my playhead is here. Great, I can see everything. And what we need to do is we need to put a certain type of effect on our video, okay? Because that's gonna ultimately let the video know that something is above it and it needs to sort of allow kind of that type of control of the clipping mask to come through to show the video in that format. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over to here to the effects panel and you can see here we are effects <laughs> okay and then over here we're just going to do a quick little search for something called track mat all right and then notice as i type out the word track this is going to come up here now the key here is you want to actually drag the track mat key to the video layer all right now it seems kind of counterintuitive not to the type layer so i'm just going to go ahead and drag this over here and not a whole lot happens, nor should anything really be expected to happen. Because what we need to do is we need to go over to our effect controls and then make some changes. So if we scroll down, we're gonna see that there is now this track mat key effect put on here. Okay, and there's a few other options here you can see. And of course there's our masking and everything. So what do we need to do in order to make this work? Very simple you're gonna see where we have this option where it says matte, and then right now it says none. We're gonna change that to right now where it says V2, we need to map that. So it's actually gonna say, hey, composite using what? And very simply, I say for V2 or video two, and then like magic, look what we've done. How cool is that? It's that easy, okay? So just backtracking, we have to actually have our type on top of it. And also just as a little side note, I'm using a nice big blocky text. It tends to work really well, right? And then I just went and did a search under the effects, track mat key, and I dragged it over to the video, right? And then I went over to my effect controls and then I just changed that, right? Super easy. If I choose reverse, let's see what that does, okay? Kind of the opposite, not the same effect we want, but you can see kind of what it's doing, all right? Now, 
Let's play it and let's see what that's going to do. And let's also hear it. Nice little teaser. Okay, and then maybe I'll want to do a little bit of a, you know, transition there as well. But what I also want you to notice is that from my previous videos, I also have like that little kind of slow growth that's happening with my scale kind of getting larger and larger and larger. That also maintains itself too. So again, knowing that we can have multiple effects. And I think this might deserve a nice little transition. So just watch that. And what we're going to do is we're just going to transition the video right here. So we just want to make sure that it's going on the video itself, but not on here. It might look a little jumpy. So let's just do our default. So if you recall, we can go over here to our video transitions and we can see that my default, notice has a little blue square there, it's cross dissolve. And if you want it to be something else, you can just simply right click on it. And then it's gonna highlight both of these, right? Make sure that this is now gonna be transitioning from this to this and then just do shift D. And then that is going to transition really nicely from Right okay, lots of noise there, but you can see cool little effect right there. It just goes right into it like that. And there you have it. Okay, so I'm calling this a clipping mask and that's what this chapter is called because that's how we call it in other Adobe platforms. But this is pretty neat, you know, kind of different creative ways you can do this. All right, so experiment with that and uh, we will see you in the next video. Have fun. And welcome back, everybody. We are in Aroma now. We have left Iceland and we are going to learn a pretty cool new trick working with text in this case, but it could really be anything, but it's gonna be about working with a very particular type of masking. So I'm gonna give you a little bit of a demonstration of what we're going to create. I'm gonna kind of go under the hood a little bit, deconstruct it, show you what we've done, and then we're gonna learn how to do it. So my goal here is to have when these people walk across here, as soon as they hit Roma there, Roma starts to disappear, almost creating the illusion like they are kind of wiping away Roma, right? So let's just see what that looks like. See that? She's kind of wiped it away. All right, and of course, you know, the timing and everything, you can establish how that exactly you want it to look, even the shape of how you want it to look. For the purposes of our exercise, I've just made it a very simple rectangle to be able to do that, okay? So what's actually going on under the hood here? Let's just kind of deconstruct this, see what we've done, and then let's just see why it's doing it. So I happen to have my text layer right there, and right underneath there, I now have this mask different set of parameters here. And then within that, I have this mask path, and then I have these two keyframes. And the two keyframes are relating to this guy right there, okay? So basically it's saying, hey, this rectangle is gonna move from here to here. Now remember what a mask does, right? It's gonna reveal it or it's gonna conceal it. In this case, we're making it conceal it, okay? But we're doing it on a timeline basis. So essentially that rectangle right, is going to be moving, right, from here to here. So you got to just kind of following it along there, watching her path as she does that, okay? Now, you'll also note that this is very, very flexible, right? So if I really kind of want to match her maybe a little more naturally, right, to like how she's walking, I could potentially do that. I can move this that way. Whatever you want to do to kind of make that happen, and you'll see it's still kind of like does its thing. It kind of like goes right to that. But of course I didn't do it right on the keyframe. So it's going to be a little bit different. I just added on a new one, but let's just see that good habits. Okay. And let's just go ahead and do that from the beginning now. So I'm just going to go ahead and just delete this. So I'm just going to right click and say clear. And let's just see how we can do this from scratch. All right. And again, it can be kind of a rough version of this. You'll be able to experiment with all kinds of different custom shapes. Could be just a basic rectangle like I've done, right? You can tweak that rectangle like I just showed you. Could be 
an oval or a circle, but you also have this lovely little bezier kind of like pen tool that you can work with a free form if it's going to be something a little bit less kind of linear and geometrical. And this, of course, could be moved around, but let's just establish where in the timeline this is going to start, right? You can see as soon as her foot hits that, it's as if she is kind of just smoothing away Romo, or maybe we want to make it her, her whole body. Okay, so I can make it so I'm just going to go a little right arrow to go frame by frame. So I don't have to use my little shaky hand to deal with this. So maybe this is the part where she starts to kind of fade things away. So cool, that's a little magic spot there. Maybe you wanna make a marker. This is something you wanna come back to. All right, so how do I deal with this now? Again, within my little text Roma layer here, I'm just gonna go ahead and make sure that that's selected. There I have that. And then again, just for the purposes of ease, I'm just gonna go ahead and just do a very simple rectangle. Now you'll notice as soon as I do that, everything disappears, right? Why did it do that? It's, it assumed that I wanna just like mask out everything kind of as that's around this. So essentially I don't wanna do that. I wanna do the inverse of that, right? I wanna do the opposite of that. So if this happens, don't be alarmed. We just need to choose inverted and then you do that and everything then comes back, okay? But now I just want, want you to notice now, if I now move this over here, this is now starting my process of the masking, all right? So good rule of thumb, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make sure that this is big enough to do the masking that I wanna do, right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and just make that so it's gonna fit over the entire word, okay? So you can see is it tall enough? Let's just make sure. Let's kind of overdo it a little bit. Just so there's nothing kind of peeking out on top. All right, and then let's bring this over here. And again, just kind of waiting. We know exactly where she's at. And then maybe we wanna even kind of do like how the angle of her step, right? It's kind of a cool effect there. Okay, so just kind of like, oh, she just kind of kicked it away right at that time. Okay, excellent. So that's gonna be our first sort of like starting point. And maybe let's now start it when. We need to start it right here. So we need to tell it we are going to be doing a mask path keyframe. So it's gonna start right there. Boom, excellent. No big deal, right? Then we need to find out, okay, well, when is this gonna end essentially, right? So let's just continue going and going and going. And just notice how this little playhead moves as well. It's very important. And we're focusing on her. We don't really care about him. She's the master of destroying Roma. Okay, so as soon as she's kind of out of the frame, that's when we decide, okay, cool. That's when we want things to essentially be, be done, okay? So let's now go over here to our effect controls. You click back on mask and you'll notice here this now gets highlighted and so does this, okay? So our instinct is maybe to click on one of these, but you wanna click on mask so we can then see the mask, all right? The actual mask shape that I've drawn. And then as soon as I now click and drag on this, I'm gonna hold down the shift key to make sure it stays straight. I let go and lo and behold, look at that. A new keyframe automatically appears, right? And it's gonna be stitching that movement together. All right, so it's really cool. So now you're probably hanging on the edge of your seat. So it's like, okay, so how do we do this, right? How do we actually watch it? How did it do? That's more of the question. So let's just see here, wait for it. All right, and you'll notice I kind of messed up a little bit. It's not so bad, it's okay. So let's come back to here. And now let's go back to the beginning. Okay, and then good practice. Let's just do that. So it snaps right into place. And I was a little premature with that. No big deal. All right, and now let's watch it. Okay, and possibly a little bit not fast enough, so we can take care of that as well. So let's just now bring the keyframe back in a little bit, okay, so we can see like what can be happening here. So it just kind of catches up a little faster. So let's just bring this in just a little bit more. This might be kind of a spice to taste situation. Cool. All right, pretty good. Let's watch it one more time. Nice. OK, 
Okay. Now, if you don't want kind of like that sort of like soft thing that's happening there, you see how it's kind of like it's a little bit kind of eating it up. You can bring down the feathering if you want to as well. So let's go back to original keyframe and let's just bring that down to zero. Okay, great. And now that's going to be just more of a, like a hard cut through it all. Okay, not bad. So now you see how that can be done pretty much anywhere. And again, that might you know require a little bit of tweaking, right? Let's just go back to here and maybe I would kind of bring this in or whatever you wanna do. Okay, now keep in mind, if you wanted to, you could also add on some other little nobules here, right? So if I now hold down the control key or the command key on the Mac, you can then kind of control with kind of like the little shapes of it. So if you really want to get granular with this, if you hold down the control key and just kind of click, 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 right? You'll see you can then just get right into it to kind of add in more path points to be able to have a little bit more of a kind of shape that's gonna fit your object, okay? So I can kind of do that or whatever it's gonna be. So let's come back to this one. And that might be something I'm going to do here where I'm gonna add on, there we go. All right, so you just kind of wanna experiment with this, right? If you really wanna have that kind of level of, of precision, you can absolutely do that. It keeps wanting to rotate, which I do not want to do. So let's just come back to here. And then that's exactly what I want to do. All right. And then one last show. Let's just see what it does. All right. I like it. All right, everybody, go ahead and practice that up, right? See what you can do with that. Maybe going in a different direction. Maybe you're coming in from the top. Maybe you're using kind of not just people. You're using nature, you're using an animal, right? Could be so many things, but really, really cool effect. Try it out. And we'll see you in the next lesson. Thank you. All right, and welcome back, everybody. In this lesson, we are going to go just a little bit deeper into working with some of our basic templates that are available to us. So if we go over into our essential graphics, you're going to see how there is my templates over here and there is Adobe Stock. So we're just going to take a look at kind of what just comes built in day one within Premiere. And then we're gonna go and see what's available online for us to download for free and even some premium ones through Adobe Stock. So we just take a look at all of these. We'll see there's all kinds of different great titles. There's for credits, right? You can see there's all kinds of different things for captions, you know, just the list goes on and on. You can see some of these are even ones that we've downloaded. So let's just take a look at maybe some of these more kind of simple ones for right now. And we can see how we can work with them. So I'm gonna go over here to this bold title and then let me just move everything over. So this is gonna be overlaying it. It's a really cool way. And just go ahead and click and drag. And now wait for it. And you'll see as I play this, nice little animation, some text. Okay, it overlays it. Cool, and it goes right away. So when I click on it, I want you to notice a few things here. That on my effect controls panel, I'm gonna see a whole bunch of things happening without me having to do anything at all. And what are those things? A lot of it's really just like keyframes, right? Saying this is going to you know, get bigger, it's gonna ease in, ease out, right? You're gonna see it's gonna move, right? All kinds of good stuff. You'll also notice that as a result of me having like your title here in episode, I now have right, all of those elements here, including a shape, okay? So earlier we talked about the ability to draw out a shape where we were kind of making it sort of underline and kind of going, you know, underneath it, right? And kind of growing, right? And kind of creating that type of animation. This is a really nice way to show your titles as just like a nice little framing, okay? So that's essentially gonna be what? Just a shape with just a stroke and no fill, okay? So now you, you can learn from what some of these templates are doing. Now, of course, I do not want this to say your title here. I can very easily change that. So you can see, there it is. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and just double click on that. I'm gonna type out Italy, it's great. And then I'm gonna to come to here and I'm gonna double click on that. And I'm gonna say Rome, okay? And then just click over to here and we'll see how that now sticks for me. And it's now my video. I have now borrowed that and it is now my own. Cool, Italy, Rome, and then watch it bounce away. Cool, I love that. And the timing works perfectly with that gentleman. 
Okay, so that's one thing you can do, right? So pretty cool. Now, let's go a little bit deeper and talk about how we can get some things within Adobe Stock. So let me just go ahead and I'm gonna get rid of this. I'm gonna move this over just a tiny bit, just a scooch. And I'm gonna go over here to Browse Now and I'm gonna go over here to Adobe Stock. All right, now I have a certain number of Adobe Stock items here because I have chosen free right here. So when I click on free, you're gonna see it's gonna filter it out to just a certain number of them. And the free ones are actually pretty cool. And you'll see that I'm looking at what about eight of them here. And if I click on this, I'm gonna see another eight, another eight, and the list goes on and on and on. And they're really kind of very diverse and varied in terms of the styles and in terms of the intention of these. Okay, so let me come back to the beginning and let's just take a look at one that you might want to use, right? And just keep in mind also, before you use them, you'll need to actually click on that guy, right? To license and download, even though they're free, they just need to make sure that you're kind of agreeing to things. All right, so I'm gonna use this diagonal title and you'll notice as I move my mouse over it, I'm getting a little bit of a preview of what it's gonna do-ish, right? You can see that one's gonna kind of do it. So what I'm gonna do now is just simply click and drag and bring this over here and watch it, first of all, to see what this does. Okay, and they just kind of pop out from there. I like it, okay? So, so far so good. Now, of course, this is not like an educational thing, but they've given me placeholders to be able to put in my own content, right? Which I really like. So what I can do very simply is go back over here to edit. I'm making sure that this is selected so I can see what in fact I'm editing. And you'll see there's actually quite a bit going on here. We have these individual text items. Hey, okay? we also have these rectangles, right? You can see there's a rectangle there, there is that right there, and then there's that right there. And just notice how it's actually drawn out using the pen tool. Okay, so you can see if you wanted to do some of these things, you can very easily do that yourself. Okay, just like we showed you in um, previous lessons. All right, now I want this to maybe come out a little bit later. Okay, eh. Let's just move this. It's gonna snap right to my playhead. Okay, very good. And what else do I wanna do? I would like to change this to travel. Italy. Rome, All right, and then there's my hashtag. Okay, and then click away. And if you can't see the whole thing, by the way, notice how it says fit right there. So you can make that just fit right in there. All right, and if these guys are not doing what you want them to do, you can go ahead and just move them in place. If you wanna zoom in a little bit, you'll be able to zoom in and just kind of have a little more control over what we're seeing here. And also keeps wanting me to, definitely loves me to Okay, I'm holding down the shift key while this is selected and I'm able to then just kind of nudge this over with my arrow keys. Very good. All right, now let's go ahead and have that fit one more time and let's watch it. This is mine, mine, mine. Cool, little animation that comes up, that comes up. Love it. Okay, let's watch that one more time. Looks like I got a little extra G in there, so it's an easy fix. Boop, that's gone. And one more time. Yes, excellent. Wow, how cool is that? So really what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to just explore a little deeper. There are so many of these and they're all relatively easy to edit and take in as your own. Really, so just experiment with these, go deeper. Maybe you wanna pay for some of these. It's totally up to you. But I think what you can get from these as well is you can get some ideas of what's available for you, 
right? What's available in terms of different creative ideas, right? So there's so much you can do just like just learning about the little box around it, different kind of animations, different kind of keyframes, right? So so many things that you can just kind of like steal from, if you will. Okay, so experiment with that, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson. Hello, everybody. And let us now discuss our last lesson of this class, and that's going to be green screen, how to work with green screen. Let's discuss what a green screen is. So sometimes you see people who are you know, standing in front of some beautiful monuments, but they're not really there. Maybe they're standing in front of a weather screen, right? But they're not really, really there, right? We're going to look at something they're going to be in front of a big, beautiful waterfall. Some of the waterfalls that we've seen in this class already. And we're going to have somebody who is not actually at that waterfall appear to be there. Okay. Now this person was filmed in front of a green screen. Okay. It's literally a green screen and a green screen can be done in many, many ways. And just, you can kind of really fake it. A lot of people will just kind of film themselves in front of, you know, a wall that's green, right? You can paint your wall green. Some people will have even like a sheet that's green. Okay. Now just keep in mind with things like that, with a sheet or something that's not flat, you may have some kind of lighting issues. So you want to just kind of make sure that your lighting and your shadows and everything are relatively flat and you know consistent. There are ways to adjust that green screen if it is in fact coming in like that. Now it doesn't necessarily have to be green by the way. I'm going to show you the fact that it can be a different color as long as you're actually what we call keying out that particular color. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to my green screen folder here, my bin, and I'm just going to drag out this green screen clip, MP4, and we'll see here is this guy standing right there. And as we play this video, you'll see, okay, kind of, kind of staging it, saying, ah, the great outdoors. Okay, but he's not really outdoors, is he? Ah, the great outdoors. Okay, so let's go ahead and make him go outdoors. So how do we do this? Okay, what I'm going to do first of all is get rid of that green screen right behind him so it really does appear that nothing is behind him. So essentially, we're just kind of blocking that out. We are keying that out. So I'm going to go back over to my effects. And I'm going to come over to here and I'm going to type out the word ultra because I'm looking for something called the ultra key and notice where it is inside of the video effects. It's inside of the folder called keying. So very simply, I'm just going to drag this effect onto my clip and nothing happens, right? You'd expect it to just go away, but we have to do some extra stuff here to actually make that happen. So I'm going to go over to here to my effect controls and we'll see just like we've seen a million times in this class so far, all of our different effects. And now because I just brought in this ultra key, I just have to do one very simple thing. And that is adjust the key color. And you'll notice here is my little color picker. You can even do a little eyedropper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and click that. And now I could very simply now choose the color that's on here, basically saying, hey, that is the color I want to sort of key out. All right. And just also one thing to note is that when somebody is doing your green screening, make sure they're not wearing something that's kind of similar to what's the background too, because right now it's looking for everything that's this color green and it's going to remove it, right? So it's going to essentially just be transparent. And again, it could have been another color if you want as well. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on my little eyedropper choose that. Now that's green. I click OK. And that now goes away. All right. So it looks like he's just kind of in a black hole. But the reality is it's just transparent all behind him. So very simply, all we need to do is now bring in a video that's going to be underneath him. So what I'm going to do very simply is just move this up here to another layer, right? Because right now it's on V1. I'm going to move this up to V2. All right, and let's find something. Where does he want to go today? So let's go now to a waterfall. Okay, so let's go to here. Let's go to behind the waterfall. And very simply, all I'm gonna do is just drag it right over there underneath it. 
and wait for it. And whoa, man, he just traveled far and wide to get here. Okay. Now, before we kind of go any further with this, there are potentially some adjustments you might want to make, right? So there's definitely things that you could potentially do if necessary, right? So let me just go ahead and just scroll down back over to here and just know that there's some things that you could really kind of get into like pretty deeply in case you really wanted to kind of tweak this a little bit, right? So you have your match generation, your mat cleanup, spill suppression, all these things here, right? Go to here and I'll just kind of exaggerate it a little bit. So let me just go over here to kind of choke you can see kind of maybe taking away from what he's got there. Let me just go ahead and reset that so you can see the difference there. Soften. Okay, let's see what soften does. See that? So maybe you want it to be a little more of that. Okay, so kind of similar to that, but you can see it just kind of feathers it a little bit. Go ahead and reset that. All right, and really a lot of this is just kind of a, a spice to taste if it doesn't come in the way you want it to. If the image in the background is not coming in how you want it to, you can go ahead and play around with it. Okay, just maybe try one or two more. See what they do. See that? So that's kind of bringing that in a little bit or kind of going in the opposite direction. Okay, and we'll go ahead and reset that. Now, once it's reset and we're pretty happy, let's go ahead and just play this from the beginning. And there you have it. Pretty cool. No, nope. let's stop that. All right, excellent. So now you know, all right? So really, really useful in a lot of different scenarios. Kind of, you'll see it everywhere, whether you realize you're seeing it or not. Green screen happens, and it is definitely a neat, neat way to just kind of bring up a little bit of variety, a little bit of visual interest, a little bit of trickery. <laughs> all right, so enjoy that, and thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. We really covered a lot in this class. Let's review what you learned. We covered the benefits of using adjustment layers, how to improve our videos using color correction and other enhancement techniques. We covered the concept and application of masking to give us control over different effects and different animations. And speaking of animations, you learned several different techniques for using keyframes, including blurring, scaling, panning, and more. We also did a nice deep dive into several creative text techniques. And lastly, you learn how to use green screen to take your viewers to any background imaginable. Please remember to come back to review this video anytime and keep practicing on the courseware files. I wish you the best of luck and I look forward to seeing you in the next class. Thanks for watching. Don't forget we also offer live classes in office applications, professional development, and private training. Visit learnit.com for more details. Please remember to like and subscribe and let us know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for choosing Learn It.